Well, it's time, Sandy. Very I'll tell you what, time. mate. Yep. We're here. We are back. Sunday morning. The weather is cracking again. Welcome, everybody, to day two, or day three, really, of the uh, Teagles Excavations ARB Pines Enduro 2023. Final round of the ARB Championship for 2023. Championship yeah. for 2023. So We're about three minutes, I'd say. Very Just well been, done. How's that for timing, mate? <laughs> You're done We've got well. three minutes sign held up as I say it off the start line. We've got a little bit of an amended starting order this morning. A few cars dropped out. Yeah, a couple um, of them we know of uh, that has a car 201. There's one of those, the Pendlebury entry. Uh, I was talking to Nigel a while ago, and unfortunately, an issue with that car. They've they did a bit of work last night, but unfortunately, uh, a lot of oil leaking onto the clutch didn't help. So they have with, withdrawn this morning, unfortunately. So it's car 201 was in the field. Now, there's a bit of a story later on. We'll get to that as we get through our order. Glenn Pike, later on down the order, he'll be the 29th and 30th cars away. Glenn's wife who actually navigates for him. Now, Glenn's wife has actually jumped ship. She's actually now in the foster truck. Yep. So they're, and would you believe they start near each other? <laughs> so husband and wife have now gone their separate ways. This weekend, well, just for today anyway, they're in separate cars. So um, yeah, the navigator in 411 is Glenn Pike's wife. There you go. We've got on the start line 701 and 729. Now these were the two slower cars of yesterday. We've got um, a couple of patrols down there. They'll be going. Uh, they'll be going off first, and the fast guys will be starting last. So whoever yep. got the fastest time around yesterday will be first, uh, last off. Reverse grid. Not many other people run a reverse grid. I think it's a great idea. It means that the guys don't get overtaken too often out there for the day. I see our uh, assistant clerk, of course, wandering up. They've already held up the two-minute sign, so we must be. Getting close to one minute before takeoff. Yep, that wouldn't be far away. So there you go, folks. We've just um, got a little bit of an update for some of the people out there. Yes. But uh, we are ready to go. We are on the lights. We are under 15 seconds before the battle of the mighty TB42s takes <laughs> off of the line. There they go, folks. The final day of the final round of the ARB Off-Road Racing Championship is underway. Connor Cooper. Yes, and Kershaw. Has pulled the goods. First car on track, mate. A patrol is winning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that. Yes, it is it is a patrol winning. Uh, dear, oh dear. Tower 279 and 760. So Andrew Forsman and Darren Gill, the next two away. Both out of the same stable. So it's good to see the Forsmans here. Uh, well, five cars this weekend they had. Our little FPV drone out there following the guys out. They're following them down the chute a little bit and then um, peel back around. As you see on your screenshot, big screens screen. Tell you what, these three patrols, I think that's telling us that patrols are slow because there's three in the first three out of the first yeah. four are yeah. patrols but it'll take a lot there's a long day ahead and um we've got a good mix of cars great mix of cars and and different classes next to away the six double six eighty one of ross newman and graham hicks in the eight one two be your next two away 
So we lose them for about two seconds. There they are. So Gill has actually broken away. But as you said, Sandy, it is a long day. We're off right on time. We had a few delays yesterday. Thank you everyone for putting up with our delays. There's many different things that can th get thrown in the mix throughout the day. But we've had a report, the uh, couple of incidences yesterday, those folk were, um, are, under, are in reasonable health. There you go, our six, fifth and sixth car off the line, Graham Hicks, Ross Newman. And yeah, they'll chase each other all day. We go to our seventh and eighth pairing, or seventh and eighth car away, Heath Whedon and Eden Evans. Now I spoke to Eden earlier, and, and unfortunately, Eden, well, I, we did stuff up a little bit yesterday, and Eden was a lovely lady. <laughs> she is. She's in the Little King Graham side by side. They have three entries. They've come across. Uh, this is their first ARB Championship round. They're going to come back next year and uh, attack every round, they reckon. So it's good to see them out here. Yeah, Eden was saying attacking with full force. Eden was saying she was late to class this morning to line the car up. She said, "I'm sorry, I'm late." <laughs> She had to do the makeup. That's what she tells us. But um, off against Heath Whedon. Yeah, Heath was, Heath was actually just saying a little while ago. He doesn't want this little thing to beat him off the line, but they are that nimble. Gee whiz, they're equally matched. They are. T uh, Heath will probably have the legs out in, um, in the top end. You know, when they hit that white metal road out this shoot there, oh, he's already already pulled in front. But uh, as we know, it's sometimes easier to let them go if anyone's faster than you. You've got to pull over anyway, and it's probably easier to let them go, sit back for a couple of seconds, and then you get a clean run for as long as you can before yeah. you get start getting rounded up by the faster cars, as we know. Things like the patrols, as we see Heath dropping down there first, they don't, they don't try not to jump these and tear the front end apart, whereas the side-by-sides seem to handle that a bit better. Yeah, they do. So we look for the next pairing. Maddie Lavis and the yes. single-seater of uh, Will clean overnight looks bloody long for a side-by-side -side, but I actually don't know too much about side-by-sides it's not where I derived from no so they're on the lights gets the jump on the Forsman 274 quite easily there be interesting to see what the top speeds of these cars are out on that white metal road on the heading out to the forest It'd be very interesting to see if we do have a radar down there later on. As we look for the next pairing, this is uh, looking up on the list. Thomas Forsman in the single seat and also both single seat. Sean Radcliffe in the 1007, 1071, both single seat class 10s. As we said yesterday, mate, big, uh, very ever-growing class at the moment. It's um, come a long way. It has, and, and it's only going to get bigger too, Sandy. It's not going to, it's one of those classes that it's the next step up. A lot of people actually jumping into the class 10s, the two and a half litre. The only problem is, though, in a single seat, if something does go wrong, you've got to do it all on your own. <laughs> It can get boring when you break down, believe me. Oh, I reckon it would. As long as you've got a <laughs> an esky somewhere tucked so, in. So, 633, race line wheels entry, Matty Hummer. And uh, next to 681, the Gus Oven entry. Presuming these two are reasonably equally matched as well, which is probably why they're sitting here. I can't remember their times from yesterday, but... The cars are only slowly getting faster and faster as we get into this, into these uh, first few leaving. Laps today, I think the faster cars should be pulling a 66k lap. We've got 666 kilometer laps, and the faster cars, I presume, would do around a 37 or 8 minute mark around that. The slower cars might be just over an hour, hour and five, unless they have some dramas, might put them back a little bit further. Turn to our attention now to Mark Hardman in the 88 car. And Darren Mott. 435. 
Mott Racing had a quick chat to Darren just a little while ago. All smiles, very happy with their run yesterday. So he said to, today is just cruise around, get the car back here and load it on the trailer for this evening. That gap's opened up. I didn't see who got the jump out of those last two. I was looking elsewhere, but... Um... Uh, Sean got away. And Thomas. Mark's loading up the torque converter. He's not mucking around no. today. Thought Mark was a bit tentative yesterday with that car, the 88 machine. Certainly into it this morning. So he'll chase him down. Peter Tamlin, Darren Franklin, the next two away. This is the 19th and 20th cars away. I think so we have a total of 58 competing yeah. today, mate, by the looks of our list. A few dropped out. We dropped out. We didn't, even, we didn't even make a lap around the pre-run of the prologue track, so we've had a disastrous year. You, but you, we'll be back again. Yeah, you keep coming back, though. That's the main thing. At least it's all smiles in the <laughs> camp. It's not, it's not uh, loaded up and we've disappeared. We've gone back to, back to the workshop. and It's great to see you're still here, mate, and you've still got a smile on your face, which wow. is some, some teams <laughs> don't. No, they don't. Triple one zero pulls the goods. Darren Franklin. Yeah. Next two on the line, Owen Ward, Graham Simmons. So eight three two and two seven eight. It's got a fair bit of a bark, old uh, little two seventy eight there, off the line yesterday. Very interesting to listen to. Has got a sequential box in it. Oh, and Ward tells me he's running the same car that has run. They've had it in the shed for a couple of years, but uh, haven't really changed much since it's been built in a se built seven or eight years ago. I was going to say was. about eight years ago it was built. I think so. Yeah. And he just uh, got out the the rags and, what, and dusted it off. I think so. Off. Yeah. Yeah. He still hasn't lost that sense of humour though. That good old Owen. <laughs> Good clean. Oh, Owen's wheels come off the back. There's two wheels. Three there. wheels. No, that's his spare tire off the back. I'm sure his crew. Brady, better get uh, get walking over there and pick it up. It's rolling over to the fence, so you don't even have to go far. So obviously forgotten to strap that down. Hey, I tell you what. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? The golden Brumby. Yeah. So there you are, folks. You can just see how easy things can go wrong. Just one slip of uh, being able to... And I lost the, I lost the tyre myself last race, so you I did. know how easy they can fly out the back. But we're lucky that there's a bit of distance there between the crowd. So these guys will literally be ready to drop the clutches if they're stick shifts. Stu sure will eat that thing. Look at that Brumby. Love it. He had a little bit of engine dramas yesterday. I didn't get a chance to speak to him to see what the problems were, but obviously rectified pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, Forsman's cut in on him in the end there just before they go around that first set of mounds. So we look for the next pairing, 2 4 eight. This is Peter Stevenson and Ian Middlemiss. So 248, it's great to see the Mickey Thompson tyres all the way from Portland. Peter Stevenson, Peter and Jake. Single seater, Ian Middlemiss, next one away. Both away. Peter crossed it up. So Pete got away, 
He will now settle into the groove. Next one away, 411, Mark Foster. The whole Foster crew along the fence line waving, so, cheering on. So Natalie Pike is in with Mark Foster. They were urgently looking for a navigator, so Nat decided that she'd jump in the 411. So, uh, as we saw yesterday, super competitive, the Foster oh, truck. Very Mark competitive. Steered really well yesterday. Putting, uh, the Fosters have been putting a lot of energy into off-road racing in the last couple of years. So they've, they've certainly covered some miles over the last probably right. even 12 months. So it'll be very interesting to see Kevin Howard stand alongside. And I think the dust won't be as much of an issue this morning, especially the winds pick a little bit, little bit stronger than yesterday, isn't it? Yeah, just a fraction, but that'll die off us throughout the day. So Mark having a look back on the inside, he'll dive on the inside of Kevin. And away he will go. I think Kevin will just play the conservative behind him and just sit back and watch him in the distance. And we've got lights here, James in 10.36. James Tyrrell. Against Glennie Pike in the car too. So James in the single seater. bit of a bog down off the start line was the side-by-side uh, -side seemed to get out of the hole pretty quick. Kurt, Stefan lining up next. You see uh, James and Glenn disappear around the, the mounds. This is Craig Barnett, car 68, the Cougar Racing. And Kurt Stefan from Teagles Excavations. Yep who uh, put a monstrous effort into helping us, everybody here, put on this beautiful event. Teagle Excavations Working Quarry here over Millicent, South Australia. And welcome aboard to those that are listening all around the world. I know we've got a few people listening from different parts of the world, so we'll try and keep you up to date with everything that's happening. Kurt, Stefan and Craig Barnett. Barnett's got a little bit more horsepower, I think. Kurt will certainly run him strong, don't worry about that. As we see, our 41439, that's the Yokohama Jamie 9 entry. And also the 1057. So Rod's back. In the Illumi Craft, 1057. Craig Barnett just opening that gap a little bit already on uh, Kurt, but that might mean that Kurt gets a clean run if, if Craig pulls away early, then it will give, give uh, Kurt a little bit of fresh air to settle into the groove. And by the time they hit the edge of the forest, I reckon most of these people will be uh, comfortable in uh, getting, their, getting the job done. Yeah, exactly. If you look up into the forest there, you'll see a little bit of dust. That is where the cars are travelling. So Jamie wins that one. As we get to our next pairing, this is a car that I was very impressed with yesterday, the 635 entry, starting alongside uh, Todd Lehman. This is Jackson Evans. In the shiny one. In the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you see yeah, right. Oh. The gloss one and the matte one, or the satin one, I was calling them. Eden got the raw end of the deal on that one. Um, he did correct me. I said yesterday that uh, they'd rebuilt the mode, but this car, it's, it's its first event in that 635 King Chrome side-by-side. Side. Max is out, it's got 150k an hour speed limiter. So... On the screen at the moment you'll see some live pictures from the from the forest. Eden, speaking of the other King yeah. Chrome buggy. Yeah. On our way through. So these guys are out there. Just want to stay out of the bullets. Tell you what, those those uh, rocks come off back of the back of the tires at a squeezing mile an hour. Frightening speeds. Going 
can crack helmets and visors and all sorts of stuff. And if you've got a front mounted radiator like we normally would have, that could be an issue too. So next to away, one, two, three. This is Matt Burrows starting with Joseph Patterson in the 175, the Patterson Motorsport. Standing along the Max Haulage, the BF Goodridge, Albans. One, two, three entry. First of the Burrows away. I believe a bit of a local. So Joseph Patterson, not far away. They live in, uh, well, basically in Portland, over in Victoria. Set for a start. That just lets him go. So next two away, car number 35, Adam Beryl in the Jet Tech in the David Middlemiss entry, 117. These didn't, are didn't the Middlemisses give it a red hot crack yesterday? Oh, that, and they did too, and it, it, they're always on, on song. So they're the 39th and 40th pairing away. So we're getting towards the end of the line. I can see a couple of the brown cars down the back of the queue there lining up. They start alongside us. They will hunt them down, don't you worry. For a little beam car, gee, it does well. Gee, it does well. It does very well, doesn't it? Little miss entry. So see. Jake Williams would have been the next one here in the 11.37. They have not uh, turned up at the start line. They were working on that car feverishly this morning. So Glenn McIntyre will be your next one away. Car number 43. It's actually a neighbour of mine. Just lives a few k's down the road back in home in Victoria. So he's here. Uh, doesn't have a crew with him really. I think it's uh, just his wife here maybe. So our guys are going to... Yeah, well, Sling him a couple of arms and legs, seems we've got them spare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, oh, you say that ever so i uh, got them spare. I tell you what, he gets a good run. Leaving the start line on his own, Yep. it can be a good thing and a bad thing because it means you're not getting pushed or, you know, but however, clean air. And he'll catch I love to leave the line like that each time. No one around you, you get uh, no one pushing you, no trying to shunt your way past somebody yeah exactly so peter simpson next one away with stevie bowie graham all the way from new south wales 1065 bowie has his daughter ella in there yeah i was having a quick chat with peter last night while we were having tea and very happy with their run yesterday so they've come here today with expectations just to put it on just to put it on the show and get it home this afternoon go 412 so they're away so now we start position 45 no. and 46. <laughs> Neither of them wanted to yield into that first corner there. <laughs> Can it be done? Can we go side by side? There's nothing saying they can't. Sibo seems to have backed off Gillum, obviously. But we, for a 2.4 Honda motor powered thing, you know, gee, I just look at some of these cars and where they finish with what they've got. Phenomenal. Molsey on the line, D Carter on the line, Dean local lad, car 18, and Molsey all the way down from Northern Territory. Yeah. Tegan so sitting alongside. Also, yeah, with his daughter, daughter I believe, next to him. Got to make sure they don't touch tyres on these big open-wheeled cars. 
can go bad pretty quick. Certainly can. Next pairing away, Gary Turnbull, Simon Tucker. Look at that camera out in the forest. Yeah, Waiting listen. for the next lot of cars to come through. I did see Eden Evans go through a little while ago on our live feed. There we go, Owen Ward hunting down. It looks like uh, one of the Forceman entries. Is that 279 he's chasing? I just saw a quick flash there. Yeah, it would be. Well, without a spare tyre, as we saw that leave the, <laughs> leave the chat earlier off the start line, unfortunately. Leave me a loose wheel. The Tur Turnbulls. And the 110 entry of Tucker. Simon Tucker and Kyle, Kyle Tucker. In that little green 110. And um, Gary and Tamara Turnbull in that class 11. So Trevor Chandler, Andy Brown next to away, the 49th and 50th pairing. Should be very interesting, both in class 11. Saying Chandler yesterday, the third of the King Chrome entries, or first, whichever way you want to look at it. But um, <laughs> he's just swapped. He's just swapped from a three, three and a half litre supercharged Jaguar motor to a uh, six litre, a six point two litre, I think it was. Andy Brown straight cuts in on him and uh, closes closes the door. Yep. Top move. Makes makes him eat dirt early on. Then, well, we haven't got many left. No, we're getting. We've only got half a dozen or so left. So 11:25, Dale Martin and Mark Burrows next to away. The big Alpha has raced here a fair few times now. The Alpha. Matt Coleman was one of yeah, the pilots when it was silver back in the day. Wow, I can only remember it red. Oh, it you remember silver? It sil had silver where, where this is red. Yep. It was silver where this is black and the inside of the uh, panels on the sides was fluoro orange or pink, I think, from memory. Um, fantastic car. And Burrows in the new Monk car. So he's uh, first out this season. Well, he's been out before this season, but the Alpha gets the jump there. So we're getting down to them now. This is Matt Hansen and Brent Martin. And Mark Burrows didn't seem too phased. He didn't. About, um, well, he didn't seem too phased all season. I think he was just going and get a feel for the car this season, well, more by the sounds of things. Yeah, a big, big assault next year. Matty Hansen in the seven buggy uh, had a little issue yesterday with some oil, oil lines leaking, so they pulled off the prologue track or early and um, the back out sort of the problem back out against last year's champion Brent Martin with Andre De Simone next to him I think we've got Pendlebury in with uh, Matty Hansen yeah. so Matt knows he's been been over in the pines many times Had a little bit of a break but they are away uh, Matt will run him hard, don't worry about that. Here's, uh, now this is an interesting combination. Car number 23, Craig Krog. Mm, and Murdoch. And Murdoch together. I did have a chat to Craig Krog this morning. Gee, he was going well. He, he did send it straight through uh, the little pond just a few hundred metres to our right, mate. He did. At the end of the uh, spectator area here just yesterday it, afternoon. Just giving it a wash. He said it was a little bit moist. As he went through, <laughs> yeah, just a fraction. But um, he's gone back to 37-inch tyres for today. He said yesterday he put 35s on for the prologue, give a little bit more zap out of the corners, a little bit more agile. But uh, he said it takes the edge off the car and makes a little tiniest little bit more docile going back to 37s. So. There we are. Andy Murdoch and Craig Krog. Now, Craig, I think, from Queensland. He's come a long way, too, you know. He's... Oh, that... 
side by side in that first corner. The navigator's got to do a pretty good job off the start line. Here we go, folks. The last two to leave the line. Currently fit, sitting first and second for the weekend. Danny Brown and car 42 with George up dead. Carl Haby with Chloe in the passenger seat. Silence. The anticipation, hey? You cut the air with a knife, mate. <laughs> Like Carl Haby had it full. He won't let him go though. No, I you think he was just uh, being a bit playing it safe, maybe with a clean start. And there we have it. It's silence out here. Silence is a virtue. <laughs> <laughs> so now we, we should have. Um, we're about we're about half an hour in. So the first car should not be too far away. I think the first car as well. Some of the first cars being the slower cars, we might have a 10 or, 10 or 12 minute, or, you know, 10 or 15, 20 minute gap even before they start rolling back in out of the forest. If you look on the screen, you'll see live pictures coming from out in the forest. From Hards Transport Services, sponsor that camera. And there we go like on a screen. King Chrome, King Chrome Blue. Yep. That'll be the 635 entry. I'm just trying to think of who he started with. He started Jackson. with Todd Lehman, so where is Todd? Todd him on. So either Todd's gone through. If you look on the screen, you will see there is a buggy parked there. there. A, it looks like a buggy parked up there, doesn't it? Just trying to... It looks like a two... There is a buggy parked on the to the left of that on the white metal road. While you're waiting for the uh, the raw to start flowing back in here, folks, you can get over get yourselves your raffle tickets for that CRF 110 shelled out by Blue City Motorcycles. Uh, about a four thousand dollar prize for a hundred bucks. How do they do that? How do they do it? $100 a ticket, 100 tickets, be drawn at the close of racing today. And there's also uh, about four grand worth of Milwaukee gear out there. Sponsored by, uh, shelled out by um, Burson's Auto Parts in Mount Gambia. Another 100 tickets at $100. So I've thrown in a few hundred there. Apparently, towards the towards the bike, middle miss entry, still motoring through the forest, and they are young Burrows. That's yeah, Maddie Burrows. One, two, three. I'm hoping they bolt the turbos back on that car for next year. <laughs> or you have to talk to the boss about that. <laughs> I'll raise him up at the end of the event. I think <laughs> at the end the, the end of the event. I think. You're going to have to. I, he will probably tell you to put a turbo on yours. <laughs> there we've got uh, Luke out there in the in the forest with the drones today, and um, Tex in the arena. That is the 435. That's the Mott entry. It was just on screen. Isn't that an awesome shot? So you see him now turn to the left. Couple together. Roar along that straight. And this is where a fair few got caught last year. That flick to the left is where a few of them parked up last year. Yeah, and there was actually a little bit of a rise there. It doesn't look it on the drone shot, but that's a little bit of a crest. So as you come down, you come down and to the left a little bit. So quite easily make a mistake. Like it's literally just... Has that literally just happened in front of us? Yeah, I reckon it has. That has literally just happened in front of us as I was talking about it. There you go, folks. That's how easy that is. That's a little bit of a crest coming over 
uh, quite easily to get an off in there. And I'm sure the recovery crews, etc., are all over that. It's a bit of a bit of a nasty spot to even stop and have a look and uh, render assistance for that. Car seems to be on its wheels, so we didn't get a chance to see exactly who that was. I'm trying to also spot who that car is down the end of that one that arrived there too. We have 58 entries out there to do a total of 296 k's. May have been Maddie Hanson. I was just trying to refresh the woman um, rally safe here on the computer. So on the screen, we've got a bit of the rally safe up there on the screen at the moment. And there's Owen it's, Ward. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. The rally safe isn't correct in here at the second. No. So 812, there's Owen Ward. And as we say on screen, there is Dean Carter. Car number 18. Just off a fresh wind down at the day nighter. Another yeah. event run by the Millicent Sandbuggy Club. Sibo and Andy Molsey. Molsey's wound him in pretty quick there. Yeah. Where did they start apart? Uh, just, yep. So they're, they're starting. Only 30 seconds apart, so I believe I just had a little word out the window here. Um, uh, Matty Hanson may have a little power steering issue going on out there. I'm not sure if that's who we're looking at parked up. That was that number no. seven smooth buggy, but it didn't look like him. He's got quite a light coloured car, and that one looks dark, so. We're just getting back in. So then we look on the live screen at the moment. The big screen drone out on on track and that's coming back out onto the main road so that to your right is the main road back in back in that was what it looked like wasn't it yeah so, i haven't seen any dust coming back in yet but um shouldn't be too the dust far. we're looking at and out in front of us folks is literally just cars leaving the first spectator point at the crossover at the jump i believe there's a spectator point out there at the road jump most cars, you might even see a little bit of dust through the forest as the cars come down the right-hand side of the forest, maybe? Yeah, as you go up. Over on the, on the phone towers over on the right at Mount Burr. There is, there is the 11.45 of Andy Brown, the Milwaukee car number 11.45. Turn to the right, no. Yeah, who did he take off with? 11.45, he took off with Trevor Chandler. He did in the uh, King Chrome <coughs> Class 11. Teagle Excavations just smoothing out the starting, starting line again. What do we say, 40,000 million horsepower came through here this morning? Yeah, so something like that. It doesn't is, take long to rip it up. There is Chandler, so Andy's got away. Andy, and there's uh, the alpha of the Martin, uh, Dale and AJ. Martin entry car, not far behind Chandler. So there, they've made up 30 seconds on Chandler. Yeah. And as we, as we saw at the start line, Andy pushed them out quite early. God, what a shot. <laughs> that is an awesome shot, isn't it? Now I'm upset we're not racing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm hearing you, mate. I'm hearing you. That is just an awesome shot. And they're moving too quick for me to even focus who that is. We do have a screen in here in the commentary box, but they're moving by too quick for us to focus on who exactly it is and in what order they're, they're placed out there. While well, we're a little bit quiet, waiting for some cars to roll back in. Going to do a big thank you to the people that are uh, moving the dirt right in front of us right now, Teagle Excavations. 
been a major sponsor here for a very long time. ARB 4x4 Accessories also been on board uh, for a fairly long time. Hards Transport Services and TIG Industries, a couple of the big sponsors here at this year's 2023 Teagles Excavations ARB Pines Enduro. Over in Milson, South Australia. You're on board there right now with Brent Martin, last year's champion. Yeah, he's... In a three-and-a-half litre powered, powered buggy. And he's currently sitting on the leaderboard for this year on points, I think about 20 points ahead. About 220-ish points in total. And... Um, Looking at the outrights. I think then you've got the Middlemas entry... I uh, did just have a look at this this morning somewhere. You've got, uh, yeah, Brent Martin in first place on the championship at 2.21. Dave Middlemas at 2.03. Matt, Matt Burrows also at 2.03. So yeah, both sitting second at the moment in points. Jamie Knight, Craig Barnett, Darren Franklin, Dean Miller, which I think Dean was had a bit, a bit of a rollover right in front of us yesterday, yeah, so did. he may be out. Uh, we didn't see him leave the start line this morning. So, you know, it could be any of the top six Mm. Um, I'm not sure that those uh, Darren Franklings in Triple One Zero. He's on 186 points, so I'm not sure he can even claw back he for him. But he may. You never know. He may be able to get in the uh, second or third outright. He might be able to sneak, so sneak up a fair bit. These guys aren't just uh, these guys and girls aren't just competing for a place here today or a podium here today, either in their class or uh, outright for the day. They're also competing to get. Um, Championship points and win the win the year for the championship. So. Exactly. So we also look at Mundall and Dairy, but well, yeah, as um, Carl Haby, fifty-six oh, yeah. going through. We're seeing one of our patrols. That'll Looks be like the ballerine entry. That'll be the Gill entry. Seven oh six, is it? Yep. On the way 760? back in. Seven sixty. Seven sixty. Yep. Sorry. Uh, on the way back in, they've got to be getting close. I can't see the dust line. We're not too sure exactly where they're actually popping out of the forest over on our far right somewhere. I think that's the 278 entry parked up there on the left. Yeah, it looks like that Maybe car. had a couple of messages come in. Yeah, they've parked up there for the day. So that's 8.11. I got sent a short video of 8.11, Stu in the Golden Brumby heading down the chute before. So a big thank you to Mundul and Dairy, Open Road Caravan Sales and Repairs, Hards Transport, PMB Race Products, Art Sign Outdoors, Forestry, SA 141, Steel at Australia, private now, park before engineering. You, I'm going I'm yep. to interrupt you, mate, because yep. I've just been handled, handed, as you said, steel it. Oh, yes. A little steel it. Steel it. They said, Sandy, could you please do a plug that steel it tent, which is in your spectator area, in the middle of your spectator area, right behind the grandstands here. Uh, they're doing a raffle to win $300 worth of product. So if you're a fabricator, you want to really get down there. Yep. Uh, they're doing, and uh, come, and say, come and say hi, put your name in the drawer. They're going to pull a name out of the hat at 4 p.m. and they're giving away some free sample cans, etc., of their Steelit product. So, wow, there uh, I've got a display over behind us there. Sorry, mate, carry on. Thank you, mate. Now you lost where I was. Steelit Steel Australia. That's what Burston, <laughs> Burston Auto Parts, Matt Gambier, ACM Plumbing, uh, located here in Millicent. Total Tools, Screenshot, Big Screens, and Heemskirk Security. Uh, Merv and all the team over there at Heemskirk Security. BKT Electrical, Blue City Motorcycles, who giving us that wonderful motorbike to raffle off later on today. Of course, if you haven't got tickets for it, get in. $100 a ticket for it. Clean away. Collins Court Butchers. Dave Riley's Paint and Panel. Uh, also, uh, Foster's Foodland. Lawrence and Hanson in Mount Gambia. Limestone Coast Wines. Limestone Coast Party Hire. Lifestyle One. Millicent Tire Centre. Racer Imports. RJ Batteries. Sharp Carriers and Crane Hire. Uh, Crane Proprietary Limited. Somerset Hotel. Southwest Freight. The distributors and water solve irrigation. We did have a quick snippet there just of Eden Evans going through. Seems to like she's travelling quite well. I know, uh, I think Mum's watching back at home, was listening on yesterday. 701, 
one of our first cars to leave the line this morning. And they got to be getting close. So this is following around. I think this isn't too far before they drop back on the white metal road over on our far right that heads them back out where you do a hard left hairpin back onto the bitumen. That's going up towards the road section, coming back in. About the 5k yeah. mark. About the five, you, yeah. Oh, 50k mark. Sorry, that's better. About, about the 50k, 50K mark. mark, sorry. Yeah. If he's doing the 5k mark, he's lost. So that's where our, um, I believe where our camera is positioned. Yes. So They shouldn't be too far away at all. There's not much dust out there today. The breeze is a little bit, little bit more than yesterday, but also I think we're getting an extra 5 degrees in our... Today. I think so, about, about, 24, about 24, 25 degrees today, which is absolutely it's fantastic. A little bit of wind around at the moment, but that'll be, um, that'll probably die off as the day gets on. So as we, as we say, we're looking on our screen. Thanks to our Teagle Excavations camera out, out in the bush. Just looking over that crest. And there is... That should be the 435 entry of Darren Mott. So they will be... Yeah. So you're watching footage also of other cars. There we go on our live screen. There it is out by the road section, out by the Mount Burr Road. So they'll turn a hard right on the outside of that pine break. They pretty much follow that road all the way back. Yeah, and there's there's Dale. I reckon that is the 1125. It does look like Dale, doesn't it? Yeah. Pretty much, they pretty much follow that road all the way um, back to the bitumen kickback. Yeah. So they'll cross over that. A little bit of air off there as he crossed over. I think you'll find that he'll turn up here to the left. So now we're looking... Hicks is on his way back in here on our hard right. First car back in, so even even Hicks seems to have rounded up a handful of cars out there. He was one of the first... He was uh, sixth, fifth and sixth car off the line, so... He seems to have rounded up uh, a couple of those other patrols and etc. He's a recent, recent newcomer into this off-road racing sport. In that expanded car. Tell you, it's a good feeling coming in first, even if you know you're going to get rounded up at the end of this, this yeah, lap exactly. or whatever. It's a good feeling knowing you've uh, got clean air in front of you etc. to come back in. And he's got a good gap too on the field. He has indeed. So, a big gap. From an 8.30 start, that's a 45-minute lap. Yeah. So, he's doing reasonably well. Another one on screen, that'll be the six, six double that's three. That's Matty Hummer. That is. And the race line wheels entry side by side. Second of our cars coming in now to our right. Over the crossover. It'll either be it's like car 760. I was going to say, that's the uh, Darren the Gill back entry. Back on the GQ. There's a few of those GQs here to this weekend in class 7. Yeah. I'm watching Wardy go out there. He'll be hoping he doesn't get a flat. He possibly doesn't even know that he's lost his spare tyre. Oh, they would have told him. Someone would have told him via the team radio. So the second lap this morning usually gets quite busy yeah. as the faster cars start overtaking and picking away there. So Tucker across the line. No, Gra Hicks. Hicks, sorry. Graham Hicks. He'll be hoping he can at least get one... Well, he's gotten one lap. Hopefully he can get a second lap. Heathy Whedon... Comes over the crossover, so they, uh, there wasn't too much of a gap, and you'll probably see a consistent array of cars for the rest of the day now. They do two laps of 66 kilometres, then there'll be a half hour break, 
which will try and get down and see some of the pits when they uh, start coming in for their half hour break. I was hoping to, have a, hoping to pay, get you to play the crew chief role this weekend and actually show us what actually happens in one of your service breaks. Yeah, well... That didn't happen. Not much in our service breaks this weekend. No. We've had all the whole season. We've, had a, we've battled the whole season, but... Heath running a uh, standard 4.8 Nissan Patrol motor in that aqua-coloured patrol. He has done a lot of work to it. And the reward has been that he's done the championship. He has. And he's, like said, he's uh, been very impressed with, he, with his season. He's travelled. He actually said it Friday night, Sandy, that it's one of the events that it, he travels 25 minutes and he's at the event this weekend. And then actually, his other one was up at Gundy, which was uh, about probably 20 hours. Yeah, 22, I Second think. Second of our cars over the line onto their first lap. Day two here at the Teagle Excavations ARB Pines Enduro. 400 competitive kilometres this weekend. So that is Darren Gill in the 760. Started alongside Forsman in 279. Just over the crossover. First of our side-by-sides rolling in. That should be Eden. It does look like Eden, doesn't it? That should be Eden Evans. Dark colour with a... It's not bright. Like, it's <laughs> it's uh, king chrome blue. Yes. I believe. Just remember that he started alongside Eden and has got away. I think it would, the only reason he would get away is probably got a little bit more power on, those, on the top end stuff. And the Pines typically, as he crosses the finish line here, the Pines typically isn't a super rough track as far as jumps, etc. go. Who we got coming down the chute? Is that one of our... Uh... Oh, that's Mott coming down the chute. About to go over the crossover. We've got another of our patrols over the crossover. Looks like the Fallsman entry in front of him. Or, yeah, it might be. 701. Yeah, Falls, so Fallsman entry is about to jump towards us at the crowd. 701. Looking after the front end of the car. They've still got five laps to go after this one. So, and Mott looks like he might be reeling him in a bit there. So that'll be one. Of, that'll be another one. That'll be two seven four. We've got three rolling in. So, thanks to Teague Industries, we look on the live feed. Mott pulls him around, cuts yep. in front of him there. Obviously knows his slower car in, in everyone does have to slow down or let them pass. We've got car to car radios out there. We've got Rally Safe on board which you can log in on the live stream or on the Rally Safe or both. We've got a few crews here with a bit of everything going on. Eden Evans on her first lap, well done. She's heading back out. A little bit of an overtake there. Yeah, that was coming down the, the railway line. They come into view. Can't over the jump. I see who that is. That's Franklin. Is it? No, uh, yeah. Triple one zero, Franklin yep. and Matty Lavis. Yep. Matty's not letting him out of his gun sight either. I tell you what, Franklin's come up a few spots there too, mate. He has. Well, should I say he's held his ground even? Yeah, that too. Mott over the finish line, 435. Onto his second lap this morning. Motoring quite nicely too. The car looks quite grounded and quite well set. They've lost, off, uh, lost a bit of their fuel. Some of these big cars will carry over 300 litres of fuel. Some of those turbo three and a half litres. And uh, some of these smaller cars might only carry 100. Um, Got to be very, very tight on fuel, some of them. Forsman overtakes. Another one of the Forsman's. Another one of the Forsman's, actually. <laughs> um, pulls over to let him past. They've got in-car... Um, 
they can hit the button in the car to to pass push to pass which will come up with a, on the screen on the rally safe saying there's someone within about 50 meters Owen Ward coming back in yes minus spare wheel So across the line goes Franklin. So there goes the 6684 entry. So Matt goes on through. So here is one of our class six or six eighty one. There is Jason Forsman as well in the four seven four. I'm trying to think who Jason started with. He started with um, in Stewart in the eight eleven. So I haven't seen that come back yet. No, a little Bumby. Yeah, there's Thomas Formers in the ten seventy one. And I thought the Bumby would be kind of reasonably fast out here because it's it's quite an open track. It's fairly flat. Yeah. And only the corners will chop out over the end by the end of the day the corners will be quite deep, but it's not as brutal as places like Fink and uh, you know, even Gundy, our last championship round. Here's James Tyrrell. Now James started well deep too. James has made up a few. Notice one that hasn't come back yet is uh, the Ratcliffe entry. Molesy on our screens there. You can see Owen's just come past us here on the start line with his strap flapping about. That held his spare tyre on. Didn't stop. So obviously very happy with the car. Is Ian, Ian Middle Miss in the 1017? P uh, Peter Stevenson not far behind. It gives a thumbs up as he goes past. Matty Hummer over the finish line for his first lap. Got the Forsman truck, 474 over. Jason, with I think Dell sitting next to Jason. Del Palmer. Del Palmer. Del Palmer, yes. Those two have been together for a long time in the car. They haven't did that. That was the 30. Let's have a look at our list. They were the 23rd and 24th pairing off this morning, so they're back. There is Thomas Forsman in the 1071. Now he started alongside Sean Ratcliffe. James Tyrrell now hunting him down. Just trying to find out where Ratcliffe is. There is Todd Lehman. So Ratcliffe was started alongside the single seats. They started 13th and 14th. Number There's Glenn two, Pike. Pike over the finish line. One that's missing I haven't seen is the Foster truck. Uh, we haven't either. The Foster truck hasn't come in yet. No, and they started in front of Pike, so Pike's rounded them up. Here's the middle miss entry. 10-17. Goes on through. That's Ian. Peter Stevenson, the, M the Mickey Thompson tyres, 248, have a chat racing. There's the other King Chrome entry. That'll be young Jackson Evans. So Lehman now on the house as well, the 1185. Goes on through. Peter Stephen, Peter Tamlin gives us a wave as he goes on through. We've got Kurt Stefan coming up for the end of his first lap. Yeah. Chasing Todd Lehman. Todd Lehman went just through. There's Jamie Knight. 
Gee, that truck sounds good, doesn't it? Jamie Makes Knights. the ground shake. We've got a fair few of these faster cars rounding up the um, yep. the slower cars. So this is where it'll all happen, and hopefully that's where they run a reverse grid or part of the reason, I believe. So they get a bit of a cleaner finish to the race as well. Yeah, that's it. There goes the 10.57 entry. Also in the house is young uh, Evans in the 6.33 entry. That's Jackson Evans, 6.35. Max is out. 150k an hour, he did say earlier. I think I mentioned earlier. That's too quick enough. Here's James Bill. The Jack, 35, Jack entry. Adam, yep, the Adam Beryl entry. Starting to get a few over the finish line uh, here. So there you are. We have Toddy Lehman in with the fastest lap so far uh, at 39 minutes and 35 seconds. So around 40 minutes. I'm, I'm sure we'll see a couple of faster laps as we get uh, some of those quicker guys over the line. Bowie Graham also in the house now in car 1065. Here comes Jamie Knight. Have a listen to the ground shake. Over the line. Patterson in hot pursuit. And then the middle miss car. Gives them a wave as they go past. No Foster entry uh, over the line, as you said before, mate. Yeah, it's a shame. Tell you what. Uh, Don't Adam, out, Adam in car 35 with a 38 minute 56 so we'll probably give you a few times here now that we've had about 25 cars through the slowest car uh, so far is <laughs> Joel in the 701 with a 51 minute so that's still reasonably respectable in a 66k course yep. remembering these in a standard class 7 patrol um, a couple of random ones, Matty Lovis in 6684 with a 4842, Pete Townland 4741, Eden Evans with a 4735, Barry over the line there, that'll update any second now. Uh, the middle miss car went through earlier on 3944. Joseph Patterson, car 175 in a 40 and 38 seconds. So, Jamie Knight in that big truck we saw came through in car 439. Yep. Uh, 4234. So, they're reasonable, reasonably spread. Heath Whedon in the aqua coloured patrol, class 7779. Yep. 4603. Okay, so he's, he's very consistent. <laughs> Mate, Bowie. Yeah. 38 42. <laughs> Stephen Eller in that 1065 car. So, currently our fastest car across the line. Car 35. So, we look on. Here's Andrew Miles all the way from the Northern Territory. Been hotly pursued by Simon Tucker in the 110. So there is the one, two, three entry of Matty Burrows coming on into the arena. I think also in the house, if that's two, that's the 11.25 of Dale Martin. Here is this Simpson team in the house. So four, one, two. 
Matty Burrow is also in the house on the 1 2 3 entry. Haven't seen the 21 car come back yet, but that's only early. That is Craig Barnett, if I'm not mistaken. Car 68 also in the house, the Cougar Racing. 68 in the house. Dale Martin in hot pursuit. So here's Martin, 11.25. Andy Murdoch. That should be... Barrow's going past the 249 entry. 249 was, of course, 279, the Andrew Forsman entry. Coming in. Is Sibo heading for the finish line on his first lap? Yeah. <laughs> Trevor Chandler also in the house as well on the 1111 entry. The Forsman cars coming back in, so I'm sure the crew will be rushing over to see what's a miss there. They may even, in these smaller cars, they may even need to just a dash of fuel to get them through. So, may do. Uh, 130 kilometres for their section might need just a top up. If you look to the left, you'll see here it is, folks. Murdoch and Brown. Danny Brown trying to reel in Murdoch. Here he goes. Going to cut in early on him. That's our current race leader, from what I can tell. We did see Dale Martin come through before in a 37.43. So he's on the move. Danny Brown in with a 36.07, one minute faster than Andy Murdoch, who he just rounded up there. So. That's interesting to see, mate. Chandler over the finish line. Trevor. Also in the house as well is uh, Carl Haby, car 56. So there is the cog entry. So Craig goes on through. Brent Martin, last year's champion, trying to retain his number one. And he may be just circulating comfortably. Yeah, that's all because, he has to do. Because uh, the other guys aren't in contention for, for the championship at the, at the second, Andy. Uh, sorry, um, Danny Brown. Middle Miss is the only other entry that can uh, that's up there with them. So, Carl Haby on your screen, folks. Car 56. Another element buggy. There's a few here this weekend. There are indeed, and they're starting to get more and more. Hands up, thumbs up. Forsman entry out in the forest. Not too sure where he, where he is. Our rally safe every now and then uh, it's a bit hard to get some signal out there so sometimes we'll get a, a uh, refresh. But I think that was the 278 entry out there when he stopped. Yeah, that was one of the ones we saw on our live feed. Navigator and driver are walking around. So it's gone all quiet at the western front of the minute. As we look on our live footage, 
I've just been on the live footage only because I'm trying to see if we can bring up some speeds on these cars out there. So we don't seem to have any speeds up there, but um, I'm sure these guys heading out that white metal road as Danny Brown heads out first, obviously, on track, or um, when I say first on track, first fastest on track, should be tipping around the 200, maybe even 210 or 20 kilometres an hour top speed out on that white metal road over the road jump. Notice if we look to our right, it, you see one that is actually limping back, actually on the tow rope. Looks brown from here, so I can't even tell you what car it is. It's not our number one entry, is it? No. No, I don't think so. I think... So we'll come back past into the arena. Take that. So the class 10. I reckon that will be the Ratcliffe entry. Just looking at Ah, oh, 10 double, uh, 1007. Yeah. Single seater. Yeah, that, oh, we did wonder where that had disappeared. There it is. Uh, limping back in. I noticed a few well, other ones. Got a little bit quiet out here for the second, but it uh, doesn't mean you can't race over and grab yourself a raffle, raffle ticket. There's a few left on the board. They, uh, Look at our live feed, one going past. Kurt Stefan That's doing good. an yeah. overtake on... Um, Six six eight one. Matty Hummer then, online on, on six screen three three. So they're still together. Yeah, and then uh, have a chat. Steve is yeah. still motoring also. It's like a high line and a low line you can take there. So there's a, there is some spots out there that's fairly good overtaking, but there's also some spots out there that can get quite, um, as we saw earlier. Can be quite dangerous if you go to overtake in some of those recently logged areas where the stumps are only a half a foot off the ground. And if you go out wide, you can grab one of them. There were some rock areas out there that spray painted the rocks and the stumps bright pink, but it doesn't take long for those to disappear either. No, you're right, it doesn't. So we look on our rally save at the moment. You'll see Heath Whedon, one of those in the top of the screen. 8, 11 and 6, 8, 1 together. 11, 25, 42. There's someone right with him. I'm trying to see who that is. So then he's oh, rounding up Matt Burrows. He's now, the eyes are now on the 11, 25 of Dale Martin, if you're looking on screen. Here on the screen at the moment. Also in there is Carl Haby. Craig Barnett is also one of those that are still motoring. Haven't seen uh, the 1179 entry. There it is on screen. It's Gary Turnbull. Haven't seen that come back as yet. Well, yeah, you've got, there's the track layout on your screen, folks. Over to your far right will be the, um, up on, if anyone's here at the moment, they'll be able to see up on the right-hand side, up around the tower, phone towers, and on top of Mount Burr, TV tower, mate. TV tower, sorry. Phone tower, I don't know. So you can see on our screen with our rally safe at the moment. Car 42 chasing down. Burroughs has actually got away from him. Again, also Craig Barnett's just up the road. Sibbo is not too far in front of him. Or behind him, I should say. So at the moment he's just rounding up. So Brown is on the movie now. He's got Andy Miles in his in his gun sights. So uh, Brown's just got past Barnett, and now we'll move in on the 1065 and also 135 car Andy Miles. So Brown is on the move. Mark Burrows not too far behind him. Sibo is also, and Carl Haby in that little group. 
So uh, as soon as we get some updates on cars, as we go back to the forest. There it is, Andrew Miles. Now not too far behind them. That's sweet sounding BMW. Stop drooling. Who's he chasing? It looks like Have a Chat, was it? Yeah. Steve-O. Now turn to the right and go back into the forest. He'd be spewing he didn't catch him before that because those some of those runs through the pines are uh, quite narrow mm. so you don't actually get a chance to over uh, to pull over now Danny Brown shouldn't be too far behind him because Brown was uh, Miles was just going up the road and then Brown was sort of in in hot pursuit So this is about the 25-30k mark. That's where this was. It came out onto the open and up that little hill. As we see one coming back in at a huge rate of knots. Here in the main arena. That will be the seven entry of Matt Hansen. I'm just looking, mate, to see... Uh and Will, Will Rotorou is on his way back in too by the looks of that on the rally safe. And Matty Hansen, they said he had a little power steering issue someone whispered to me earlier, but it doesn't that look like he's got like an issue whatsoever there. He's got a lot of work to do to catch up to, to uh, Danny Brown. Although we're only really a lap, lap and a half in for most of these folks, so we've still got a long way to the finish line. We see, it'll be interesting to see if Matty Hansen comes in to sort the issue or they actually sorted it out there. Yeah, it'd be very interesting. Just looking on screen, so that vehicle that we did see on screen parked up there before has now been recovered. So if we look to the top, there it is, that's a seven entry. He may have fixed that car out on, on track. Dean Carter looks like he's also on his way back in somewhere. So. Here's Hansen. He's coming back in, mate. He's off yeah. the throttle. So there's definitely something wrong with Hansen. So if his crew's out there, get ready. He's coming in. Thank you. how his, his um, visit back to the Pines, wanted, he would have wanted it to end. Or, well, I know it's not ended, but, you know, to go. Barnett on your screen. Yeah, he had Matty Burrows not too far behind him. There is Sibo, car 412 on our live screen on our hard transport camera out in the bush. And there is the 123 entry of Matt Burrows. So we was not far behind the rows three together. So you see our pit area on the right. Forsman entry on its way back to the start line to head back out for its second lap. They came in maybe maybe for a dash of fuel. To be a number of different reasons why they've come back out, but uh, there they go. The 279 on their way back out for their second lap. Going to be a long, long day. day. For some, <laughs> a long day for some of these cars. I tell you what. I know we. Um, at our last round up at Gundawindi, we had uh, Heath Whedon was last car on track and he stopped for everybody, every man out there that was broken down, he stopped to render assistance, so. There goes Brent Martin in the Oz 1. Currently sitting at Oz 1 for this year as well. 
So I think he just needs to finish and finish cleanly. Yeah. And it might seem retaining that number one on the roof for next year. There's Carl in hot pursuit. And now veer to the right and turn back into that pine break that I can still remember on the reconnaissance lab, Sandy, going along there and going, well, we didn't go in here last year, but it was exactly the same. <laughs> it was. There were pine trees there 12 months ago. Yeah, there's a couple of areas, that, areas they've logged. So another one coming back in. Dean Carter. He's yeah. not coming under a full race speed either by the looks of that. No. He might have a little issue. They, once again, they could be dealing with heating issues out here. I was saying earlier, well, I see a little bit of steam coming or smoke coming off that engine. Um, half throttle sort of thing for Dean. And uh, maybe one of those yeah, things. Look at the smoke off the back of that thing. Is that smoke or dust? It looks like smoke or water. I don't know, but um, so if the quite crew easily be uh, plagued with heating issues out here. You wouldn't think so. Obviously, those white metal roads on the way out, you're getting lots of fresh, clean air. But once you get in the pine breaks and th with a canopy over the top, there's actually zero amount of airflow in there. So we've got... Uh, so, so the crew for car 18, if you are ready... Get ready, if yeah, you're not. If you're not, <laughs> as I'd say, they're on their way. They're coming in to um, hopefully get back out into the fight. Look how those tracks have started to dig out already. Now, at the end of the race, they'll send a grader out and regrade the whole track so that the uh, that's a good shot. 141 can can get can get back out there and uh, do some forestry work. But that gives you an indication. Anyone that did the pre-run or saw the track prior, that was just a dead flat track like our start line is right now. That's after one and a half laps of cars. So by the end of four and five laps some of those holes in those in those corners will be over a metre deep yeah and if not more the tree roots will be exposed and uh they go straight through your body when you hit those i don't care what car you're in you still feel them <laughs> yeah I mean, look at the heat coming off dean's car there's a lot of heat or a lot of oil might have split an oil line who knows but i'm sure we'll find out over the next uh half hour or so yeah and yeah. uh, if you cruise in there, maybe uh, rip an extinguisher in case. Because um, if that's oil on hot exhausts, as soon as they pull up, there'll be uh, quite easily could be a little ignition source. Still sounds nice, doesn't it? Fresh off a win just in the day nighter down at Mill, uh, Beachport a few weeks ago. I was going to say Millicent Beachport. You are close. Millicent Buggy Club. Yeah. Sand Buggy yeah. Club. You know. Yeah. I knew, where you were, I knew you, where you were going. So Dean in. So while we've got a moment to big thank you to Attack Fire and Hydraulics, uh, the Hillview Caravan Park, k &S Fuels, Shannon's Insurance, I know they're here this weekend, Express Signs, Millicent Caravan Sales and Service, and Mount Gambia Paint Plus. Big thank you to the Water Range Council, we can't do it without them. The Aora Group, AASA, ARB Australian Off-Road Championship, ARB, Mickey Thompson Tyres and Race Line. Big thank you to all of our sponsors. Of course, big thank you to the Teagle Excavations people. Can't do it without them. And of course, what they showed in just a while ago on that footage on that uh, on that corner. Of course, as you may mention, Sandy, straight after the race today, they go straight straight to work and grade those roads, bring them back so they can go to work tomorrow morning. I know some of the tracks, uh, log trucks will go in there tomorrow morning, so they have to get them back to working condition. And a big big shout out to the Teagle Excavations people. I will we'll see on your screen, mate. There, yep. Danny Brown at about I would imagine around about. Nearly closing in on the halfway mark out there. Yeah, car 42, and that's um, he's closing in on the 633 entry. Fastest car on track. He's just round up the 701, so Barnett's not too far behind that. Carl Habe's now rounding up a few of them. Getting the 1065, it should be. What are you doing here? It's not me. It's actually the internet. <laughs> 
See, look at, the way cluster, way. look at the cluster of cars here, and I think, is that out near that TV tower? In this section here? Yeah, would be. Tower Road, yes. Um, we're just here in the, in the background there. Matty Hansen's just left the line again for his second lap, so he's obviously uh, come in for a quick tidy up on something on the car, but yeah. back out. Yeah, it's Tower Road, so it's not too far from the TV tower, so... There is a multitude of cars in that area right now. Yeah. So Danny Brown's obviously got a fair bit of work to catch and get around all these in front of him. A little bit of fresh air at the moment, but they're about to hit a wave of... A wave of cars. Once again, that's not me. I know I'm a little bit computerly challenged, but that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first one to admit it, mate. Not many people do. So it's so he's just up near the TV tower. If you can look up straight ahead, you'll see that Mount Bird Tower. They're not far from that. So so McIntyre's also in there as well. The 1017 just up the highway. Andy, the 35 entry, uh, first car that was one of our fastest through. Also Andy Brown now catching the Have a Chat entry, and also Dale Martin's just in front of him. So he has rounded up the 110 and also Andy Miles. And also Steve-O, have a chat. Yeah. I don't know whether this is, um, it doesn't always update directly how it should. Some of the units take a little bit longer to update than others, but you've noticed on your screen too there, 681, way off, to way off course. Yeah, I'm not sure that's right either. No. <laughs> Trying to think of the 681 was. That was the, you, the none of these other there. cars have moved, and I'm sure they are moving. Danny Brown seems to be the only one that's updating here consistently. Yeah, he's just passed a whole heap of them. If you go on, if you go on our data, you have just seen that there is a whole heap of cars not moving. But I'm sure, I'm sure they are, mate. I'm sure they are moving at a great a great speed. Looks like car 729. That, I think that's the Bogan boys, isn't it? Yeah. They might be stopped out there unless they're on their way around for their second lap. They haven't come through. I can do an update. Do an update. Sometimes, mate. well, I do a... Uh, I check it on my phone, seems to be a better update sometimes. And I can tell usually if they're moving, so... Bit of a break, folks. Jump out of your seats. Quick loo break. Grab yourself a coffee or something to eat. Grab yourself a raffle ticket. 100 bucks, 100 tickets. That Blue City Motorcycles CRF 110 will be going out the door this afternoon. A $4,000 bike. And uh, they've also got another raffle running there. Thanks to Burson Auto Parts in Mount Gambia about four grand's worth of Milwaukee gear. So, some fantastic prizes there. Thank you for those supporters and sponsors on those couple of prizes. It's a recent thing they've brought on over here at the Pines. And um, I tell you what, 100 bucks to get yourself a bike, 100 bucks to get yourself a few thousand bucks worth of Milwaukee gear. That sounds good, doesn't it? Fantastic. <laughs> sounds like sounds like the ideal if you thought about coming along. So just looking on our live screen at the moment, thanks to our screenshot big screens drone that's out in the forest. Just having a look at that that white metal road. Um just trying to spot where that is. Oh, here we go. Position six at the moment, Dale Martin. Seventh, Bowie Graham. Jackson Evans, Todd Lehman. You're updating pretty quickly there, aren't they? So that's where they sit at the moment. James Tyrrell. Kurt Stephan, Glenn Pike, 21st. Matt Burrows. 
Darren Mott, 26th. Ian Middlemiss, 27th. Darren Franklin, 28th. Heath Whedon, 35th at the moment. Position. Darren Gill, Ross Newman. Joel Kershaw, Andrew Forsman, Matt Hanson, 44th. He won't be happy with that. Not at all. But there's still a lot of racing still to go. Still another five laps for the Hanson team. He did a 59-minute lap. Uh, some of these other, Andrew Forsman, I see that car is 126. So he's got his work cut out ahead of him. I, I, that should be total time. Yeah, I was going to say that should be total time, shouldn't Yeah, I? I did click on total time. You did. So if you look on the screen as that drone flies over, you'll see where the cars have been. So they'll turn back in. Either come out or turn back in. I'm not too sure where he is. <laughs> you I don't know yet? how many thousand hectare of forest there is out here, but... Are you dizzy it's yet? mesmerising, isn't it? <laughs> they can, some people would call them Christmas trees, mate. Well, makes the wheel go round, doesn't it? Yep. So while we've got while we've got a minute, some of the classes, you know, uh, give you a quick rundown. Class, for example, class two is a sixteen fifty powered buggy. Class three, which there isn't any class threes here, is an old. Uh, yeah, the 1300s. Uh, class 4s, they're your trophy trucks, your two-wheel drive, six-litre powered trophy trucks. Class 5s, which... Uh, Another one of those not here this no, weekend. I don't think it? there is any Class 5s no. here this weekend. They're a um, based on a production cab. There's a few different rules that go in there. They're a six-litre also. Um, well, we've got Class 6 and 66, and I think 66A... I'm not, I'm not too familiar with the side-by-sides, unfortunately. Um, I probably should learn a little bit more about them. you think I'd know a bit more about them by now. Good. Um, There's James Tyrrell on screen. Class 10. Speaking of Class 10s, they are James Tyrrell. There's, uh, they're a two-and-a-half-litre powered buggy. Sing a lot of single seats in that class at the moment for some reason. You but it's been a growing class due to the older... Class 2 1650s upgrading engines and engines getting harder and harder to get as they get on. Uh, same reason that Class 11's derived, uh, the 6 litre, getting a bit harder to find. So they've opened it up to a 7 litre in the Class 11s. And um, also Class 11 will fit a couple of cars like the side-by-sides that change a diff or change some suspension arms or something. It'll put them out of their class. They'll drop into that uh, Class 11. The um, the ultimate class, which is things like Danny Brown, who's our current race fastest car on track, and um, they'll be a up to six litre or three and a half litre twin turbo or turbo boosted engine, whatever. Class um, class one, which is the old uh, three and a half litre powered naturally aspirated class last year's champion and current championship point leader Brent Martin in that one car normally would have a one something something number there's Owen Ward on track still motoring around good to see yeah, oh. still going minus that tyre which oh, is back at the pits I think they know they know everything that's going on with that so they're ready for when he comes in for his break I wonder what they'll tell him. Did you lose something at the start? No, there was. Um, they they said that the tyre wasn't pushed far enough when it was tied in. So, oh, they know the issue. Yeah, well, that's won't all happen right. again. <laughs> no. We're well, surely we're not far off seeing a couple coming back in. I see uh, Mark Hardman looks like he's on his way out. There he goes. He's still sitting there so he might have stopped early on just before the, at the end of the White Metal Road. There he goes Jackson Evans in the 635. And he's been in hot pursuit now that is the 1017 of Ian Middlemiss that's just behind him. The track actually runs clockwise so it's uh as soon as you get to the crossover just over there on our far right in this spectator area, the 
it goes uh, becomes a clockwise track and um, coming back in I think we've got first on track which would be the Mott entry which shouldn't be too far away I would imagine within three or four minutes we'll see him come back in and getting ready for his service break service break of half an hour so Ian middle miss going on going on through and also the middle miss David middle miss in the 117 entry now it goes through also up the head was the 1057 car haven't seen Andy Brown back in and he looks like he's stopped out there in the 1145 car the 729 car looks to be stopped car 35 currently looks to be stopped out there and car 1036 and also haven't seen Gary Turnbull come back either car 635 which I'm sure we just saw go past so yeah, that was going very nicely might just be the updates as they come through here sometimes it has a bit of a glitch but um, there is we'll see, we'll see Mott and Heath Whedon in within a, within a few minutes back into the stadium Well, he's not mucking around at the moment. He's got a lot of work to do too, so. He used to, there you are, Mott over on your right, folks. Coming back in, car 435. First of our cars coming in for his service break. Yeah. Of half an hour, so. I believe you're going wandering. I will be going wandering shortly. We'll wait, probably wait for a couple of the cars to come in see how they're going they'll have a rally safe when they cross the line they'll get half an hour exactly on their timer and that'll be on them to get back out in time so if they if they are back out in 35 minutes guess what that yeah. eats into yeah, their race time. third lap of today that's right exactly like this them. and that's what they were saying a briefing this morning there is a piece in in your rally safe that actually counts down when you are zero, you will go. There will be no one here on the start line. Well, there will be, but there won't be anyone counting down five seconds. They won't be going up. off lights. No. The only reason they'll hold you back if there's somebody else coming through or there's, there's some sort of um, some sort of other issue on the start line. line yeah. yeah. There's Heath Whedon, car seven seven nine. Still blowing smoke. It's been blowing smoke for a couple of races each time, each gear change. So it's, called the, it's called the Indian smoke signal, mate. I think he's uh, hopefully he's thumping oil back into it at, at his half time break. So the crew is seven seven nine. Make your Should way to the trailer. Ready? Yep. Also, Mot, Mot's crew. Yeah. Done well not to be rounded up. Yeah, of course, Darren Gill wasn't too far away as well. As we say that, here's another one. So onto the front straight, car 435. This is Darren Mott. Doesn't that sound sweet? That's Adam Birrell. He's quite healthy at the moment. In the Jet Tech, 35, also in the house. Picking up that right front wheel, if you don't mind. Is that Pike coming over in the t into the stadium also? Yep, James. James, James. Yeah. back in for his second lap. So we'll get a, a lot of crews will be starting to rush back down as they see their cars come in, getting ready for service time. All driver, navigator, everybody out of the car, people with long sleeves, fire extinguisher out before the fuel caps comes off to refuel. Then there'll be, uh, I'm sure the driver navigator get out, quick loo break, maybe some uh, hydro lights or something. And um, while the crew check, some, check over the cars front to back. So mod in. First of your cars in for their service break, folks. The Franklin entry. Yep. Tell you what, that Jet Tech entry's <laughs> not marking around, is it? Gee whiz. Picking up that How front left. <laughs> is that Wardy coming towards us at the at the jump? Looks like it. 
So his car, his crew is launching, I see there in the VIP area here, rushing back out. Get run, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, don't be nasty. They're getting, they're getting back out they're to getting back reload out. the tyre. If they need a strap for the tyre, there's one on our car if they need it. Not getting used, obviously. <laughs> Pups back in, 10.36, so we've got Mott in, Whedon in. 35 Jet Tech entry in, Pup in in car 10.36, Pikes just across the finish line, so all these crews better get back down there and uh, get into position if you're not already. Most of these people will know what they, where their cars are. It's about to get real busy down there, because we have car after car rolling in the middle miss entry. There's Turnbull, 760 no, no. there. That's the 10.57 Rod entry. Visser. Yeah, this are entry. Tucker. Bowie. It all of a sudden got hell busy in here, didn't it? <laughs> peak we hour, keep peak hour traffic, mate. Kurt Stefan. He's limping. Is he? Or he's yeah, just he's I think he just pulled to the side. I think he knows Joseph's there. Joseph Patterson in 175, also about to come back in. Wardy, the next car over the finish line. Pikes rolling into the pits. Looks like a Forceman car. It's the 474 of the Forceman's coming in. Yep. So everybody will be on the edge of their seats getting running back in. Is that a brown entry? Is that car 42 coming in over the back there? It looks like a, a Lumacraft. Could be. Can't quite see it with the dust, but the uh, definitely looks like an Lumacraft. I don't know if that's Andy or Danny. Andy hasn't come back around for his first lap yet. Does look like Danny. That so is Danny, yeah. The Brown crew. I see Carmen's in the, Carmen and the kids over there cheering on. We are 760 over the line. The middle miss over the line. Yep. First of our King Chrome buggy snuck over the line there when we weren't looking, so like Jackson Jackson's in gee look it's going to be gridlock here any second that's peak hour traffic mate Owen Ward car 4, 3, uh, 832 coming in Jackson Evans 635 coming into the pits 760 coming into the pits middle misses on the way in Visser on the way in Tucker in the way in That would be Bowie Graham. In front of Bowie is the Ian e Middlemiss. 17. Oh, yes, the single seat, the single seat of Middlemiss car on the way back in. Bowie, Patterson, Kurt Stefan, Jason Forsman, and Del Palmer are about to hit the line. Just in front of Danny Brown. So that's probably a. Um, <laughs> well, when You'd you think nervous. about it, that might be a good spot because, you know. Danny might take off in front of him. He gets out of these. He gets around him early. Yeah. So that might be a uh, a good spot to be in. Although it's not a good spot to be in, it might yeah, actually. I, I know it's exactly. Turned out to be a good spot to yeah. be in. Yeah. There's there's the Dale. Martin, Dale and AJ in the 1125 over the line. So it's all about to happen. I might. Uh, Nick out, mate, and see if we can't go and uh, have a quick chat to some of these people as they come in. Watching Steve O' roll in. Steve yeah, O' roll Stevenson, in and yep. uh, Jamie Knight by the, behind him by the looks of that. And does that look like a Burroughs? Should be. They shouldn't be too far away. Frame? Not quite. Not quite, no. So 21 should be too far. That would be probably Matthew Burroughs, if anything, in the 1, 2, 3. 11.66, Andy Murdoch over the line. 2.74 that we saw stopped earlier has uh, just entered the stadium as well, one of the four, another one of the Forsman entries. So they're doing quite the number. They'll keep all those five cars going this, this weekend. So Jamie Knight also in the house as well on the, the Yokohama entry, 4.38. That is Jamie Knight. You would, what were you uh, thinking? I, was, I just saw it red and I thought maybe it's Andy Brown because we just haven't seen Andy Brown back in. No, we haven't. In the 11.45 car. So they've obviously been struck with a little bit of issue. Here comes a Burroughs car. That'll be 21. It is indeed. 
So I don't know where Matty is. Matt hasn't appeared. Well, Matt Lavis has. Matt Lavis is in front of us right here. He's on his way around to the finish line. Wrong Matt. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Burrows is still out there circulating. Well, we hope he's circulating. So there goes Peter Stevenson across the line in car 248. Just in front of Jamie Knight, 439. Carl Haby on his way in. Now that gap between Danny Brown and Carl Haby, roughly the same. We've got a couple of times here. Danny Brown's currently got a... Uh, your maths, you're working it out. I no, can see yeah, it. my maths is no good, but 148 lead on Andy Murdoch and a four minute lead on Dale Martin. Yeah. So. Notice Todd Lehman also hasn't appeared yet either. As we say that here's the Cougar Racing 68 team of Craig Barnett. So an overtaking move at the top of the circuit. You'll see Burrows just eat him alive. Just a couple of quick lap times. Danny Brown, 36.07 and a 36.08. One second apart over 66 kilometres, so yep. that's pretty consistent. Andy Murdoch, a 37.06 and a 37.02. Also pretty consistent. However, yeah. a minute slower. Yeah. Dale Martin, 37.43. So... These guys are going to have to pick a minute, minute and a half up on their next couple of laps. So this goes Carl Haby through. Simon Tucker, 37.53. Carl Haby just sneaks into fourth spot on today's standings. This is just today's times. Trevor Chandler also in the house as well in the double one, double one entry. All right, mate, I'm going to go for a quick run down to the pits and see if we can get some goss. Oh, yeah. be very interesting to find out what is going on. So it's, uh, as we see some more cars coming in, Trevor Chandler and also Brent Martin coming in, car number one, and also the double one, double one entry. Very shortly we're going to go across to Sandy, who's out and about in the pit area, looking at some teams, what, what the gossip is from, from the pit area. And this is, should be the Eden Evans entry. Just also look up here to our left, you'll see one car that has stopped. So we'll find out who that is. Here I believe, I don't know if you can hear us up there, but with Danny Brown, fastest lap by a minute something. How's it feel out there, mate? Yeah, it's, it was. You look a little worked up. You look a little sweaty. Is it was, hot out there or something? I was getting a bit foggy inside, <laughs> but it's um, it's the same track as last year, so we sort of knew where we could push a little bit, and I wanted to try and um, catch Murdoch um, by that first lap. Yeah. Thought if we could sort of catch him and sit there, we can sort of manage the race in the front a little bit. Long, still a bloody long way to go. Don't get me wrong, but it sort of puts us in a good spot, and we're we're running at a pace. I think we can we can keep. It's it's getting real rough out there and it's a lot of exposed stumps and rocks so you're you can be see real a careful. couple of drone shots of the corners already digging out as we know the pines does 
uh, tree roots are starting to expose and that sort of stuff. And I know you're in one of the top end cars. Do you feel them too badly? Yeah, you do. It, it really thumps the car and pops it. And yeah. even though these cars are, you know, have the suspension, um, the, the weight of the cars drives them into those dumps and you'll end up just folding a wheel over a brake. So you've got to be really careful of them. I know, I know you're busy. I don't want to take too much no, of your right. time, but um, there seems to be a fair few working on the car anyway. So uh, how many litres of fuel? I was telling people before, that just some interesting, uh, useless information for people out there. Litres of fuel? Um, we've to do the two laps, 120k. We've used 230 litres. Yeah, so, that's fuel economy. Yeah, we're a bit tight actually. We put 250, and I think we had plenty of a buffer. And as we're coming in, I said to George, "I might check that fuel." And he's gone, "Yeah, we're going to have to put more in." So yeah. we'll uh, we'll throw 250 into it now. So we should have sort of 280 because it's it's going to get heavier going. Yeah. Um, it'll get you know the sand will get heavier. The car will use more fuel. Yeah. Um, it's just it's real boggy. So it's you know getting out of the corners is. It's hard, but that's where those turbos are really good. On the second half of the track, I know on pre-run it was a little bit of mud, a couple of little slippery sections. That dried out overnight with a uh, lack of rain? Uh, not really. So there was a section um, we caught Burrows and Chandler, um, and we were up sort of behind Burrows, and I knew the mud was there, and I thought, oh, oh no, and it was too late, and I got filled in, and I actually lost it and ended up on, on the edge of a road and had to pass <laughs> them on the road and pop back down. But, yeah, it was, it was one of those things. You get a bit sort of hot-headed under the helmet, and you remember you just got to calm down, and... It's a long yeah, day still. There is a long day. There's four laps to go. The uh, what was I going to say about the car? There's no problems with the car. The car feels good. No, the car feels fine. We've um, we've been running. We've got a few boost, boost settings. We've been running on 16 pound, which is a it's a good number. That's sort of about 450 odd kilowatts, and it's it's plenty for out there. It's yeah. it's not blowing oil. It's all looking good. So top speeds. Are, uh, down the road, I think the 225, something like that, um, and then a few spots in the trees, just sort of touching 200. So. Yeah. It's, um, it's just it's a little bit slippery still out there, um, so it's, it's starting to grip up now that a bunch of cars have been over it. Yeah, nice. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, well, well done. Keep, get, keep it up, and uh, we'll see you at the finish line, mate. Yeah, we'll get Darren, keep pulling shit, and we'll be good. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. He's good for something, isn't he, Darren? <laughs> there you are, folks. Danny Brown, car 42, your current fastest car on track. They're feeling good about the car. Fed a little bit more juice in for this round, as he said. That's a lot of fuel to be using on one lap. Or well, two laps, should I say. A Luma car frame, they run two cars out here. I don't know what's happened to the old cheese, but he hasn't come in yet. I don't know if they've got word here. Temperature issues. How was it out there, George? I'm just with George, Danny's navigator. Hey, it was good. Um, Danny's had a good, clean couple of laps there, and um, hopefully we're just going to go and try to manage it now for the next four. We'll see how we go. Keep it tidy and um, keep it out of the trees. Yeah. If we can do that, I think we should come home all right. There was, uh, I know there was a, a reasonably fresh uh, area where they'd logged some of the cars. There was a crest over there, and you come and left-hander over the crest. We just watched it. someone come in and um, tip into those stumps, so some of yeah. that stuff can catch you out quite easily. Yeah, and the track does push into the stumps a fair bit more now yeah. as it does get um, wider, so we've just got to be real careful in the corners yeah. and keep them tidy. All right. Good luck, yeah. mate. We're going to go and mate. catch up with some others while we're out. There you go, George Atted, Danny Brown, and um, we're going to go and find wherever they are. I think it was uh, the Murdoch entry. I've got to find these people. I'm not too sure where half of these guys are camped. We'll probably wander through. the Two of the, two of the Burroughs cars are in, so let's wander over here and see if we can uh, get a little bit of word on those guys. The Monk car's sitting here, car 21. It's all action here, so. Cleaning helmets, getting everything ready. Greasing CVs. I'm going to stick a camera in your face, mate. How does it feel out there? Yeah, no, she's all good, mate, but I can't stop. we got a lot of things wrong here, so. I've yep, I've got to keep out of their way. These guys are here. They're not just here for a good time, they're here to get a result as well, so. Watch out. We're about to fuel up some cars out here, so we have to stand well back. In with Matty Burrows. Checking out uh, underneath the car. Looks like they might have had a um, 
power steering leak or something being attended to. Like I said, I don't want to get in there. I want to know what's going on and I want everybody else out there to know what's going on, but we don't want to get in people's way while they're trying to work. So we'll give you what we can where we can. Fuel's coming out, so we'll have to stand well clear while they fuel up all their cars. wander back through over here past the Martin camp on the way these guys are got people everywhere once again we don't want to get in their way but it'd be nice to get a little bit of insight on what's going on our current champion leader on the points Brent how are you going out there mate uh, yeah having a good good uh, good race so far did nothing nothing too much to report the throttle started sticking just on the road back in yep um, so we're just remedying that yep. and um, yeah we should be good to go bit of oil bit of, bit of fuel and hopefully keep going there's a, uh, there's a fair few out so yeah, yeah they're there's, dropping like um, flies the uh how's the track feel in your car mate oh i think same for everyone it's um yeah just deep deep sand yeah deep sand it just sucks the juice out of the out of the yeah. car you feel like you're going nowhere but you know we're in a better position than most like we've got you know even though it's a pro light, uh, it go, goes pretty well, so, you know, it'd be real hard work. And Leading the championship in points, so today it's obviously very important to get a clean finish, so hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully you get to the finish line nicely. Good luck. Yep, no, thank you to all our team. You can see everyone here, they're, they're going crazy on the cars, yeah. and, you know, we, we don't get here without them and, uh, and the help of Mickey Thompson and, and Dean Williams and, and all of our crew and um, Ron Milton up in Queensland. Um, yeah, I just want to say say hello and thank you to all those guys and and um, and my partner Hannah. So, yep. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so should be hopefully stress free afternoon. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, mate. There's, there's a, the Martin camps frantic down here. Hey, mate. The grazing. That's all right. You got to do what you got to do. I don't want to interrupt your your system here. here. Half hour. Yeah. How's it feeling? Good. Good. Track's yeah. fantastic. Weather's great. Spirits are high. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Car feels good. Car's awesome. No, no dramas. No, nothing. Just uh, just uh, can't keep up with the turbo. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's good. Everything's yeah, good. Yeah, there was good um, there was a. Uh, I think Danny came in a minute and a half in front of Andy there, Andy Murdoch. Yeah, but there's a couple dropped out, so it's only a matter right. of being there at the end. <clears throat> well, we've gone from 19th to fourth on two laps. So. I know, stellar effort. Yeah, Phenomenal. so we'll uh, keep going because it's always you've got to be there at the end. So. Yep. Bloody yeah, no credit to the club and everyone that's here. Great event. Yeah. Great weather. Thanks for that. And um, yeah, we've had a good weekend. Okay. See you good later luck, on mate. the podium. I'll let you get back to your work. Thank you. They are Dale from 11:25. Dale Martin and Brent Martin in the Martin camp. They've been doing this a long time. He's steering the uh, 1125 Alpha. Now I'm going to see if the Murdochs are around in car 1166. Our local guys all seem to camp over this area. Kurt Steffens, the first on the queue. Andy Murdoch, Dean Carter. Uh, there's a Pendlebury car parked up down there that they're no longer in. Don't know if we've got two seconds to have a have a chat. I just heard it, heard him say he needs to go have a quick toilet break yep. so uh, I'm going to interrupt if I can. Yep. How's it feeling out there for you mate? Yeah no it's 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 pretty hard work to be quite honest it's uh it's very uh, dry and sandy and and there's just no grip like it's really hard so yeah. you can just hear the car laboring and we'll burn a bit of fuel but we'll uh yeah persevere touch wood. How, I mean, many, how many litres on board? 160. 
160. Yep. What size engine for those at home? Uh, seven litre, and uh, yeah, we're getting about one to one at the moment, so which isn't too bad. It could have been worse, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's sucking it. Normally we get a bit better than that, but yeah, just dead sand. Da- I just had a yak to, yak to Danny Brown over there as well. He said exactly the same thing yep. that uh, the turbo car they're, they're uh, putting an extra 30 or 40 litres on for this yep. next section as yeah. well. Yeah, yep, no, absolutely. It's just, it's, and even up halfway around the first lap, I was thinking, crikey, it's getting pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> That's only the first lap. So still got five to go, but yeah. Well, we all know that the, the corners chop out in the pine forest out there with that sandy, the yep. sandy corners and the yeah. tree roots start yep. exposing. Yep. Uh, some rocks. I know there's some tree stumps and some freshly logged areas yep. to look out for. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now we hit a couple of stumps, and buddy, luckily we didn't knock the back tyre off. But <laughs> yeah, so just got to drive. Car feels good though. It does. Yeah. Yep. Nah, strong. That's really good. Like the uh, yeah, had a had a uh, water pump change last night, and, and front main seal we had to do after we finished yesterday. Yeah. Um, that's all good today, and uh, yeah, so we'll just uh, yeah keep on powering on. All right, well, good luck, mate. Good no to see you back in, and uh, we'll see you at the finish line. No worries. Thank you. Well done. Cheers. Yeah. There you go. 11.66, Andy Murdoch. And um, I know Kurt Steffen's our next car along just here. I don't know what they're doing if they're underneath the car. There is people everywhere. There's oil underneath the car. I know he had a diff change, a diff change recently, and I don't know if he's got two seconds to have a chat to us. But... Um, the 133 entry of Kurt Stefan. Good mate, how are you going? Uh, well, we were going all right. We had a little bit of a break because um, a couple of cars were caught up in a corner out there. Yep. Uh, but they were all right, so we sort of half, we stopped and then they all give us a thumbs up and we kept going. But then just as uh, we were coming in then, sort of the last 20 k's, really odd clunk sound. Um, and it turns out what we've done is broken all that back half of the diff hanger off oh. um, and you can see here bent yep. that the whole lot's been going like that and uh, worn out the rear seal in the gearbox so we've got it all apart and we'll go and fix this weld this up um, the workshop and see how much oil we got left in the gearbox and put it back together and well let's hope you can get back out there mate yeah. be, uh, good to see you finish the round here this weekend yeah but uh, other than that we're going to go back to smaller tyres and get some gearing back um, just yeah. some of the sand's a bit dead out there yeah, um, everyone said the same thing so far yeah we could do with another thousand horsepower or something I suppose <laughs> so, I think yeah. everyone could <laughs> <laughs> alright yeah. good luck Kurt be good. Thanks, Car th- uh, 133 the Teagle Excavations entry and a local lad obviously being we are at the Teagle Excavations We're going to wander down to some of the recently um, dug up area of the pits. This pit used, area used to be at the height I'm standing now. Obviously, we're in a working quarry, so the further we get along, they fur- the further they keep digging it out. So we'll wander down and uh, see if we can get some words from a few others. I know into the bus camp, and they were pretty busy back there, so we don't want to interrupt their daily flow. I see Mark Foster standing over here and I can't see his car. I'm going to try and pinch him just to see if he was still circulating. Mate, I didn't... Sorry, mate, one second. I didn't see you come back in. What's going on out there? Oh, we decided to have a rest. Yeah. Go and have a look at a yogi bear. Yeah, right. Mm. Uh, any issues? We don't have a right-hand front wheel attached to the car. There you go. That's what happens to the Foster entry in the purple uh, 411. Yeah, so we've got a bit of maintenance to do. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well. All good. At least you got you got out there. My car's still sitting there. Yeah, out. I just didn't been even, talking to him. <laughs> didn't even get out there, so never mind. There you go. Mark Foster's out for the weekend with a, a front wheel missing, but um, we'll see you at the next one. You will. Yeah. Good on Beauty, you, mate. Mate. The Foster crew love it, so I'll be back out. Watch your back, we've got uh, the middle miss entry. The middle miss, middle miss car of uh, David and Alice heading back out for the second 
of their two laps. So lap three and four, they're on their way out. We're at the, K, the, uh, the Haby Camp Car 56. I'm not sure if we can get a second to have a yap with Carl. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run and jam microphone in his face anyway. I'll only get told to nick off, so. Oh, how much fuel are you using out there? Uh, is Danny listening? <laughs> <laughs> He's taking extra. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we used about 160 litres. So. Yeah. It's pretty heavy going. Bit more, yeah, yeah, everybody said the same thing so far. So yep. a bit extra, bit extra on board for this uh, second seat. No, no, we still had too much, and we. Yeah. Oh, right. So, so we'll just go out with what we had. So. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. All right. So. Nothing wrong with the car. No, no. Well, we we hit a bit of wildlife out there. We bent a bit of stuff up the front, so we'll yep. straighten that out, and yeah, it's just fuel and go. All right. I'll leave you to it, mate. I know you're busy, but um, good luck for the second second lot of laps. No worries. Thanks, Sandy. Cheers, mate. The uh, Carl Haby, car 56. Doesn't look bent to me, but anyway, I can't, I'm not a wheel liner either. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it gets quite busy in here. Well, I'm not sure if we can get any further down in the pits, unfortunately, today, but we're uh, at our limit as far as internet connection goes for our camera and our, and our crew. So we could probably do a quick wander up around the back corner and um, see, maybe go and have a quick chat to Sibos. I see the Bogan boys in their 729er on the trailer over here. Connor Cooper obviously didn't have a good run. I can see in the distance here the Visser entry of 1057 and Pup in 1036 crawling all over the back of their cars. Uh, we just can't get quite that far with our connection, so you can look from a distance, but you can't touch, apparently. <laughs> we'll uh, wander up and see the, C the Cibo camp. What happened to you guys? They are. They are. Just got the word from the Bogan boys. They blew the motor up, unfortunately, in that 729 Blue GQ. You see Owen Ward backing out with his spare tyre strapped on a bit better this time round. Going out for his line-up. Can I please have car 1179 get through to headquarters? Car 1179. The uh, Sibos, Sibos 412. I'm coming in. Uh, I care where you want to go. You are. Hey, going out there, mate. You said it's on the engine out there. There at the moment. It is. Once you get in the boggy sand. Yeah, I said it's uh, um, a little worse than previous years, a lot softer. Yeah. Below. Loamy, I suppose you call it. I don't know what you call it, but yep. how are you handling it? Oh, not to, uh, it's up to you how hard you want to. Yeah. You know what it sounds like. You yeah. can just hold it flat and then the gauges all start going off the dial. So you've got to find a happy medium where you're trying to nurse the car and uh, not lose too much pace. No dramas with the car? Did you see what happened on the finish line? No, I didn't. I was actually wandering in. No, I didn't. Well, no. no, tell me. Tell me the story. We ran out of fuel. <laughs> oh, really? 400 metres from the finish line. Oh, there we, you go. Our front transfer pump wasn't working properly and never put fuel through to the back. So we know we can do two laps almost minus 400, minus 400 metres. So it'll be a conservative second lap to keep a bit of fuel in there in yeah. case it doesn't work again. Oh, well, sort of the problem. Well, we run 110 litres in the back and then we've got another 200 litre tank up the front. And okay. so we pump from that to the rear. Yeah, righto. Pump wasn't working. Yeah, I know those feelings. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> All right, Sibo. A, uh, a lot of carnage out there. Yes, yes. A I saw, uh, saw a couple of cars off into some stumps, etc. So. Yep. Uh, oh, well, good luck for the second section, uh, second lot of laps today, and uh, no we'll see at the finish line. I hope so. <laughs> there, are, that's Sibo, car 412, uh, LS powered truck uh, from down Warrigal Way in Victoria. I'm not too sure if we've got much more out here. We could probably wander over. Hixie's fueling up the car over there in 812 doing all the right things, full head to toe gear. How is it out there, Hexie? Uh, he's got a run down the road. 
Car's going okay. They've done an engine mount, so hopefully they can get that sorted. I'm tipping it's some sort of. Uh, we can't get too close because they're fueling up, obviously. But um, the AX has done an engine mount. Should be back out for his second lot of laps. Um, I think we're sort of at our limit with what else we can see down here. I see car 1145 has wandered back into the pits. That was Andy Brown in that Aluma craft. I'm not too sure. We're just um, in front of all the Martins here. The, the Alpha's heading back out. But we might. Hopefully that's a bit of an insight to you folks back at home and anybody listening on board with us this weekend. I might cut back to you, Brad, if you're there. And um, we'll wander back up to see the next lot of cars head out for their second lot laps. Yeah, thanks, Andy. That's an insight of what goes on in pit lane, and it can be frantic at, at the end of time. Glenn Pike just leaving the line in uh, car uh, number two. Leaving the start line, of course, we've seen Mott leave. Also, Heath Whedon has left, and also Adam Burrell in the 35 entry, the Jet Tech. Number 35 car has also left the start line, heading out for lap three. So if they're chewing that much fuel, here's Owen Ward and the Mickey Thompson tyres. Stand on the gas, 832, as we see Darren Franklin take off. Making their way back into the fight. And I'm not too sure where you are, Sandy. He's obviously on his way back. There goes Pike now disappearing behind the dirt on the front straight. Got three wide here, if you don't mind. Darren Gill is one of those. Uh, also, Jackson Evans. So, Jackson away. Jackson Evans sitting in between Owen Ward. He goes over that first jump where he lost a spare tyre when he went out the first time this morning. The Middle Miss team now lining up. As I said, it's, it's pretty hot. It, yeah. So there goes Jackson. He's going to be, he's probably going to look in the mirrors and go, we are going to be chased by a whole heap of cars. Darren Gill now leaves car 760. Middle Miss also gives chase. So Gill will just move over. Tucker. Visa also now leaves the line. They leave together. Joseph Patterson, Steve Graham. There goes the Ingen Middle Miss car, 1017. Joseph Patterson. You can see the Bogan boy sitting in our grandstand. That's not a good look. Yep, thumbs up. Bit more repair time in the shed, they tell me. <laughs> Driver blames navigator, navigator blames driver. <laughs> GoPro tells the real story, you do, you are aware of that. There goes Jason Forsman. Now look to the start line, the 42 car of Danny Brown. Away he goes. So have a chat now, slots into so Martin leaves. Andy Murdoch, Jamie Knight. Peter Stevenson. Also the two, uh, 274, that is one of the Forsmans. Andy Murdoch. Andy was saying a little bit heavy going. Actually chewed a lot less fuel than what I thought it would have. But still a fair bit. So he now gives chase. Jamie Knight should be the next one away in the Yokohama race line. Car out of Queensland, the 439 entry. You made it back alive. Only just, mate. 
It's a fair walk for a fat guy like me. <laughs> Didn't say, I wasn't, wasn't aiming at that. What I was saying was, and it's getting hot out there, even though the wind's up, the, uh, also the temperature's up fairly, uh, fairly high as well out there. And it was pretty frantic in the pit area too, from what we've seen, the pitches yeah, coming yeah. back. The Hopefully that gives very enough, frantic. People, enough people a bit of an insight to what goes on at the off-road racing. A little bit different to supercars. You're doing a Mark Larkham. Yeah. Just where's your tech, where's your Sandy Bowman Tech Centre? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was um, it was quite interesting to see some of the guys. Everybody saying that it's definitely a lot heavier in the in the sand sections. <clears throat> did you find out what happened to Andy Brown? No, I didn't, mate. Um, they did come back in, so Sibo's off the line again. Third lap, gee, they they're all bunched fairly closely together. They might be trying to. Drone chases Jamie Knight out off the start line. Look at that dust in the in the up on the road. What a section. car to follow too. Have a look at this footage. Texas out there on the hill with his little FPV. How good is that? Jamie Knight would be loving that those shots. He'd want to buy that. He'd want to buy that. He lead that car alive if he catches Mate, it. Right? Have a look at that shot. In a good. Texas drone does about 120 k's an hour. I was talking to him last night. I think I said about 100, 150, but uh, yeah, it was about 120 k an hour for that little drone following those guys. So if you see the the car pulling away from the drone, you know you're going over 120. You know, you, and you're going <laughs> quick. Three cars here on the line, car 21 of Mark Burrows, 56 is Carl Haby, and the 6684. Matty Lavis. Yeah. Burrows away, Lavis away. Don't let him beat you off the line, Mark. I believe Barnett had a little incident out there, possibly with Craig Krog in that 23 Buck Betty car earlier. Haven't seen that come back for a little bit no, either. No, uh, I believe, I'm not too sure, but I believe he's over there just getting checked out. Haby away. I never know whether they're telling me the truth down there about their fuel figures, etc., or whether they're just playing games with the other crews, you know. <laughs> they could be playing with your head, mate. Well, I'll just tell you how it is. I'll tell you how I see it anyway. I don't yeah. need to lie to anyone. If that's 230 odd litres that Danny's used in two laps, yep. that's another 240 for the second round. They'll use He's more fuel. 250 on board for the second round, and then uh, so that's 750 litres. So that's probably nearly no, 850, 900 litres for the weekend. Yeah. Barnett off the line, car 68. Does he have Still. shares in an oil company? Well. They do have a few in uh, one of our major sponsors, ARB 4x4 Accessories. Yep. Very grateful for. So Trevor Chandler sitting here on the start line, this King Chrome Tools 6.2 litre. He's currently in eighth position. Yeah. A couple of 40 minute laps earlier on. So Danny Brown's in 36.07, 36.08 on those two laps he left, uh, he did to start with. So those guys, they've got a bit to go. I did get a message earlier. Yep. I did get a message earlier from... Um, there goes our current champion leader, last year's champion. Brent Martin, I did actually get a message earlier just to say that Toddy Lehman may be out suffering an alternator. Um, also, uh, Molsey stopped out on track, unlikely to get going again. That's from Millie Vandy, which, uh, don't know how she knows those Vandys. <laughs> they seem to know everything, those Vandys, don't they? Yeah, they know, I heard they know all about those Sasquatches out there as well. So you're going to bring them back up again, are you? Yeah. Brent uh, just said uh, fuel, a little bit of oil, an accelerator issue out there. Yeah, he said the he throttle was sticking. Out. Throttle was sticking on the way back in, so that's not a good. It sort of puts you a bit a bit of uneasy too, especially when you get to put the foot on or take off the throttle, and she just stays wide open. 
Notice a little bit of dust now starting to, if you look towards the pine forest, you'll see a little bit of dust. That is on the out track. I did see, I only, only when I spoke to Sibo out there did I know he'd run out of fuel, but... Um, yeah, he, he stopped up there for a little while, so... Did he get over the finish line? He did. Under his own steam? He did. Beautiful thing. So... That, I saw the car stop and I was like, oh no, just 400 metres. Now that's just heartbreaking. That it, It's just hard. Just, you, you sort of feel for him. You, everyone wants to go and push him across the line. I uh, have towed the odd fel uh, fellow racer over the line myself back in the day. I haven't recently, but... Um, no, they probably towed you across the line. <laughs> yeah, well, we even got, haven't got out there. <laughs> no, we were not, not going there. Um, we, we have towed people over the line before. You, I believe you can still do that in off-road racing, pull a competitor over the finish line to get them across and um, without a penalty. Yep. Uh, but you can't have outside assistance. No. I mean, if you happen to find a fan belt on a tree out there and get in, that's a different story. If there happens to be one hanging in a tree and you happen to find it, I'm sure that's a different story. There would be a, a fine line in the rules there, but the, the rules are not taken lightly no. in here, especially especially by our AASA officials. Yes, officials. So, as you saw before, you know, guys fueling up, wearing full full suits, head to toe. They're not allowed to undo the fuel cap without a, a fire extinguisher in hand, a meter away from the car. No one's allowed to be working on the car. So it's pretty, um, they're pretty strict on the rules. And so, yeah, like and, and, and it's got to be too, of course. Notice also the Darren Gill, uh, the, sorry, the Kershaw entry car 701 bonnet is now off. So obviously, you, you made mention heat. of that, the heat that would yeah. be the problem with that. Because getting the heat in is one thing, but also getting it out of the engine bay and those front mounted radiators. Yeah. A lot of these cars run a radiator, a lot of the buggies and trucks, are, they're running no windscreens, etc. They run a, a rear-mounted radiator behind the cabin so the air that comes through the cab goes through the radiator. Yeah, it's a good idea. We've recently done similar in our car, although we still run a windscreen. We've done these giant scoops to get the air down there. 633, Matty Hummer, and yes. the race line entry on the way around. Obviously late to class. Uh, yep, a little bit lace, late. Peak Tamlin in the line, Sibo. 701 is on the line. Yeah, also Sibzo hasn't put the bonnet back on either. No. I just noticed that. Weight? Heat? Could be. I don't know. I thought you would have found that out while you were down there, mate. Well, I can only get so much. They, they're busy. They've only got half an hour to do all the, all the things they need to do, including a, a uh, rest room break and a bit of a refresh on, on some hydrolytes which will be um, pretty big out here. I know you know in previous years you usually go to Gundy or WA or something like that and the heat out there in the deserts can be phenomenal so you need to stay hydrated. They did say a lot of carnage out there as well. Yep. I know one of the, that was a big thing they were talking about, a bit of carnage that has happened. Looking on our screen. What a shot. Yeah, isn't it great? Big shot, big, big screens, put our screen out here for our spectators so they can see what's going on out in the forest as well. Whoever that is just turned massive Dark light. Dark coloured car. Yeah. Barnett, no? Could be. Oh, it could um, be the I'm build. just throwing it out there, mate. Oh, it could be uh, 35. Could be the yep. bill entry, car jet, number 35, the Jet Tech entry. The yeah, Atwood Fencing sponsored Pete Tamlin away, car 1042. Matty Burrows might have been a little bit late to his entry back to the race as well. Car one, two, three on his on his way for his second lot of laps. Next off, I think we'll have Pete Sibo and then the 701 Forsman entry. Of Joel Kershaw. Yeah. Which I think he said it was his first race. Somebody I reckon, said to I me on Friday night. I, I, I believe he was talking first race for this first this race. Car. Yeah. But there are Sibos on his way. Car four one two. Mark Foster saying earlier, also in a class four car, he's out. Yeah. He's on our screen going through. Is that Bowie just jumped over that road crossing? Dale Martin oh, straight behind him. Unless it was Danny Brown. I think it would look like Bowie though. I don't even know if Bowie's in to be honest. 
7.01 away. Now this is one coming back in. That should be the 2.79 entry coming back in. Second lap. Just trying to watch the that on the screen. I'm not sure where Luke is, our drone operator, is out there on the track. What kilometre marker he's at? No, I'm not real sure. So this is 2.79. They did come back in after their first lap. They've gone back out. They're now coming back in. So they're roughly half an hour slower. Well, a bit more than that, probably 40, 50 minutes slower than their fastest cars, aren't they? Yeah. Don't forget, folks, you can grab a raffle ticket over there. They've still got your, some. Uh, CRF 110 from... Um, Blue, 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 Blue Lake. City motorcycles and also four grand worth of Milwaukee gear thanks to Burston's Auto Parts in Mount Gambia. Hundred dollar raffle tickets, hundred raffle raffle tickets only sold. So good odds. It is indeed. And just noticed Graham Hicks, you were saying that they had broken an engine mount or something. Yeah, so. the boys were requiring the welder, so I don't know if Lamby Lamby uh heard me or saw my text message about getting the welder for the boys or someone's organised that. I don't know if Benny's found that, but they were needing a welder down there. It's already there. Yep, that must be sorted then. Must be. So as I said, the car 279 just come back into the into the arena. Well, Darren Vandy obviously watching at home. <laughs> We're asking where he, where, yeah, where is he, Andy? And so there you go. So, so if you look up towards the road section, you'll see something moving on that road section. That. Is two together. That looks like uh, Danny Brown about to round up. Maybe a middle miss car? Are you screaming, someone? folks? Yeah, if you look on that, and yep, there, there he goes. goes. So he should turn to the right. Now there's one in front of him, too. No, he looks like the Forceman Ute. I don't know. So he goes, cross, crosses the road, and you'll Start back into the left. That's two. They just went out. Two seven nine, just rolling back in in front of the crowd. Of, we're on board uh, out there. I think we've got Jamie Knight following. Um, yeah, there's two of them together. Here we go on screen. Car fifty six, the Element Racing. That is Carl Haby. Now, it'll be interesting to see who's behind him. And you may mention too, mate, there's two different lines there to take. So one like to a high road and a low road. Yeah, one. the low road is basically where the track is defined. Everyone else is going to the top side of that. Here's Matt Hansen. Great to see this car still rocketing along. Dutton Garage is on board. Start me up racing. He's at the start line early, ready to go back out for his two laps. Just shut the car down. Hearts Transport Services screen here out in the forest on the they, drone. They look slow, don't they? For not, I know they're not slow. Like Danny Brown said, what did he say? He hit 220k an hour out there in some sections and tipping 200 in between. Excuse me. In between the... Uh, Pine trees, yeah. and I've got to tell you, they go. That that's a lot, a lot of speed to be uh, dancing between some pines that are 200 feet high. <laughs> and and Carl did say he hit some wildlife too. Didn't look like he hit it. No, no. So that's Matt Hansen on the start line. The start me up racing. So Nigel will be counting him down because you have a rally safe monitor that will look. So Nigel counting down. When it goes zero, he will launch. Look 
If they jump to start, they'll get, get could could possibly get a penalty. Yep. They'd have some explaining to do. I know that. You've done that obviously once or twice. <laughs> no, I haven't yet. No, you haven't. I've been in trouble for a few different things over the years, but <laughs> jumping the start isn't one of them. No. Dean Carter, our local boy. Well on his way. Now, did he come in after he, the second lap or first lap? Uh, he came in after the second lap, I think, didn't he? But he did come in slowly, so... Yeah, I was trying to make... If we made, we hadn't seen him for a while. I reckon he must have been... Out, so this might be his second lap. No, it is his second lap, mate. Yeah. Not ideal. So the crew have done an amazing job to get it back out. Still got a lot in service break, just looking at our computer here. We've still got about 15 cars in, the, in on their service break. Some with some major repairs too, I've got to say. Yeah. Welders, I see, see we uh, have a quick yap with Kurt Stefan there. Yeah, he's seen uh, the, the whole back end off the car. I know we recently put a new back diff in that car. He it said runs uh, Subaru or Mitsubishi back diff, yeah. I can't remember what it was, but... He said he was going to have to go re-weld that up. The so frame was bent. Yeah. Forceman entry going past. In the forest. Matty Hansen's got to be ready to leave the line here, I think. Uh, another car that I'm tipping has got near 270 litres or so on board. Matty Hansen's car that would be thirsty as hell. 1,000 horsepower Ford Echo boost in gear. Doesn't that sound nice? Yeah. Just the way we like it. So Matt Hansen now leaves the line on his third lap. So he is uh, a bit out of sequence, but he was certainly make up time. As I said to him yesterday, I said, how long will it take you to get in the groove? And he said probably about 10, 30 seconds. I think it took him five. There he goes, Matty Hansen. Bit of ground to make up. Yeah, obviously had that um, power steering power problem, steering problem in early on. Under the tunnel and on his way out to the forest. You can see over on our far right some of the dust stream coming off some of the cars there as they're heading out to the forest. Nigel Penderbury, has got the best seat in the house. Strapped into the seven car. So he goes back out. So actually, if we can just see, we'll see him go out the road section. You'll see, see him go out. You'll Depends see him how far our drone can get out there. But oh, you can actually see them go out the road section. It's actually quite frightening. You'll see him going down the railway line. You'll see a, a thing moving very shortly on that road section. Just about to hit that white metal road now, and over the bridge, you've got a short little blast, and then you've got a little left hander. There he the is bridge. on screen. Little left hander, and now you will see him. Holding it flat about now, right up until about 200 something k an hour as he hits a, down and over the road jump. So you see the dust behind him. So if you look over towards your right right hand side, you'll not see what you're seeing on the screen, but the people that are here, you'll see Matty Hansen's stream of dust. There's a road section up just in front of him. Isn't that a great shot? Tell you what, thank you, Tex. Yeah. See that dust? That is Matt Hansen. Out to our right. So you see that dust here? Yeah, that's him. So he's got a right hander up at this farmhouse up here, then a little dog leg before he drops off the side of the road. And then does a right hander into the into the first part of the plantation. So he's turned right, around the farmhouse. He's got a little dog leg around. Wouldn't that be the ideal? Sit in the lounge room, and watch cars go past. <laughs> and then uh, 
out into the forest. And on that corner too, that dog leg you have, on the inside of that corner is a massive tree. On that second dog leg, yeah. Yeah. That's something that a lot of navigators would have made note of when they went past it. That just make sure that there is. So Brown, Murdoch, Haby, Martin and Tucker, your top five. Rolling on your screen. Beryl, Burrows, Graham, Martin, Middle Miss, top ten. Sitting in 11th, Chandler, Patterson, Evans, the visitor entry. And James Tyrrell, Glenn Pike, Stefan, Knight, Middle Miss and Darren Mott is in position number 20, car 435. As we head back to the forest, the Teagle Excavations camera out in the pine forest. Tell you what, the wind almost looks like it's backed off just a little bit out here. It Not has. Not too much, but it's definitely with the sunshine today, fantastic day out here. The, the breeze keeping us cool. Yep. But uh, the sunshine... Isn't that a great Making shot? it bearable as opposed to some of the previous Pines years <laughs> where have been every car that came in was brown. You would not know what is what. No. And those years are hard enough. You know, at least nowadays with the modern technology, we can actually see what is on our uh, race monitors and stuff, our rally safe, and that we can actually see what, what cars they are. But We've got some idea. Yeah, we never used to have any idea. No, you just had a guess. <laughs> I can still remember that years ago when uh, Tyler Owen won over Matt Hanson. We, we were told that Matt was on the way back in. We got told that, yes, here he is. And we just heard him come over the crossover and said, that is not Matty Hanson. That was Tyler Owen. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler actually rounded him up. Matt had a problem. But just by the look of the car, yes, and that's who it is. That is Burrows on your screen, folks. Young that, Burrows. That's one, two, three. Matty. Actually. That's Matty Burrows. So Mark should be up to the highway just in front of him. A bit busy. They didn't want to talk to me earlier, but I get it. Yeah, well, Mark said I he has got time. <laughs> they get, were out, get out of my way. I've got to get things done. They were looking at the rear of that car of the 21 inch. They were looking they, at the they rear. They pumping of grease into the uh, into the CVs, into the rear wheel bearings there, where they come out of the transaxle. So. I don't know if they were getting a noise or feeling a vibration or something and praying that that'll rectify it and get it through. You never know. Look on screen. So that'd be young Looks Matty. green? No? Blue roof? Green roof? I was going to even say it's, uh, it's a Burroughs. Well, it could be... Uh, young Matty or... Is young Forsman in the 1071. Single seater, straight out. 1071. As we say, one coming back in. Bowie? Looks like a Bowie paint stream, unless it's a uh, McIntyre 43, red. Yeah, that hasn't come back for a while. Who's that? That is. Car 43. So I don't know if uh, Benny and Billy are out there. Can get ready to give these guys a hand. Seems you... Well, they were hoping Graham Hicks, but hopefully they can give um, McIntyre crew a bit of a chop out out there. They were all cool and calm and collected this morning on the start, on the start before the start. William off the, off the uh, start line, 10-13 in his single-seater CBR powered. That'll find it hard, won't it? That'll be working really hard in those in those deep corners. I remember previous years, you know, those the class fives, some of the lesser uh, built class fives would struggle in the corners and stuff like that. Even it, it, it's more than more than just the class fives, they'd struggle in the way of um, wheel clearance, where the where the ruts dig out and the corners dig out. Yeah. So obviously you've got to pick your lines good, sorry man. Yeah, you do. You, you, and that's the same thing, you've got to pick that right. But as we're saying, the McIntyre car is in the house. This is, will be his first lap in the books. So he'll have to go for another complete lap before he comes in, unless he comes in and sees the crew. But he has been missing in action for a little while.
still sounding very nice, but yeah, he will come in. Car 43. Might have an issue. Yeah. CV says on the screen, so I don't know what they've done to get that going if they've broken a CV out there. Yeah, that's obviously just made effective repairs. Just seeing, um, I'll just read you through a couple that are out. Uh, Andy Brown, overheating issue. Dean Carter, we saw Dean Carter head back out a second ago. Um, Glenn McIntyre is actually on his service break, so once again, if the boys are down there, Benny and Billy, grab out, go over and give him a chop out on his service break, that'll be good. Craig Krog, we talked about earlier in that 23 car tree, so uh, that's never good. At least we know the pine's softer than red gum, so yeah. let's hope it hasn't done too much damage yeah. out there. Molesy in that beautiful BMW is out with an engine, so we won't be hearing that for the rest of the weekend, possibly. Yep. Toddy Lehman... Uh, in 1185, just got a DNF here, doesn't tell us what's actually amiss with him. We've got a few DNSs. Um, Gary Turnbull, one of those ones or two that didn't come back, the 1179 entry. Sean Ratcliffe. Yeah. He was parked up in the back when I went out there before, didn't look like he was in a hurry to come back out. Mark Hardman, we talked about earlier, we, it looks like he only got out to that roadhouse somewhere. Sorry, that farmhouse, as we saw earlier. Um, DNF, Simmons, Gearbox, How at front end, due in 811, stopped uh, Foster front end, which we talked about in the pits with him earlier. Gary Turnbull, engine, oh, that's, that's disappointing. No Jake Williams uh, is in the pits. Yeah, so there you are. we've got still got 46 cars, 45 cars out there that I know of, but 43, yeah, there's, we're down to about 40 cars still competing. There's so There's still 701 still going, the Kershaw entry. Well, I tell you what, yeah, bloody good time to get over and get a raffle ticket, mate. I think so. As we look on the screen, for, I'm going to go for a quick wander, and I'm going to go and check how many are left out there. You go and do that. Go and see how many tickets are left. As we saw on screen on the Hearts Transport camera out in the bush, you have seen Matt Hanson go by at warp speed. So it's great to see on that camera, the hard transport camera. See him sitting out, waiting for cars to pop out of the, the pine forest. As I said, we've got some cars that have unfortunately not finished today's event. So we look on our screen. Big wide open pine break. That is the screenshot, big screens, drone that is up and about. See your car that's just turned into that pine break at the moment. As we see here, one coming down the chute. The, one of the class the 66, there goes James Tyrrell. James was late to class. Obviously he had a little, little bit more to do in the service break than what he needed to do. So just remember that when they do come in from the time they stop to the time they get to Come back in across the track, 30 minute start. So while we've got a, just a moment before Sandy gets back, just looking on screen, there is the 1166 of Andy Murdoch. The 
and just behind him. Just trying to pick the number of it. That is on the Teagle Excavations camera out in the bush. Thanks to our great friends at Teagle Excavations, ARB 4x4 Accessories, Hards Transport and Teague Industries. Also Mundulan Daring, the Open Road Caravan Sales and Repair, Hards Transport, PMD Race Products, Art Sign Outdoors, Forestry SA 141, Steel at Australia, uh, the Private Parts Engineering who've got a raffle going, go over and see them. Person Auto Parts, ACM Plumbing, Total Tools, Screenshot Big Screens and Heem Skirk Security. Many tickets left, mate? Mate, there's about uh, 20 tickets left on each board, so get over. Get a ticket, 100 bucks each. If you need to call a friend that's here you to get, get them to shell out 100 for you, do that as well. But there's uh, four grand worth of Milwaukee tools up. There's a $4,000 CRF110 brand new bike. Out, sitting out there, <clears throat> um, I did just pry yeah. another pry another hundred out of my pocket for the Milwaukee tools. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I told you you would, didn't yeah, I? I said I, I don't know. I'm a bit of a sucker for that. I've got to tell you. Yeah, you've got three. You've got three on the bike. This is going to be the entry coming back into the arena. Wow, we saw that. see Hicks going back out. I know Hicks had an engine man issue. They said before, so good to see them heading back out on their screens. Now he left. I didn't think he'd be back so soon. He's done a fair... That's a fair hike. It is. Doesn't seem that long ago he left. Um, tell you who we haven't seen yet, who's very close to coming back in, is the Danny Brown. Yeah. He looks like he's just about to enter the chute, so you should have uh, Danny Brown over on your right coming in any minute now, over the crossover. I suppose when we think about it, yeah, so, so Adam's got away in the 35 Jet Tech. His first car on the road at this point in time. But for how much longer? Just, just how, how has that happened even? He was the 39th and 40th car away this morning. He hasn't, le he hasn't let Danny reel really him in. Yeah, he's sitting down, yeah. Yeah. Ran through some seagulls, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know where they've come from this weekend. Well, as they come from the sea, obviously. But yeah, they come from South End. Yeah. They are car 35, the Jet Tech entry. Third lap of the day. In the Three box. laps to go for the last round of the Australian Off-Road Racing Championship backed by ARB, Mickey Thompson Tyres and Raceline Wheels. Normal. What a season it's been. Fantastic season. I've been to every race. Loved every race. My car hasn't even made it around a lap of every race. What did you say last I'll tell you what, we're coming back next year. We'll be back here next year. We've got a few new crews. I was speaking to the King Chrome guys earlier. Yep. Guys and girls, they're going to be following the uh, ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship next year as well. Fantastic to see more people coming on board. What did you say this year? You've done 33 competitive kilometres. I... Don't think it's even that, to be honest. <laughs> in the, in the championship, I'm giving, yes. I'm giving you a few more Ks than yeah. what you should have. There he is, Danny Brown, on your screens. So we would have our, passed Adam looks going like out. Our, uh, looks like our drone's struggling to keep up. Might have to cut the corner a little bit to catch up to him. Uh, Danny Brown, folks, in the Milwaukee Son written car, Carmen's standing right next to me here at the uh, his wife. She looks happy. She's probably nervous, but also happy to see Danny coming back in. Danny and George been in the car together back since he had his little mustard coloured Chenoweth, Chenoweth, however you say it. 250 litres on board, 220 kilometres an hour. Yeah, that's... that's he yeah. is. As I said, he must have a share in an oil company. He really does. 16 pound a boost. 450 kilowatts. Just some useless information for those that want to know <laughs> or don't want to know. Don't want to know. There's one over the back as well. That will be... Murdoch. Should be. Yes, I it is. It's it Andy looks Murdoch. like a Murdoch car. Yeah. 
and we've got Mott also rising over the uh, crossover. So there you are, Andy Murdoch in front of us, folks. And, da yeah. and Dale Martin not too far behind him. Uh, and da Dale Martin about to round up uh, Mr Mott. Clean pass there. Mott obviously pulled over, knew he was there. Let him through, and then he's back on full race pace. Carmen waving to Danny as they head out for their fourth lap. Yeah. The Alpha seems to have re reeled them in a bit, though, doesn't it? He has. He has indeed. And of course, not only that, but they'll be back in after this lap. There is Tucker. I'll tell you what, Tucker's doing fantastic as well, you know, sitting in sixth place currently. Uh, 38 minute lap, so that's only a min uh, minute and a half, two minutes behind our race leader in a little uh, class one car. Yeah. And not the latest and greatest in technology there. He's not, you know, it's not a 2023 is what I'm getting at. It's, no. a, it's an earlier model frame. Mott staying to the side again. And he would have he would have seen them coming. Yeah, you get... Uh, Watch Danny Brown go through the crossover. Here we go. Murdoch. Sounding crisp still. Long way to go, but uh, seven litre. Yeah, seven litre motor bolted in the back of the Murdoch entry. Here comes Dale Martin in the 11.25. Splits the Seagulls. Another seven litre powered car. Dale and AJ. Fantastic to watch that, those cars come through here. Here's the middle miss middle entry. Middle entry in the Tucker. Currently yep. fourth or fifth place. Yeah. There are folks, we just got Danny Brown's time up for his lap and he was at a 37 even Andy Murdoch behind him at 37.09 Adam Burrell 37.5 so half a second over that lap between those three cars Dale Martin just jumped up to third place with a 30, uh, 38.15 a little bit slower uh, Simon Tucker that 110 car 39.37 and Darren Mott He's uh, on his four, uh, fourth lap currently, fourth lap. and uh, he came in with a 43.38, so he's doing reasonable as well. Mm. Obviously, they're placed on the road. They're still sorting out some of their um, orders, and that's what I was saying earlier about with a reverse grid. It's a little bit confusing to see the times come up on the board because uh, as they're pecking their way through the slower cars. So exactly. Here's Carl Haby. Bowie over the line. Bowie and Ella. Yep, and there's uh, Chloe Hayden. and Haby. Gee whiz, is that Haby going up there? Yep. That shift cut's pretty savage, isn't it? Just seeing if everyone's awake. Here's, here's the middle miss car. That is the 117. Bowie in with a 40.41. They're three minutes off the off the pace. For that type of car, it's not too bad. Middlemas a 41.13. There's the 10.57 car as well. As we say, Joseph Patterson go through in the 175, the Patterson Motorsport. 41.02 he came through at. Yeah. Currently eighth pace. Darren, let's drop Darren Mott down a few spots as we get their times through. About to see Carl Haby come across the finish line. He to start his fourth lap. Pike, right out in front of us. And I reckon there'll be some fairly big temps coming through these cars now. Because the, uh, it feels like in the last 20 minutes, half an hour, the temperatures come out come up a bit more yeah I'm gonna do a weather check mate you can do that I'm gonna do a weather check Millicent currently sitting at 28.1 degrees uh, so, sorry 21.8 degrees yeah, so where do you get 28 from dyslexic <laughs> uh, 20 21.8 degrees 
out of a maximum of 25. Just so you know, waxing mm -hmm. gibbous moon, gibbous moon phase here in, in Northern South Australia. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely useless information. Absolutely useless information. Visser over the line onto his fourth lap, 10.57 car. The Burroughs entry 21 in front of us here on his way back in. And just coming over the jump over there, looks like the second in the middle of single seater. Yeah, that should entries. be Ian in 10.17. I don't know, there's a car alarm going off out there somewhere. I thought it was a, someone passing on the track, but no, it's an alarm going off in the pit area. I think they might be up on the, uh, in the pit area. I just see Brady come back with a bucket of chips there, so while you're, while you're standing around, folks, grab yourself a quick bite to eat. <laughs> I'm good, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for uh, the offer. People don't want to hear my voice, let alone hear me chewing as well. Uh, you can grab yourself a feed from the Mean Feed Spit Roast over there. Grab yourself a drink from the bar and a yep. raffle ticket while you're at it. There's and only it. 20 of each left. And I reckon one of these cars will be Sibo. And Wardy. Yeah. On board. Yep. Oh, and Jamie Knight. Oh, Jamie board. Knight, sorry. I do apologise. Is that Owen behind him? Yep. Owen yep. right behind him. Still the spare tyre on there? Yep, he does. I don't know who's noisier out of those two. Nighty, <laughs> I reckon. They are 21 Mark Burrows over the line onto his fourth lap. I'm chasing Mark Burrows around some of those near corner screen there, folks. Just going around the mounds. Got a few drones out there, Luke out in the forest, and uh, Tex has got a couple running inside in here. So getting as much footage as we possibly can for you folk at home to see what's going on where. 1101, Franklin. Yeah. Jason Forsman and Del Palmer back in uh, the arena. 474 car. That's your middle miss on your screen there. Over the line on the single centre 1017 vehicle. Yep. Mark Burrows just before come across the line with a 3956. Yep. And here just come. in front of Bowie. There you go. There you go. So here's Knight just looking at straight ahead. Will be the King Chrome entry, the of uh, Chandler. Look at that, Jamie Knight heading for the finish line. Plenty of support in the crowd from them. Owen Ward. Closely followed by our Grant current Martin. champion, yeah. so I'm hoping they get a clean pass around Owen. They've got... Uh, they need to have a clean race. To, currently in the leadership by over 20 points, or just on 20 points, I think it was, leading the Australian... Championship. Championship. There's Craig Barnett also in the house car, 68. There we are, Brent Martin safely around Owen Ward on his way back down the chute, and he still has Jamie Knight to get around, but... Uh, That'll be a match for matches down that straight too, mate. Yeah. Jamie Knight goes under the tunnel as... Um, Brent's just swinging around it to go under the tunnel. They're about five or seven seconds behind him. Yeah. All right, if you want to know, sorry mate, if you yep. wanted to know, uh, Brent sitting in 8th place with a 40.01 on that lap. Mm -hmm. um, just see if it's updated here. Jamie Knight with a 42.18, Glenn Pike 45.21, Darren Mott 43.38, Ian Middlemus in that single seater with a 44.57. Jason Forsman, 45.28. Owen Ward with a 46.16. And Darren Franklin with a 47.37. Chandler, just be through before, uh, a 41.04. So our top three on, on speed today is Danny Brown, Andy Murdoch, and Kyle, Carl Haby. Fourth and fifth is Dale Martin and Adam Burrow. There's Craig Barnett going through. You haven't seen Heath Wheaton come back either yet. No, I'll do a refresh. Yeah. 
grab a couple of cherry cans off his trailer, Tally. So we're just looking for a few cars. There's Barnett as he a little bit of a clean run, a bit of a dust free run as it'll leave the leave the arena and head down the railway line. Let's see, I'll just do a refresh here and see where some of our competitors are. <coughs> we were looking for Heath Whedon. I think we've got uh, six three five which is the Eden. King Chrome entry on her way back in as well as 760. So there goes the 279 car for lap three. So car 279 heading back out for lap three. That's Andrew Forsman. So here's one of the King Chrome entries. It should be 635. We're just wondering where that had been. So through that comes. Didn't see Eden go back out. Eden Evans in the 6635 didn't see that go back out, but this car is still going. So around the top of the circuit. So it'll be across the back of the circuit. You can still hear Jackson giving it everything he's got. Car is still going strong. As we look on screen. Not too sure who that was. Might have been Murdoch. Now veer to the right. Drop him. Yeah, it must be Murdoch heading back into the forest. Yeah. Well, well, we've got a little bit of quiet time. I heard it. Yeah. Uh, I heard a little bit of information out there that it might be Aaron Habe's fiftieth birthday. <laughs> He's down in the grandstand over there in the second grandstand. Hey, mate! Happy birthday! <laughs> you were dobbed in. <laughs> They are Eden over the line. No, that's Jackson. Oh, sorry, it was Jackson too. Eden didn't... I haven't seen Eden come back out. Oh, right, yeah. And there's the uh, the Gill entry. Car 760. Car 760. Now, just... We were watching the Alpha go back into the disappearance of the forest there. That was uh, Dale, Dale and AJ. Good spot for that camera to be in out there, I reckon. Yeah. Good little action point. Hmm. Basically, it's where the power lines are. comes out onto sand track. There is one. That's, one oh, Tucker. That's Tucker, yeah. He's doing quite well this weekend, sitting currently in sixth. And only really a minute slower than... A uh, minute, minute and a half slower than Danny Brown. So... That's, that's a pretty phenomenal. Bad. That's not too bad effort either. compared when you when you look at the horsepower and like I said, you know the year of the vehicle, etc. That they're steering. Bob Strawbridge would tell you it's still a good vehicle. Oh, definitely. Well, you don't get there without it being. No. Especially preparation. It's got to be one of the most chilled vibes at a Pines I've been to that I can remember out here. It hasn't started yet. We haven't got to the last two circulations. <laughs> Don't forget that Cruz will be back in this time. So Brown's on his fourth. Burrows is on his fourth. Majority of the field is now on their fourth lap. So the pit area will get busy for the th second time today. I see someone down there in a race seat. It looks like Molsey's colours. Yeah, I noticed that. Snacking uh, on some nachos. Yep. 
I believe he had an engine issue, Molsey's, which is unfortunate. Long way to go down from Northern Territory. There's yeah. a few race suits in the in the crowd. Unfortunately, yeah, we're down to about 40 cars, so we've we've knocked out a few. There's someone pulling over out there in the forest. Looked like Jamie Knight pulling over to let someone through. As we see on our screen, the Haby entry, yeah. yep. 56. Minimus. Right behind you. Gee whiz. They've, done, they've had a ripping season. They have had a ripping season. Sit, sitting second currently, that Middlemiss Beam car, in, in the championship. In the yeah. so, so they're only... Uh, they're Brent Martin's first in that one car. Middlemiss is second. Um, There's Joseph Patterson on screen. He's become the McIntyre entry going back out. Car 43... We've still got our top five in the champion, top six in the championship still circulating. Brent Martin, Middlemas, Matty Burrows, young Matt, uh, 439, Jamie Knight, Craig Barnett, and that uh, Maroney burgundy coloured Cougar mm -hmm. racing car, yep. and uh, 1110 and the Franklin side by side. So that's our six championship leading cars all stick six still circulating they are still indeed there's probably how they got there in the first place exactly just keep circulating 274 also in the house at the moment McIntyre on your screen folks waiting to go back out for his second set of laps car 43 hey mate <laughs> <laughs> he's gone on don't Said they had done a CV with it. They've obviously reflected repairs. Dropped a lot of time He's doing it. He's our neighbour from uh, yeah, you were saying. Seville, Wandering Way in Victoria. So they've travelled... Fair distance. Six or seven hours. We've got people that have travelled a lot more than that. 20 hours. Is that Dean Carter coming over the crossover? Yep. On the way back in. Good to see him back up ra at race pace again. And uh, trail of dust behind him. A Burroughs car coming in behind him, maybe Matty. So I think uh, Mark's a little bit further around the track. Oh. I'm glad that wasn't a CV. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounded a bit um, axle braking noise. The, uh, the one, two, three behind, uh, behind him, young Burroughs. Like as I said before, he's also in contention for points for a championship. I think he's in the top four, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and, uh, Sandy. Yep. Two seven four Forsman entry over the finish line. That'll be lap four. There's the other Burroughs car in the corner of your screen, folks. Monk yeah. built, steered by Father Burroughs. Matt Lavis over the line, 6684. Hasn't he done a great job today? Yep. And some of those holes would look like <laughs> holes. As deep as the car. Yeah. Be interested to talk to him tonight at presentations. How did you go around those corners? Those corners? Be very, very interesting to see. If we with some of those drone shots that were out there before. <laughs> yeah. You'll see it uh, early on and then you see it. I've always said it'd be good to do a post run around the track just to see how badly it gets chopped out so people realise what people have got to deal with as competitors. Dean Carter, local lad, swinging into the pits. I don't know if that was... I think that was his... He did what? come in early, no, yeah. so it might have been just his second, yeah, that second been lap, second I lap. think. So he'd be in for his service. Yeah, Dean Carter is in for his service break with a... Uh, Paul Bugger, uh, an hour 46 on that lap. So that would have is obviously what sucked up his time was coming into the pits early on. So now he's on his service break. Yeah. We've got a total running time, I think, usually around six hours or so to complete the whole course today. Seven hours, isn't it? Seven hours for yeah, a 396 three kilometres. Yeah, 330 today. Track will close. And that is when... Yep. They're going to... Uh, or I think it'll probably be before that, I think, they were, when they're doing the podium which the faster cars will probably come over the line a bit earlier, they'll do our raffle. 
So yeah. get over, get a hundred buck ticket, beg, borrow, steal it, don't, don't really, well, don't steal it, but beg or borrow it, and get yourself a uh, raffle ticket for that bike, hundred bucks. McIntyre are away on a clean start. We had one of them at the start of the day too. Be interesting to see what these temps are going like out here now, because they've got a lot of generative, generative heat. Generative heat? Is that a word? Where uh, <laughs> anyone goes, you know, like now. aluminium, you know, housings and stuff. They just don't get a chance to cool down. Half an hour might be sound like a long time for things to cool down, but I'm sure the gearbox housings, blocks, all that sort of stuff will still have an immense amount of heat in them before they head out for their second session. There's Jamie Knight on screen in the 439 entry. Making their way back into the forest. Isn't that a great shot? Really time for an ice cream, mate. Reckon? Ice cream, coffee. All of the above. All of the above. Hamburger, steak sandwich, sausage. Yeah, donut. Yep. There's Owen Ward. Oops. Owen's a bit wider than what he would like to be. He's still being chased. By who was that? Definitely a bit skew with. That is the key. Chandler. Home. Chandler. Well, yeah, look like Chandler. Yep, that was the 11-11 entry. Chandler seemed quite fast out there today, so... Sensational day, the weather, blue skies, zero cloud, nice breeze to keep everyone cool. I'd love to refresh this for you folks, but my the rally safe doesn't like refreshing for some reason out here too well. Sibo on his way back in over the crossover. Had a quick chat to him earlier. Obviously taking the front off maybe to get a bit more airflow around it. Trying he's telling me I think the other day he runs seven auto oil coolers on that thing. Yeah, we've just gone from three to five on our car, so try and shake the heat out, especially when you're running a bit, bit, a bit of a bigger stall torque converter. They can create heat quite easily, and it's a bit hard. Can get a bit hard to shake the heat out of them. He's done well to get back. Hmm. So Peter Simpson in the house. We saw him earlier. I didn't see it, but uh, yeah. struggle with fuel over the line. His transfer, he was saying his transfer pump from his main tank to his usable tank was um, not working. He said he had 200 litres plus 110. Yeah. We've got um, a couple of other cars with looks a uh, young Hummer. Looks like he's about to start coming down the chute. 6681. 4, 1, 2. Oh, that's Sibo. He's up a bit further. So I reckon we'll have any minute now on our right young Matty Hummer in the race line entry. 6681 coming up and then... Uh, 701, 1042, so we should even see Matty Hansen starting to come back in. Yes, yeah, that shouldn't be too far away. Because there, if you look on your screen, Matt Hansen's just behind the 1042. Down the bottom here. Yeah. Just up the road, just in front of those two cars are 701. There's Kurt going with it. 
hurt, left the line in a ball of excitement, Mr Gear. He actually said he missed the gear earlier as well. Matt, uh, young, young Matty Hummers looks like it's uh, him coming towards us over this jump back towards us here at the crowd. And then uh, I think it was 6681. Yep. Who's coming in next? So there goes James Tyrrell. It should be on screen. Oh no, that's the King Chrome entry. Sorry, that's a six three five entry. Doesn't that scoot along? Indeed, fresh car. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. And in it goes. So what about it? That's car. our race line wheels entry in the background there. Race line on the board for the championship this year. And very much appreciate the support. Also coming in is the double six eight one entry. Coming back into Ross Newman. Yeah. Queenslander. Over the jump. I think it was a manual shift. Was that the one you were talking about that Pretty had the sure manual that's shift? The in manual it? shift yeah. Yamaha. Yep. They've done well today. Sounds yeah. manual shift, either or that, or it's got a long shift cut on it. Yeah. So the 633 coming now across the line. Went to the final straight to, to start. Young Matt Hummer, first season in off road racing. First race with his father, I reckon, uh, in the mid 90s mm -hmm. in winch challenge Chris Hummer who uh, has a lot to do with the race line wheels department notice a little bit of dust kicking up to the right hand side of where cars are going out you can still see a little bit of dust straight out in front of us as well but if you look to the right a bit further you'll see more dust so that should be our leader's on their way back in. If you look on your screen there, that drone's just looking around to the right. You'll notice, if you look over towards those big pine trees a bit further out, you'll see some dust on the road. Danny Brown still first on, on uh, time by the looks of it. Looks like he's just gone around Matt Hanson, unless Matt Hanson hasn't um, updated, but maybe he's uh, having a little issue out there again, Matt Hanson, I'm not too sure. Six, six, eight, one. They'll be working hard out in those uh, cornering ruts. Oh. Not only are the, do the ruts in the corners get deep, also the braking what we call, well, I call them, I don't know, stutter bumps. So as you're braking coming into a corner, some of the bigger cars will leave Holes. a big corrugation. Yeah. So that can um, also be tough in those smaller cars. Even our own car being a Class 8 um, patrol, it's not really uh, ideal. It takes that little area, so it just slips down and... Head off. He's on the way back in, puppies, by the looks of that. He's um, not far off jumping back onto the white metal road before the hairpin left onto the bitumen. Yeah, that would have been a good place to put a camera out on the bitumen as they come out there. You got a hard left hander onto the bitumen and a sweeping right back onto the yeah. next white metal road on the way back in. So he shouldn't be. Who are we there? That's, that's the 35 entry. That's the jet oh, tech. yes. That is the first car on the road. So Danny shouldn't be too far behind him. Well, sh soon we should see the 701 entry coming yep. up the chute any minute. And um, followed by the 1042, which is... That's Pup 1042? No, 1036. Uh, Pete Tamlin. 
Pete Tamlin, yeah. 42. So the, Danny Brown's got a fair bit of air between uh, Pete Tamlin and himself on the way back in, but... Hanson shouldn't be too far away either. Yeah, it looks like, looks like Danny Brown went around Hanson. Hasn't, from what I can tell here on the rally safe, it um, shows Hanson hasn't moved for a little while. So whether that's the truth or not... Let's hope not. He's looking on our screen. There is, there he is. There's the Brown. current race leader, Danny Brown. About uh, over three quarters of the way around on this lap. Yeah, that's near the end of the lap. That's over. He's got a little bit of a high speed section coming up on the way back in, too. He's not far off dropping back onto the white metal road before the bitumen, and that's you wind those cars right out in that little section before it starts hooking around onto the bitumen. Yeah. So that's the 760 going back into the bush. I think who would be behind Steve-O on his way back in as well mm -hmm. that'll be have a chat racing yeah we um, really should be seeing there's Andy Murdoch on screen the 1166 yeah, the 701 back in the stadium and we should be seeing uh, oh, it's showing that jet tick car still out here. So 10:30, 10, uh, sorry, 10:42 should be in next. 10:36, which is Pup. Yep. And then 35 and Danny Brown. Danny Brown looks like he's uh, pulling up on that 35 jet tick car. So if we're taking time out of him, don't forget. Both those cars will come in for their 35, uh, 30 minute, 35 minute service. 30 minute service. They're on another service. Yeah. Next. So it'll be interesting to see fuel economy this time around. Well, especially if the track's only getting heavier out there. Yeah. Right, weekends like this makes me want to build another race car with air conditioning in it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, they, they normally have 250 air conditioning, don't they? Two windows open at 50 yeah. miles an hour? Yeah. Problem with our closed cab cars, if you crack a window, it seems to suck the dust in rather than leaving them up, leaving them up and pressurising the cabin. Yeah. Is that a Fallsman entry in over there, the back? 279? That should be the 1042. Shouldn't be oh. too far away, you were saying? Oh. It's Pete Tamlin. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. 10.42. Great to see Pete still going, going strong. And either Pup or uh, Adam. So either the 10... 36 or 35 car in next I reckon or they'll be side by side at least any second now you'll see them over on your right coming over the uh, crossover I think they're all going to be coming into the shoot at once Danny Brown's in the mix there too Look, checking on the rally safe there is the Martin Alpha. The, yeah the 1125 there you go over the bridge is the jet tech entry. Oh my line. Those two together. There's two together. That is the jet tech one. So it's rounded up, that's two all behind him. Ah, that's who it is. Which means we have uh, Danny Brown should be the next one in. So both those cars should both go into the pits for their service. So 
So Adam certainly having a great race today in that 35 entry. First car on track. So there goes Peter Tamlin. You'll be certainly aware that there is cars going to be behind him and they're going to be closing at a great rate of knots. Just as we look to, to the Here crossover. He Here he is. Danny is in. Not sure what came off his car as he landed there, but it looked like a rock rolling to the side. It might have been the drone chasing him, mate. Yeah, I see the DFPV on the back of him there. In the bottom corner of your screen. So Adam's in. So James has continued. Should James have come in? Good question. I thought he was... Uh... Didn't think he'd drop that much time. <laughs> Definitely continuing. Have a look at the shot there, chasing Danny Brown in. Look at the roost off the back of that 42 buggy, straight through the drone. He is our operator out there, obviously just wants action rather than care for his equipment. Tex out there, phenomenal job. See if he can keep up. Clearly not. There you have it, Danny Brown over the into his second service break for today, folks. He's got two, left, two laps left to go. Yeah, so uh, George, be saying, right over, we've now got 30 minutes to turn this car around. The Alpha should be coming in any second over on our right. That's obviously Murdoch out in front of us here. That, that is, missed. that is Andy. to see Andy in. Got people eating donuts next to me over here, mate. Gee, they look good. No, no, I'm fine. I just... Uh, it was offering. <laughs> no one else does. <laughs> I know, I'm very you grateful. Know, the VIP tent very nice to us. They offer us food, no one else is. We can be bribed with food. <laughs> here he comes, Andy Murdoch. 7 litre, 11.66 over the finish line for his fourth lap and into a service break. So we've got three cars currently on their service break. I'm going to let you know that yeah. Danny, Danny Brown did a th the fastest, oh no, sorry, his first lap was his fastest. fastest. Thank you. 36.45 on his fourth lap. Yep. Adam in car 35, 38.07 on his fourth lap. Um... <clears throat> And Andy Murdoch should come up any second now. Actually quicker than, uh, than Adam. So Andy Murdoch in second place for this section, not overall this section, uh, at 30, 36.57. So wow. they're yeah, still, you know, they're not slower. They're not much slower than what they were on their first couple of laps. So those, those corners and um, where it's dug out is obviously not affecting them too much. Dale Martin, AJ Rowe. The 11.25 Alpha on screen and Darren Mott down in the bottom corner heading out through the forest. It looks like Darren Mott's on his way back in. He's got about five minutes, five or seven minutes before you'll see him again. Yeah, so top three in. I can see the drone following uh, the Alpha in the background there. Some of these cars, we are on a pit for their half hour. I'm sure they'll be uh, roasting as they're getting out of the cars. 
I'm sure they didn't get a chance to cool down enough prior to going back out. So see we're chasing the alpha back in and they're not far from the finish line. Carl Haby in the bottom of your screens. Carl car 56. We just got a call for car, the crew for car seven to headquarters, so they're listening. Oh, Matty Hansen's obviously had an issue out there. Unfortunate. They are car Haby in the bottom of your screen. I can just refresh or more uh, I'll be able to get you Dale Martin's time. Carl Haby, South Australian in the element buggy. Tell you what, I don't know if I'd be throwing my drone under that starting gate like that, but that's great footage. I love loving seeing this. Carl 56, Carl. I'm trying to refresh my computer here, folks, so I thought I'd give you some times, but uh, might take a second to come up. I think we have coming in, in the background might be Bowie. Looks like I've read. Yes, it is. The 1065 class 10, two and a half litre power K24 Honda motor on board there. The big screen with Bowie. It looks like uh, maybe Matty Hummer in the corner of his screen out in the forest, heading back out into the forest. Middle Miss entry on the way back in the beam car. Once again, remind you that that Middle Miss car on the main screen there, currently sitting sex, uh, se uh, second in the uh, championship points. So, husband and wife David and Alice Middle Miss, they just need to be there at the end of the weekend to get a podium on the. From the uh, for the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship this year, 2023, we're on our final round here at Millicent over in South Australia. I know we've got people all around the world watching, so thank you, welcome aboard. Just watching Bowie over the finish line, Bowie and Ella, Graham, and uh, I can finally give you a couple of times. Carl Haby currently sitting third on uh, that lap was a 37.12. It's his quickest lap for the day. Dale Martin with a 38.50. Uh, so we've got four of them in on their service break. I'm going to nick off, so we'll do a little bit of radio silence before Brad gets back. I'm going to nick off and race down and uh, do a little bit of a pit walk.
Not sure if you can hear me out there, but we've just uh, we've hopefully rectified a bit of our internet issues down in the pits as well, so we might be able to do a full pit walk from one end to the other. What happened to you? We did a fuel pump. There you go. Eden Evans, they did a fuel pump in the uh, third of the, or second or third of the king, three of the King Chrome buggies there today. They uh, in the satin finished one, so it's no good, but um, we're going to wander through the pits. Tell you what, it's warmed up out here. So anybody that's out here in their uh, race gear I'm sure is absolutely cooking. I'm going to wander up I'm going to wander up to our left here in the in the eastern side of the pits I think east not that I'm a very good navigator but we're going to go up to the eastern side we'll see Danny Brown and um, maybe even Andy Murdoch if he's in and then we'll head back in and uh, back down the bottom we'll have a quick chat to the middle miss crew also Habies if we get a chance now once again I know these crews will be flat out busy out here so I don't know how much of a word we'll get from them just walking past the Martins and ten people all over their car as well hey mate oh they're, they're pretty Pretty chillaxed over in this camp. A brown car. Mate, you look so relaxed over here, George. Just uh, having a bit of time out as well. That's why we bring so many people with us. You don't us. look as hot and flustered as you did on the first couple of laps, mate. Nah, feeling better. So yeah. You obviously got fresher air. Yeah, we get a bit of a groove. Actually, that, um, that restart was a bit hairy. We probably had 10 cars within two minutes. So <laughs> yeah. it probably took us about... A good 20, 30k to actually round everyone up and pass everyone yep. on that first lap. So, other than that, it was really good. Yeah, car feels good still. Yeah, it hasn't really missed a beat. So we're just trying to find a sort of. Um, it's hard to find a pace that you can sort of stick with. If you back off too much, sometimes you can, um, you know, become unstuck. So you just got to, you still got to be up it a bit. So that's what, what, we're what are to the do. temps doing? Um, yeah. Exciting. No, our temps are just. They sit really good. We've got a really good PWR um, cooling package in this, and they don't, they don't budge. They, yeah, you know, the engine sits on. 86, 87 right on the thermostat, um, oil temps low 80s, um, converters up around 90s, so yeah, the thing just it's, doesn't miss a beat, it's good. Yeah, beautiful. Alright, oh well, I'll uh, keep wandering, I'll let you do your thing, but it seems like just fuel and back out there. Yeah, just had a bit of a look over it and everything's good, tyres are good, put fuel in it and go again. Yeah. Carl didn't want to tell me how much fuel he was using down there before, he didn't want to let any secrets on whether he was going to have enough to do it, but it sounded like he was a... Uh, he was resetting the fuel gauge when he went down there, so I don't know what that's meant to mean, but he, he literally said, oh, what did Danny tell you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's got two extra cylinders, so he'll use a bit more. <laughs> yeah, he has. All right, mate, good luck. Cheers. See you at the finish line. Thank you. The Danny Brown Car 42, our current fastest car on track today. We're going to wander down and uh, see if we've got a minute. Like I said, I know it's hard with these... ...themselves, prepping themselves for the... For the apps. I don't know if we've cut out there, but come down to the Alpha. Let's see if we can get a word with AJ. AJ, I see AJ's checking up on times here. <laughs> How's it in the passenger seat, mate? Ah, uh, yeah. It's um, the track's starting to break down. It's getting pretty rough out there now. Yeah. Um, but um, no, nah, we're having a great. Great time out there. We're just trying to. It's uh, the car's working pretty hard out there. I think and everybody is. And um, yeah, so the car's getting hot, and we're just managing it at the moment. So yeah. as long as you can manage it to the finish line, I think you're doing reasonably well out there, fourth or fifth outright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, it's there's room for improvement, so we'll see how we go. All right, mate. I'll let you guys get to it. I know there's plenty to do. That's AJ navigating in the 11:25 for Dale. See Dale over there just having a snack and a cool off. Oh, having a Mars bar. <laughs> These boys are rehydrating. This is a good thing. Good thing to see as soon as the car's in. Uh, Brent Martin, last year's champion and our current leader in the championship points, 
one of the sharpest crews in, in the uh, game, the Martins. Before they're even out in the car, they're checking wheel bearings, uh, sorry, wheel nuts, make sure they're still torqued up, checking everything they possibly can. They've obviously got a set routine. Once again, I don't want to get in their way. Great to get a word. Fresh out of the car, you're looking sweaty as yeah. hell, mate. I know you want to get a drink and a, and a pee break. Oh, feeling yeah. good out there? Yep, no, feeling good. Um, yeah, same same deal. Just same story. Trying to stay out of the bumps and stuff. Like my back's going me. Yeah. But um, yeah, just getting up on the in the ruts and things, you know, or trying to get around around the ruts. People are getting bogged out there. It's pretty treacherous. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when we first went around on the pre-run, it was quite smooth. And I took a couple of fresh guys that had never been to a race before. They were surprised how smooth it was. I'm like, I'd like to bring you for a post run yeah. and see how rough it actually is. But the car looks like it's doing quite well. Obviously, you're, uh, you've just got two more laps to go, hopefully to secure the number one again for the next year. Hopefully, you don't have to change that number. Yeah, that, that'll make things easy. But, uh, yeah, two more to go. And the uh, boys will look over it again. They're doing a great job. Everyone's just straight into it, as you can see. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, we'll just try and look after the car, no no heroics, not trying to oh. win anything, just get it to the finish now. Yeah, good luck, mate. Uh, thank you. We'll let you go and cool off and get a drink. That's Brent Martin, your current championship leader. As you can see, they come in, they drop everything. They've got one of the top crews out here. You don't get that number one on the roof without being the best in the game, so... One, two, three, four, seven people on this car. Eight people working on this car. I've had eight people working on my car all weekend too, but it hasn't left the pits. <laughs> they are Dale Martins, your current, your current champion from last year. There's a previous champion of the Martins, Craig. They've been uh, second generation. We might go for a wander over and see Andy Mur Murdoch. I, th I think on the other side. Sorry, mate. We're um, it's a bit hard to to yap to people. All good, Craig? Yeah, the regular stuff. Yeah, not fast. He's low key, Craig. Well, he says he's low key, but I can guarantee you they run a tight ship. The car is impeccably impeccably uh, looked after I know Craig does a lot of the work in the Martin garage when they're back home before they even get to this far in all the local guys get to park up on this fence here all the local Millicent Sandbuggy Club crew the Murdoch entry I don't know what's going on here but I'm coming for a sneak peek oh there's a bit of a any issues, or we're just uh, checking? Just checking. Just got a little bit of a weeping um, front caliper, so we're just checking front wheel. Yep. Weeping front caliper. Yeah, just the front one there. Let's have a little weep all weekend. The uh, Andy Murdoch 1166 car. It's starting to look a little bit weathered now. You can see. Um, there's not too much, not as much mud build up as we saw at Hilston, obviously chewing away things like calipers and and, and pads, etc. Under the back end, obviously uh, a lot of these cars are running transaxles and as a set of autos and stuff. Mate, if you got time to clean the clean the number, that means the car's running really well. It's going all right. Yeah, that's going all right. So. Boys are saying it's just a little caliper leak on the front. Yep. Not like. Uh, I was just saying before, you know, not like Hilston where we had calipers ground away in that mud on our on our second round this year, but yeah, uh, no, feeling good. Yeah, no, it's good. I reckon it's, the track's starting to grip up a little bit now, it's starting to get rid of all that sandy stuff on top and getting into a bit more wet stuff, and and it's got a uh, yeah, cars. I actually going thought well. I actually thought myself out of my head that it was going to be um, creating a bit of temperature this afternoon. Danny Brown said he seemed to have cooled off a little bit on his temps. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're sort of uh, torque converters up around that bloody uh, high 80s, gearboxes around the 80s, but the engine and everything's running cold. Like, yep. it's, yeah, yeah everything's really good. So it's working. Like, yep. it's, we're using plenty of fuel. And, uh, yeah, but 
Fingers You're crossed. You're running a 37-inch uh, Mickey T on there? No, only 35. 35. Yep, only the babies. So, yep. yeah, that's just uh, that's what we've been running. So, she's all good. Yep. Yeah. All right, mate. Yep. Well, uh, see you at the finish line. Two more to go. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, you'll be there. Long way to go. The uh, Andy Murdoch local lad yep. in uh, car 1166. I don't like taking up too much of these guys' time just because they do only have half an hour. Half an hour to fuel, uh, have a quick feed, freshen up, cool off a bit. As you know, they're in, uh, they're in fireproof undergarments in there. They've got a triple layer race suit boots. They've got balaclavas. Um, some of these guys run a blower system in the open cars. Some of the closed cars don't. So they can be quite... It can be quite warm in the car. Uh, I just see Owen Ward coming back into our left. Their crew running over there. A few more people that were a bit lighter on on fuel. Owen said they were a li little bit light on fuel, so they were going to pinch some fuel off some other people to get, just so make sure they've got enough to get to the finish line. I'm coming down to uh, Habe's camp. And also... Adam in car 35, so I won't get in and amongst them too much. I just hear Carl Haby talking about flat battery issues, so maybe they've got alternator issues or something. I'm going to jab a microphone in front of Adam here before they head back out. I know you're getting busy. I know you're busy getting ready. Yep. How's the cars feeling good? Cars killer, mate. Cars going wicked. Yep. Looking fast out there. Yeah, cheers, track, buddy. How's Looking the nice. track feel? Sorry? Uh, it's, it's obviously roughing up, and roughing up and it's getting fairly deep ruts in some of the corners, but... It feels sideways. It, uh, it yeah. <laughs> some of those jumps, mate, are pretty big. Yeah. But, yeah, loving every minute. Well, I'll leave you be. I know you're getting, getting ready. Um, good luck. See you at the finish line. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, Adam Carl uh, in uh, car 35, the Jet Tech entry gloves on they have to run a wrist restraint on the outer wrist for them um, so like I said they've only got a short period a uh, short service break down here there's Molsey on the truck unfortunately what happened oh there's Craig Barnett how are you going gang out there yeah my it's rough we've already we had a converter issue First lap, but he went out on overtamp, over rev, and couldn't work it out. I think we pulled a just pulled an airlock into the converter oh, and right. spat the oil out. So anyway, we backed off for about 15 minutes and we were right. So we, we hooked into it and then I don't know what came about halfway round there. The truck hit us straight up the arse. It was six, seven minutes trying to un unwind from that. that. That was a bit of a bugger, but anyway, that's racing. Yeah, we got out from that. And we've been going right since. So yep. all right, mate. I'll let you keep going. There, yeah, Craig Barnett. A quick few words. There's, uh, I see the um, crew from Black Betty sitting down, relaxing. Obviously, they had a little bit of an issue early on with a tree. This is Barnett's car. We we're just talking to a second ago. Not sure where they were sitting overall on their points, but uh, on their um, lap times, etc. Today, but I know they're doing reasonable on points. So. What's going on with the car? Anything uh, exciting? The, We're just here uh, for the just, goss, mate. Just fueling up, mate. Fueling up, checking over. Had a little bit of torque converter issue on yeah, the first two that. laps, but yep. yeah, topped her up with oil and she's good to go. Okay, there you go. There you go, straight from the, straight from the crew. Ready to go again. They'll uh, have a break and um, be straight back out there in contention. I think they were sitting about fifth or sixth for championship points, so They'll be wanting to head back out as soon as they can. Now that we can get down this far, we couldn't get down quite this far earlier, but we've got Mott's over there to our right, fueling up. We've got Jamie Knight. Um, also on fuel. Round to Chandler's, the one of three King Chrome entries. They've got a monstrous crew here, first championship round for them and uh, they assure me they'll be back next year. They're obviously dealing with, like I said, not that I don't want to get involved but I don't want to get in their way either while they're trying to work on the car but um, ch 
pressure handler's car is obviously having some steering issues of some sort. There you go, CV boot and some power steering issues. So whether he's lost power steering might be another thing, or he's just, uh, you know, it could even be an airlock in the, in the steering pump, uh, steering fluid. There must be 30 people in this in this camp working on cars. So 635 entry down the very bottom here. That new new car out for this uh, this race, their first run. I don't want to interrupt what's going on, but uh, yeah, well, let's get in amongst it. Well. It's pretty full on down here, as you know, on the earlier ones. Just doing simple checks, wheel nuts is one of them. These crew, back before they leave to come out to a race, they'll have uh, rehearsed 90% of their what they've got to do on a race, and that'll be any any mechanics or pit crew will do a set number of checks. They'll have a, a checklist off everything that needs to be done. Obviously wheel nuts, wheel bearings, brakes, I'm just snooping on what's going on in between it. Keep doing what you're doing. Just, and just, know, that. just know that I've got a microphone here. <laughs> no, we found a big rock. One of the ones that we've dug out. Blew the tyre, like blew the front left tyre. Yeah. Then we had a problem with our jack. So, yeah, just the jack wouldn't lift it off. So it's stolen my sister's jack now. Yeah. But, yeah, we got the tyre swapped, but we lost a bit of time. Yeah. But, yeah, we're still going. Yes. This feels good. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Yeah, beauty. No, it's going along really good. No, no issue with temps? Either no, you or the car? No, it's, <laughs> it's not too bad. We're just sort of learning it out, trying to look after it. I think we could probably push it harder, but um, I don't know. I want to get to the end, so yeah. we're just going to keep it pretty safe. All right, I'll leave you be. I'll leave you do your thing. Thanks, Andy. See you at the end. The uh, Jackson, as you see, Murdoch on his way back out. He's got two laps to go. 11.66 is uh, LS powered local vehicle. Tell you what, it's getting pretty warm out here. Trevor's in his gear here, but he's uh, Mate, how's it feeling? I see they're working on a little bit of power steering and CV issue, but how are you feeling overall? I'm knackered. I lost, <laughs> I lost power steering as I left the pit, so just did two laps. Uh, I've got real bad arm pump, so yep. hopefully it's just a servo, but it was tough. Yeah. I'm absolutely knackered. You only got two to go, mate. I know, I hope I can just get a finish finally, so yeah. the boys are going hard, so hopefully they can um, get it all done. Yeah. All right, I'll leave you be, let you rest for a bit. Good luck, mate. I'll see you at the finish line. Yeah, Trevor Chandler, car 1111, so obviously got a lot going on here to try and get it to the finish line. The CV, they're changing a CV at the back end, which will be stonkingly hot, absolutely roasting. So I'm tipping, as you can see, you got a rag trying to not touch the bolts. Quick CV change, that, look at the heat coming off that. That's phenomenal, hey? They're going to have to belt the CV head off that and um, belt a new head onto it, make sure that the boot's not torn. As soon as you tear a boot, it spits the grease out and the grease is what seems to keep them cool. So uh, when you get on those white metal roads, when you're hitting up near 200, 200 plus kilometres an hour, it can quite easily get those CV, the balls in the CV joint absolutely roasting hot so 
and pump some grease in around that CV where it meets the transaxle. Obviously a Hollinger in this one. Literally nine people working on this car to get it back out in time. So we don't have a uh, we don't have a number of people capped on who can work on what cars out here. I've hunted down Jamie Knight's crew. You all right, mate? Yeah, good, real good. Jamie Knight from the Gundawindi Club. Yeah, how's it feeling? Yeah, good, mate, real good. Car looks well yeah. settled. Arched. Yeah, look, we. On with fuel temperatures, everything's spot on. Faultless, faultless. Good. Yeah, nothing's moving. Yeah, we just, you know, and we're not out to set any records. We just want to get it done and yep. get it back on the trail and stuff. Still uh, in the top six in points. I saw there's six of the top uh, championship point getters here still circulating. You're one of them. Yeah, yeah. We're looking pretty good at the moment. Look, um, I think um, one, two, three is having a few little issues out there. So I see he's just dropped down the order a little bit. So look, we've got two laps to go. Yep. What'll happen at the end? Yeah, we, How's the we car won. handling those um, deeper corners now? The corners are fine, that's not a problem. I mean, we're running on pretty big tyres, so that's not an issue. The brake and bumps and, and the accelerating bumps are getting big. Um, but, I mean, we handle it, no worries. But, yeah, you just got to watch out out there. There's a few cars scattered around the track. So, yeah, there's, a, you know, there's and, and all the officials out there doing a great job waving flags and that and getting us around. So, yeah. But, yeah, no, nutrition rate out there would be a bit, I think. I haven't seen anything, but... There's definitely a few cars out there. Yeah, it was down to 40 last time I saw, but yeah. uh, sure it's more right now. Yeah, no, no, we we got a good run. Two more, two more laps the same as we've been doing, and we'll be happy. We'll see you in two laps time, mate. Jamie Knight, car 439, all the way down from Queensland on the border at Gundy. Bowie and Ella on their way back out. Good to see them do another two laps as well. Car 1065. The Mott crew over on our left here, all getting back in, strapped back in for another run. You got Carl Haby. I know they were uh, they were talking about charging issues, and I just heard them before. Right behind them, Patterson rolling back out. Joseph, Joseph Patterson, beautifully presented car, beautiful blue frame. Dale and AJ. Be excited! Uh, excited to see those boys finish too. They did have a rough, they had a rough run at Hillston. Those guys, and second on the points, another one of our points leaders, the Middle Miss crew, Dave and Alice, in that beam car. There are also, there are, we've got a few of the contenders for points still heading back out now. David, and, David and Alice were sitting equal third for championship, as uh, equal second, sorry, for championship points. So. It quietens off out here. Um, we'll wander back up, wander back up, and uh, cross over to you when you're uh, when you're back at your post, Brad. If you're up there, I can't hear you, see you, or smell you from here. So. <laughs> you see the crews in the element buggy here cleaning up from the remainder of the clean off of Carl's car. Yeah. Thanks, mate. So uh, we can just see, still see you on picture there, mate. There's still a fair bit of action going on down here. I can't believe how many people some of these guys have working on their cars. As we saw the Brown crew, the Martin crew, the King Chrome mob down the bottom corner here. They all had t 8, 10, 12 people working on their cars. So that's a lot to keep one of these cars going. Unlike a V8 supercar that just, I know there's a bit of... Uh, logistics go into that as well, but they're only lapping around on tarmac that only changes due to temperature or uh, rain, etc. Out here, every lap the road digs out, the corners dig out, so there's a massive difference every lap for these cars out here. And uh, it can get quite stressful. Wardy, I'm going to butt in before you're heading back. You're heading back out? Absolutely, it is good out there. Yeah, yeah. It's, rough, rude, it's, getting, rude. Get, yeah. it's getting rude. Yeah. We're, we're making it easier for the fast guys because we're diff leveling all the corners. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is good fun out there. Really right. good fun. I'll let you keep going. We've got to get back there as well. So all enjoy right. the last couple of laps, mate. Good luck. There's Owen Ward in car three, 832. We saw lose a spare off the start line early on. While I'm wandering back up, yeah, you sneak into 
You're going to sneak into that tent, aren't you? You're going to sneak into that tent, aren't you? I am indeed. The Teagle Excavations private VIP area. Now, obviously, it's the Teagle Excavations quarry we're using as our headquarters here this weekend. Now, Sibo comes over in front of us. I tell you what, this is what it's like to have a VIP area, folks. And you can get into your own VIP area over there as a sponsor. This is the major sponsor for the event. Uh, they've got a beautiful little sitting area, got a bar, got some food on board, put on by Teagles. And um, once again, you can get on board as a sponsor. And uh, you can also get on as a championship sponsor. I know they've got the three major ones, ARB 4x4 accessories, Mickey Thompson tyres and race line wheels. But you can also jump on board on different events, etc. You can sponsor the, the big screen, you can sponsor the cameras. There's different packages throughout the whole year for different things. So well, on the way back, I just wandered down once again. You can still grab yourself a 100 buck raffle ticket. Just one green mini could see you riding away on your Honda CRF 110 today. I've put uh, a couple in. I reckon you put more than a couple. The, um, Milwaukee gears through Burson's Auto Parts in Mount Gambia. So you can get nachos and tacos that way. You can get donuts. <laughs> you can get a, a steak sanger or snagging bread. Mean feeds have got a spit roast going on. I see MLM sneaking down. Maybe she's grabbing a refreshing drink. She's grabbing a couple of stubby coolers. This is where it happens. This is where you can get your ticket. Right there. That's how many are left. There's not many left. And there's not much time left. I see on ticket number 94. Look. Oh boy. There's a handful left on the Milwaukee gear to the left as well. But that's a. Uh, there's probably only 15 spots left for the dirt bike, and there's probably 20 or so left for the Milwaukee gear. Have a look at this bad boy. I've got an early model at home, but I tell you what, I reckon my boy Van will look pretty good on this thing. CRF 110. Brand new. Thank you to Blue City Motorcycles, Milwaukee gear. Don't even know what they've got in here, but they've got a, a rattle gun, they've got a couple of different packages, grinder, drill, air dr uh, electric dremel, and uh, light rattle ratchet. So there's a fair bit of gear there. Grease gun, and I've just bought one of those grease guns. Fantastic. So get on board, 100 bucks a ticket, 100. Get it. Get it. Get it. Uh, also, Shannon's are here. You can grab yourself a coffee and ice cream, a hot dog or a Kransky. This is what the Pines has to offer. We've got a sand pit down the end for the kids, and you can go over and see the guys down at the Steel It tent in the middle of the spectator area. You can go and speak to Riley, tell them all about, uh, listen and hear what the product has. They've got a uh, raffle going off this afternoon as well. Wander down there, have a chat to those guys. They've been a big supporter of the... Um... Yeah, thanks, mate. This is Bowie Graham leaves the start line, car 1065, also on the line of the middle miss car. Just also rolling back in is the Tucker entry. I've seen them coming back into the arena. So uh, that is why also noticed Heath Whedon also starting his third lap had a battery clamp come off the car. That was what the story from the crew had a battery clamp come off. So they had to get the crew to go out to that car. They have effected repairs. They have gone back out. They're still circulating, so Heath Whedon, car 779, just in front of the leaders as Middlemiss leaves the line. 
second in our championship. Also sitting here on the line is car 175. This is the Patterson Motorsport all the way from Portland. Very nicely presented piece of machinery. Has ran faultlessly today. One on the start line, one on the start straight. This car we haven't seen for a little while has been out in the bush. That is the Simon Tucker entry car 110. Zi one has been missing in action for a little while, was keeping up with those leading group. Car 21 sitting on the line as well, that is the Mark Burrows, the B of Gouridge. Brand new race car for 2023. As Patterson leaves the line, he will have he'll know that there is he would have looked across and would have seen Burrow sitting there. So he will know very shortly down that road section that he'll have a car behind him as we see a couple of cars coming in on the back of the railway line. One is James Tyrrell. So he should come in this time. And also I think you'll find it'll be the 279 entry. Yep. Darren Mott sits on the start line, car 435. Also coming into the dummy grid is car one of Brent Martin. So there goes Burrows, that is Mark. I believe Matt has gone into the pit area for a service break. So they're not in together this time around. Also notice the 1057 entry. Also sitting down here on the start line. So Mott away. Leaving the arena. Here's James Tyrrell. So James leaves. Heads towards the pit area for his 30 minute service as Brent Martin goes back to start lap five. If you're just joining us, lap five of the 2023 Tigal Excavations ARB 400 is well underway. Our leaders are in the pines at the moment circulating we'll have it up on screen there it is so we have cameras out in the forest amazing pictures coming from the forest today the rods away In the 10.57, there is the 6.33 entry, still going strong. So there's 2.79, that is one of the Forsmans. Still going along. Jamie Knight pulls up here in the Yokohama backed race line 439 all the way from Queensland. Craig Barnett as well rolling in. So Craig was saying they've had a few little issues out on track, managed to affect repairs and getting back into the fight. So 
So that was Matt Hummer that went through a little while ago in the 6-3-3. Race line. Can Am. So here he is. We go across the line. Goes through the seagulls at the top of the circuit. I think you'll find they will be in for their service break. So we did a 53-28. He's just coming in for the 30 minute service break. So the Cougar Racing car 68. So there's Knight. Had to make his way out towards the railway line. Jamie was saying they're very, very happy with the car. Everything seems to be behaving itself. Craig would have just realised that I can catch this truck in front of me. I love the way that, love the way that Jamie said that, that the holes aren't pa posing a problem. That's because he probably stands about three foot out of them. So notice Owen Ward. Can't get that smile off Owen's face. Also standing alongside him is Jackson Evans. So Jackson, you may heard my mention if you've just... If you were here, Jackson actually said that they actually punch it a right front. They've now taken Eden's jack to make to jack the car up. They had trouble with the jack getting that right front off. Have replaced it, put another spare tire on the rear, and now we'll go back out. What would you do without Eden, eh? Borrow from other, borrow from the from the other team. That sounds good. Also, don't forget if you're just joining us too, Trevor Chandler, in the double one double one car, they were replacing a CV on the back of that car. Let's hope they, they get it out in time. Just remember, they have a 30-minute turnaround. Trevor was saying that he's a little. Little bugger. Says it is hard work out there, and of course with no power steering either. So that's one of the issues they were chasing when they came in. So stand on the gas. ARB Mickey Thompson tyres. Got a good sense of humour, young Owen. If you weren't here to see the start this morning, Owen, probably one of the most embarrassing moments. Went over the road over here to our right and the spare tyre decided to vacate. And that stayed here in the complex. There's Pete Tamlin. Car 10.42 making their way back in. There's also the six double six eighty one car coming back in. Great to see that car still still circulating. That was Ross Newman. So Ross will come in for his service break.
So he will come in and have 30 minutes to turn the car around. Quick toilet break, something to eat. And they'll go back out. And he goes, I'm oh, leaving the arena. He'll go to the left under the crossover and the Teagle Excavations crossover. He'll now turn to the right. So away goes Jackson. I'd love to hear that down the road section. This is when we need camera down there just to show and go over that road junction just to see what it's like. A little car at speed. There is the Tamlin entry. So Pete's coming in for his service break. having a quick look Andrew Miles because we all know out with an engine issue DNF for Todd Lehman overheating for Andy Brown they got the car back here Connor Cooper obviously detonated that one so we look for Peter Tamlin at the moment in service a 5042 they got it back out there mate Trevor Chandler, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I snuck off for a quick bite to eat. You did? Uh, a lot of Trevor stories. Trevor Chandler, they did uh, CV and they had a power steering issue. So I don't know what they did to rectify the power steering issue, whether it was just a, a bit extra fluid or a bleed up or whatever. But um, gee, they had some people down there. They would have had 16, 18 people working on two cars down there. Half a millicent. Yeah, that's crazy. leaving the stadium just about to cross over underneath the tunnel there Jason Forsman also leaving in the 474 so Pete Tamlin in now as I said Pete sitting at the moment in position 28 he did it in a 5042 and he is uh, in for his service break uh, Ross Newman also in for a service break so we uh, head back to the top of the tree. So Brown leads the way. Andy Murdoch did his fastest lap on lap four. So a 36.45 to a 36.57. Carl Haby did a 37.12. And Dale Martin did it in 38.50. It must be Dean Carter coming down to the finish on our left, mate. It does. Sounds it like it. Good to see the race yes, speed, it is. isn't it? He's back. The boy's back. Motor racing. <laughs> Throws those curve balls every now and then, as you, as you know. Has thrown a couple your way this weekend. Yeah, well, all year, really. A couple of tennis but balls. More like basketballs, yeah, well, bowling balls, even. Cannonballs. <laughs> Doesn't matter, we'll be back. Yeah, bigger and stronger for next year. Little, the single seat middle missed car coming over a crossover. Great to as see this car still going. Out. Yeah. Oh. Both the middle miss cars are always consistent. So we look on screen. That will be Andy Murdoch, I reckon it is. Going back into uh, the forest. Chandler? Oh, no, Murdoch, yeah. Yep, Murdoch. I'm looking up <laughs> this top one, okay? Oh, yeah. There's Ian middle miss. So I did find out what happened to the Whedon team as well. Had a battery clamp come off. Oh, so that's not ideal. No, still so circulating. They are still motivating. They're still going. So that come from word from the crew that they are still going. So he now makes his way across the back of. The Teagles Quarry. So just looking across that. So at the moment, Ross Newman, the last car in for a service break. 
in car number 6681. So we just... So Ian Middlemiss will be in this lap. For Glenn this. Pike, CV. Yeah, just reading that. wonder why I hadn't seen it for a little bit. Joe. Thomas Forsman. Yeah. Axel. Yep. Out. Steve, I have a chat. Did a gearbox. That's unusual. We're just starting to see a couple of different um, things come up on the screen here. Bowser. Maddie Hanson, which we knew. Eden, which we knew she was out. So Middle Miss will come in for service break. Car uh, 1071's crew yep. needs to get up there. That's Thomas Forsman, one of the five Forsman cars. They've got plenty of people there to help out. Yeah, there is the 1057 car. An there. hour 23, so he's obviously had some dramas. Ian has in the second lap. Going yeah. in for a service break. Yeah. Might have been bogged somewhere. Who do we just see disappear into the forest then? So we're just looking here on our screen, just just looking at Darren Mott, car 435, was sitting about 16th place out right at the moment, has stopped with a flat tyre. So, oh, you gone back to the screen, well done. For some reason this doesn't like refreshing too nicely. <laughs> So there you have it on screen at the moment, our, our live timing, our also rally safe. And there is Jamie Knight on screen down the bottom and that little bit you can just see a car moving, that is the Yokohama 439. Yeah, this won't, unfortunately this won't refresh but uh, I've got another sneaky way of doing that and it's jumping on my phone. <laughs> Here's Matty Burrows in the MBR Racing 123, one of our Class 1s. Would love to see that. I think we all would love to see it back with the turbo on it. Maybe next year. Maybe next year we'll see that car with that. As we look on our screen, there is a still in the gun sight of the Cougar Racing. There is Craig Bennett on screen. Making his way back into the forest. So at the moment they're out on the forest. And from what I can see, Danny Brown has nobody in front of him all oh. the way back to the pits. Oh wow. Apart from that 701 vehicle. Yeah. And they're still circulating too. So we've still got about a uh, six or seven minute break between when Danny Brown comes back in, from what I can tell. And that's only from what I can tell. But uh, that thing was missing off the line, was it? So all we just heard on uh, the yeah. Burroughs entry one, two, three? It certainly didn't sound as good as it has, but I'd say ease it to the finish line. 
So he'll ease that through. So we're just remembering that that Matt Burrows is equal second in the championship. Yeah. It's the middle miss entry. So hence the reason he will want wanting to be doesn't matter how he finishes, he needs to finish really to possibly get a second or third, you know. Uh, in the championship. I was saying earlier, there's Brent, uh, car one, car 117, the Middlemas crew, Matty Burrows, as we just saw go out, Jamie Knight, Craig Barnett, and Darren Franklin. And they're uh, all still circulating. Six cars, and they're all still circulating, as we know, or what we from what we know. So, speaking of the man... Franklin himself rolling up to the start line ready to go out again. So yeah. that's bloody awesome to see. These guys, uh, I see uh, the top 10 ended up being Dean Miller, who we saw roll yesterday in the short course here in front of us. Uh, he was in seventh. Greg Gartner, who hasn't, uh, I think he had ish engine issues. He did. At he, the last, uh, so he was out, unfortunately. He was in eighth. Michael Marson. With that Windsor-powered 32 car, Isn't that he a didn't weapon? come back. Yeah, phenomenal. And then Andy Brown, who was in the 11:45 car this weekend, is normally in the 45 car, uh, out with heating issues. So there you go. Your 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 four, your bottom four in the top ten of the championship points all, all over overall didn't didn't uh, get a place this weekend. But six contenders, yep. I think. Uh, a couple of them can't reach the top spot due to Brent just having a points gap. Yeah, I think he's about uh, 18 points ahead of the middle miss and Burrow's entry in the championship. There's 701. 701 over the finish line into a service break. There should be. I'll tell you what, they're going to have to pedal like hell to get around their... Um, they're going to have to pedal like hell to get round in their last in the allotted time because yeah. we nearly think they're possibly one of the last cars. Yeah, well, McIntyre's yeah. still going too, by the way. Oh, Dean Carter, sorry. I know these guys are faster, but they're actually down on uh, overall time. Dean Carter's a little bit faster, but so we did, we that did have that problem early on. Did that in a one hour o two. So, uh, as the track gets more and more cut up. While you're waiting, folks, you can wander over to the Steel It, steel it uh, tent in the middle of the spectator area. They're going to do a raffle to win $300 worth of product later on. Going to have a chat about what their product is all about. And um, they can get, they'll be giving away a couple of sample cans for those that are in the game. Fantastic product been on board and supporting this year. Grab yourself a one of the remaining tickets for the raffle for the yeah. CRF 110. How many have you got now? I don't know if I should say, but <laughs> I've got a couple in, couple in on the bike and I put right one right. in on the... Okay. Put one in on the um, Milwaukee Tools too. Right, okay. So I've, I'm invested. You're invested this year again. <laughs> So Adam Burrell's just gone through the camera, uh, just gone through on the way home, so... In our bottom camera? Uh, just gone through on the last little bit of the course. So there's one of our class, should be, six, I think that'd be the 635 entry. The King Chrome, that'll be Jackson Evans. Sibo is walking up to the, f to the line here, car six, uh, sorry, 760, Geelong Carburetor's entry. Ballerine Service Centre, dirt, dirt Shift Excavations. So a lot of people get on board personally with these cars. Sibo in the green one sitting closest to you on your screen and uh, on the left-hand side of the screen there in that green and black orange frame truck That's from Warrigal Machining. He's been around for a while in the game. They did have here last year four generations sitting here for the... Um, to watch D and... Pete go around. Dee's not in the car this weekend, but watching on. She's here. So look on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a car at full tilt. Dee looks quite nervous watching on just out the window there. Very. Yeah, Dee's not paying any attention to you. You realise that? 
Are you nervous? Yeah, yeah, just a fracture. <laughs> They'll be fine. There's McIntyre on screen as well in the Tegel Excavations camera. See ya, Sibo. Did he wave back though, D? Did he wave back? No. No. Game face on. <laughs> Poker face. I'm sure he'll be around that 7.60 in no time. Matty Lavis rolling up in 6.684. I think on the second lot of laps as the Fallsman entry leaves the line. 2.74 on their way. Yep. So out in the bush. You've seen Glenn McIntyre go through in that last little bit before they come out onto the white metal road to come back into the arena. So they disappear behind our mounds of earth. There is Forsman's. Well, Thomas is out, but uh, we've still got a few out there. Yep. Matty Lavis off the line. Yeah. Kurt Stefan out there still circulating. Well, obviously welded the back end of his car to back together. He's um, from Teagle's Excavations on his own, on the camera there, supplied by them. We are in the quarry supo supplied by them for the start, start finish. So <clears throat> everybody here, Teagle's Excavations have put on a massive amount of energy have a million of our other uh, sponsors throughout the year. Uh, different events as well as the championship. Don't forget we've got ARB 4x4 accessories, Mickey Thompson tyres and Raceline wheels for the championship sponsors. We have a million different event sponsors, camera sponsors, etc, etc. I see a chopper coming in over on our right, so I'm hoping our um, drone operators are aware of that's here. Danny Brown is uh, back in the arena, mate, and uh, I tell you what, is it, has his brand, he's moving yeah. just as fast as what he was when he left. He's got one lap to go after this lap, so... He's made a little mistake there that he... Listen to that. You'll put on a, certainly put on a show. Just also on camera, just a minute ago, down the bottom of the camera was the 1057 entry that's out in the out in the scrub, going down along one of those long straights. Jet tech car. So he's rounded him up in that last little bit of the of the run. But gee, but haven't he, they done well? Haven't they? Uh, Adam, be happy with that car 35. Adam Birrell. He was sitting in fifth on the way out in this lap, so... Yeah, he started the 39th this morning. He was the 39th car away. He has chased and chased all day. He's got one lap to run. So... Not too far. I'm tipping we're not going to see... Um, Murdoch. Murdoch, then the McIntyre, uh, Kurt Stefan's just done a U-turn back onto the bitumen down there, and then the Alpha. So we'll see Dale and AJ probably in seven or eight minutes as well. And also Carl Haby behind him, but here we are folks, your current race leader, Danny Brown, car 42. Back out for his last lap of the last round of the 2023 ARB Off-Road Racing Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. There's Murdoch. There's Adam. Adam over the finish line. Last lap. And don't be mistaken, folks, the last lap doesn't mean it's the easiest lap. No. Those, those breaking starter bumps going into corners and the ruts, the turning ruts in the corners now will have exposed tree roots, rocks, stumps that they didn't really previously know were there, so they've still got a lot to battle with. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's not getting, it doesn't get any easier, it gets harder. But they still did good laps. So Danny Brown did it in 
a 30, 36, 54, and 36, or 38, 25 for Adam Birrell. So there you go, 38, 25, and a 36, 54. So both now out on their final circulations. So, so Adam currently sitting you, second what? in in the running order. I'll tell you what, we've got Andy coming down. Andy Murdoch, <laughs> loose as hell onto that last straight. We won't deal him that. As he comes out of the finish line, I know uh, James is waiting to go off the start line. So Tucker. Gone, 110, and he's doing a fantastic job. He's obviously had a little issue. he has been missing uh, in action for a little while. He was doing really well early on. But uh, McIntyre back in front of us, watching um, James Tyrrell about to leave. James Tyrrell's at the start line here, right in front of us. So Andy Murdoch did it in a 37-10 to go back into second out, second outright at this point. So now leaving the arena. Andy Murdoch, second yep. on track mm. with a 37.10. 15, 16 seconds slower than Danny Brown on that lap, but in saying that, he also put in his fastest lap on his fourth lap. Yeah. And so just to make mention too that, oh, Mark Burrows is stopped. coming so. in, mate. Barrow Kurt Stefan is about to jump over in the, the jump in front of us, closely followed by the Alpha. So I hope he knows they're there. They need to get a clean pass, which I'm sure they'll get in the arena. Dale and AJ, they know what it's all about. They've been here, and the Martins have been here for a long, long time. The Martin family in off-road racing, Craig being a previous champion. Yeah. Just also looking on our screen, Mark Burrows has stopped with a flat tyre. Oh... That's going to hurt. Here comes McIntyre in car 43. Pup's obviously getting G'd up just in front of us to get going. We see AJ and uh, AJ, uh, Dale and AJ do a clean pass on Kurt, which is uh, obviously going to help them. Yeah. They've got a very clean run now in front of them. Actually, they're going to be chasing Pup, aren't they? Yeah. All first gear in Pup's car. Habie's back in the, the arena. Yeah, car 56. <clears throat> so what did also see there, they are at the top of the circuit. So Martin and Stefan, Kurt Stefan. So the only thing between them, yeah, will be James Tyrrell in the 1036. So I'm tipping... I'm tipping Dale and AJ should be able to get around James as they head out before they enter the forest. So yeah. you've got that long high speed run out around that farmhouse. Yep. And they should be able to round him up before they get into the forest, which uh, that will probably see them have a nice clean run because I think there was a big gap in front of them then. There was. Might... Uh, 37-37 for Dale and AJ. Yeah. There goes Haby. Haby, flying. He's got a little 1UZ, de-stroked 1UZ Toyota V8 in that car. Yeah. Bo boosted thing, so obviously it screams off its brain when it's going at full noise. It's uh, to get a few more RPM de-stroking them usually. So oh, Haby now third with a 37.06, his fastest lap of the day. Dale Martin's done the same with a 37.37. So both of them, lap five, been their the fastest lap. Screens, mate. Look at that shot in the corner of the screen of the uh, yeah. King Chrome buggy. That is the screenshot, big screens. Trying to stay out of the, the uh, race line as he leaves the corner there. Obviously trying to get a bit of a fresh you get railroaded out there a little bit, aren't they? They are. They <coughs> are now. You can just see them just squirming on the rail. Tipping the... those lines 
have now become deeper through the actual forest as well. Yeah, they would have by now. This is the 633 entry. Oh, race line wheels, Maddie Hummer. Yep. Race line wheels have come on board as a championship sponsor just this year. Yeah, they have, and it's great to have them on board. Forever grateful. It takes a lot to get a championship off the ground. Away we go. There we go. Six three three. He did very well yesterday. I, I like that. I must from, say, yeah. With that camera on the front of that car yesterday, it was just great to see. Just looking on the road section to the bottom bottom screen, you'll see I'm not too sure that is. That would be Ready Color High Haby. That could be. It would be Carl, yes. Or the Alpha. Oh, it'd be either one of them. Going out the road section. Look on our camera. That is the 21 Burrows. car of Burrows. It's going again. So they had a flat tyre from what it said on our screen. That's so old, old man Burrows. Yeah. Father of Matt. That's better. Father sounds better than old man. Wow. Don't tell him we said that. Young, young at heart. <laughs> yeah, that sounds better. So they've obviously replaced a flat tyre on that car. That gives you a bit of an idea of how, the, how tall the trees are next to you out there. And um, that's yeah. what I saying. Although you think out in those white metal roads you, where we can see the dust, you've got a fair bit of airflow and breeze coming through. But once you get into there and the foliage in those pine breaks are, is, is a bit thicker, the air does not move. Nope. So, and I'm surprised a lot of people have told me, a yep. lot of the competitors, they're not struggling with heat issues out there today. No, exactly. So oh. I think if they were on the brink of having a heating issue, regardless, they might have opened it, you know, found it this weekend, but... Uh, they haven't. So still waiting on Brett Martin to come back to. Bowie Graham. Coming back, back down into the stadium. That looks like a Bowie Graham. 10.65. Yep. Yes, it is, mate. On our rally safe, it's sort of showing. On the screen shot, big screens. To the crossover, yep, that's him. And that's quite daunting when you come over. Do you want pre-run, you come out, you cannot see what's on the other side of that? No, you can't. They've always said in briefing too that that is not a jump, it is a crossover. So, should appear about now, will be the Bobby Graham car. There it is. So 6681 rolling up to the start shoot. Doesn't that sound crisp? This is Ross Newman also in the house. Just about to start. He's uh, lap five and six. We just got the gossip off Murray, mm -hmm. uh, assistant clerk of course, that Darren Mott, who's going really well, in that 435 grey and orange truck. Yep. Had two flat tyres but only one spare. So unfortunately for him, his day's numbered. So Murray says. So he's done oh he's done two that's a shame. There you are on our two screen. Flats. He's now two flats. Two. That's, that's a shame a, because he was actually motoring flats. reasonably well. Yeah. So he's obviously clipped something and punched. Unfortunately. Look at that shot. 6681 Ross Newman. Yep. On the start line from Queensland, Joe Caldwell on the passenger seat. There's only three, three cars in that class 66 this weekend, and we know Eden was out because she was back at the pits helping all the rest of the King Chrome crew. And um, so she'll be going Matt through. Lavis is still out and about. Guaranteed third. Well, third, third. doesn't that sound sweet? Bowie. And we've got Rod Visser in the bottom left corner of your screen. Yeah, about just on that last run coming back in before they go back onto the white metal road. 6681. Stick shift. Something different. Th well, it never used to be. Back no, in the day, not. everyone was running H pattern four speeds. And all of a sudden, we've got torque converter cars running a torque converter with a pump. 
into a transaxle with a sequential six speed and yeah. all sorts of flash gear and uh, before my time which before your time before my time thank um, you right <clears throat> eh? yes there used to be you know you, a lot of cars running a volkswagen combi four speeds with a set of albums gears in them to beef them up so a lot of those cars are now just become club cars i suppose as some of these cars progress in their on screen if hey, you look down the guess bottom guess what Guess yeah, who's Brent. back in the stra in the uh, arena? Yep. Here he is, Brent Martin and Andre De Simone or Michael Gro Gross. I'm not too sure who's in the passenger seat, but uh, they're back. Last year's champion, this year's current points leading champion, on his fifth lap in. Yeah. He's still got one to go. We all know that things can happen within. As we saw Subo running out of fuel 400 metres from the finish line, so we know that things can happen. But uh, let's <laughs> hope that does. Brent has a nice clean run to the finish line. 10.42 off the start. Bit of a miss. Hope that clears up. Hopefully it's just a bit of a fueling issue. They usually take a few hundred metres to clear themselves out sometimes. They do. There's the middle miss car. And Martin just about to come over the back. Hey, I tell you what, mm -hmm. if they're both on the same lap, yep. which looks like they might be, Brent Martin and Middlemas, 7th and 9th. Mm -hmm. Wonder if Middlemas beats Brent this weekend, if that does a shift of the points. Ooh, yeah. I'm not too you, sure. I know no. they're 18 points of difference, but I'm not too sure what they'll be allocated for the end of this race in the way of positions and points. Yeah, because it also goes on class. They are in the same class, so that that, that might mean it's um, might be down to the wire. If the middlenesses may only need to finish right behind Brent on the road, which might give them a speed uh, the tire, a, a race time. Looking in class benefit. one, Burrows is second in class, oh. two points behind. Here he is, last year's champion. This year's current champion on points. So currently in class one in the leaderboard, Martin leads at 133, Burroughs is second 131, and, and Middlemiss Middle on 129. 129. That's not much. <laughs> I don't even know so how to add it up, folks, but that's close. Yeah, so two points between first and second, and two points between second and third. So it's four points between first to, fo first to fourth, or first the third. That's in class, not that's overall. In class. That's not, yeah, that's in class. So it's still a lot to there play. Ah, middle miss right behind them. And running sweet. Their husband and wife team, they've been doing it for a long time out here in off-road. 117 David and Alice. And the, they would have just waved because they would have seen Ian sitting on the line, the 1017 <laughs> entry. Notice Heath Wheaton. There they are. The Whedon team, Heath and Michelle. If well, Michelle wasn't. is in for the weekend, yeah? Oh, yeah. He, he wouldn't be allowed to go racing without Michelle at a local event. No, oh, true. Yes. Um, one hour 51, so they obviously had problems last lap as well. Yeah, battery clamp. Oh, you said that, sorry, you did. Yeah. But they're also... Currently sitting in 37th position. Yep. However, However that we've got that Dean Carter stopped. Yeah. Andrew Forsman, 279, stopped. Steve O with a gear set, I would imagine. Gearbox issue. Mm -hmm. Matty Hansen's out. Uh, Eden Evans, we know, is out. Graham Hicks, DNF. So I'm not sure what happened with Graham because he did leave earlier. Molsey, there's a fair few on trailers out here. There are a fair few. Including ours. Yeah, well, we, you didn't even start. <laughs> Yours is the cleanest car out there, mate. Well, I reckon if you put uh, it up on the position one in the podium for the cleanest car, you'd win. Dave and uh, Alice came across with a 42.58, so they were a little bit slower this time round. They actually their first lap was the fastest, as a 39.44. However, they've a slightly smaller car, which probably can't handle the rough in the corners, etc., than what these other guys can. Speaking of that, there's Carl Haby on screen. That is the 56 Element Racing. He will now turn back to the right. You can see how 
just on that camera shot, you can see how corrugated it is as they turn back into the pines. This is Heath Whedon coming in for their service break. As 701 heads back out. Is that 1057 coming at us? or That would be. <clears throat> and soon followed by uh, Craig Barnett and Jamie Knight. So that's, yeah, 1057. Rod, Rod Visser in front of us, folks, on your screen. We've got Trev Chandler on the screen out in the forest. By the looks of Trev Chandler, he's got a massive gap between him and what's in front of him, which is Jamie Knight, almost on the shoot on the way back in. So Trev Chandler has literally five kilometres of clean, fresh track in front of him out there. Yeah. So that should give him a good opportunity to that'll, do his own thing. That'll give him more than an opportunity. Barnett entering the stadium, eh? straight out in front of you folks. The Cougar Racing. Yep. They've been hard charges to the whole championship as well. Great crew of people. Great bunch of... of uh, to have a chat to. We had a chat to him on Friday night. Still going quite strong too, isn't it? Sounding beautiful. Don't forget, folks, you've got a minute. Grace over, grab yourself a raffle ticket. CRF 110 from Blue City Motorcycles and also that Milwaukee gear. 4000 bucks worth for only 100 bucks. Jamie Knight also entering. I thought you were going to say that car's doing 4000 revs. It's probably doing more than that. Yeah. No. Is that Jamie Knight in the house? The Yokohama entry. There you go, Rod. <clears throat> if you can't have Greg Gardner here this weekend, we'll have Jamie Knight yeah, instead. Yeah, why not? It sounds beautiful. I mean, if Greg was here, he'd have itchy feet going, I wish we were out there. So there's Jamie. Rod Visser over. With a 43-14. Yep. Position number nine on... Currently on nine. Mark yeah. Burrows should be on his way in too then. Yeah, he shouldn't be too far. No, Don't I, think, forget. I think we've actually got a fair gap before... Sorry, Barnett's over the line there, but I think we've got a fair gap before the next uh, one, which should be Trev Chandler. Yeah, and also just remember too, there goes Burrows on screen, but he did have a flat tyre, so they've had to change that. Correct. So yeah, correct. So there'll be probably a little bit, bit of time between. Uh, so Rod goes up into position number nine with a 43.14. Craig Barnett just done his fastest lap of a 40.53. Now to get a fastest lap on these in lap five, you're doing pretty well, I reckon. Yeah. Because his, uh, his, his last couple of laps prior to that were only a minute slower. Yeah. Go, Jamie. How many seagulls did he miss? Do we get bonus points if you squash <laughs> <laughs> Hit the seagull? Uh, Trev Chandler is uh, just doing the switch back out there onto the bitumen over on our very far right. Just having a quick look at the... Uh, rally safe. Rally safe there. And then you've got 635, which is the other King Chrome entry. Yeah, which is the a... two-litre... Uh, uh, Jackson, sorry. No, uh, Jackson, yeah. And um, so they're fairly close together. Then we've got the Burroughs car. 21. Uh, 1748, oh, 32, Arm Ward. Mar uh, Burroughs must be rounding up Arm Ward out there at the moment. Because they're be right far. beside each other and they weren't earlier on. And then but not far behind that, you've got Joseph uh, Patterson in that 175, nice blue framed. So you look on screen, the screenshot, big screen's drone at the moment. Trying to spot where that is. is it, mate, I reckon that's near the logging track there. They cross that and then they'll turn hard left. Up here, there's a, a guy over a little crest, and they will turn left. Yep. <clears throat> you can just see on that shot how 
how deep that is. That is, I reckon that's brown. It is. That is the 42 car. There it is. Your current leader. So Thomas Formas, 37th. Dean Carter. Graham Hicks, Matt Hanson, 42nd. Craig Krog, Andy Miles, Todd Lehman. This is down the bottom of the field. This is how they all sit at the moment. And a lot of these people are out now. Andy Brown's out. Turnbull's out. So there you go. Brown, yeah. Murdoch, Haby, Martin, Birrell. Your top five. Martin, Graham, Middle Miss, Vita and Knight. So we had 46 cars start this morning out of 66 entries. Yeah. And I reckon we've probably only got around 20-something still going. We have well, the attrition rate once again. It's massive. Isn't it? Is that Trev? Yeah, that's Trev. I know the King Crown crew is massive. They have... 926 people down on their pit crew, I think. That's all of Millicent. <laughs> and uh, um, it went from half a Millicent to all of them. <laughs> they uh, had to bang a CV in that in that car, as you saw on the walk around earlier. CV was smoking; couldn't even touch the bolts. And they also had that power steering issue. So for him to get back out quickly and cleanly. And I was down there while Jackson was having a. Having a, have a, having a father son moment. Yeah, and, and I didn't want to get involved, but you know, it's also not only that there wouldn't have probably been just only the King Chrome guys. There would have been other teams in there helping as well. It's just one thing about off road racing, Sandy, that we don't see behind the scenes. A lot of people see it when they come back out on the racetrack, but they don't see what goes on behind the scenes. There are no, a lot of camaraderie between the teams. If they we are are out, I mean, our cars like slim pickings, isn't it? Yeah, really sitting over there. <laughs> There is a, Jason a forceman Ford. on your screen and a forceman in front of you, or forceman entry, should I say? That's better. That's a 701 leaving the start line. Joel Kershaw in that TB42 powered Ryko and NGK car. Chandler. I was about to swear there. Yeah. Wow. He's yeah. um. He was hanging on for dear life, I tell you. <laughs> That was certainly 110%. Gee, was it wasn't it? What? I've got to try and filter myself here. Now, but, th um, there's a car in front of him now. They would have seen, OK. Uh, there'll we're be gonna two be... seconds. They're gone. Yeah. I won't even know he's there. No, there's Burroughs coming over the crossover. So With Wardy on. right behind him. So Burroughs must have overtaken Wardy on the way down the chute. Yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> Look and at Chandler. Look at the gap from the jump to now where Chandler is over the right. Yeah. <laughs> the other King Chrome car over on our left as Burroughs jumps over in front of us on your screens. Yeah, definitely that spare wheel missing on the 21 car. So do you think Owen Ward would be keen to pass a pro buggy? Basically a ultimate buggy. Do you reckon he'd be sort of going, okay? Yeah. Well, have a look at Jackson. Jackson be going, I oh, know there's two behind me. On screen, there's Dean Carter. He said earlier he came off a win recently in the local small Day Nighter event. Got his spirits high, I would imagine. Is that another Burroughs car about to come in front of us here? Matty? Uh, that should be one, two, three. Oh, no, sorry, that's, no, that's uh, one Joseph Patterson. That's Patterson. That's Joseph yep. Patterson. No mistake. Another one doing reasonably well today, isn't it? Trevor Chandler's last lap of 46.16, his fastest lap of 40.13. So he's obviously had a five-minute delay out there. That's massive. Yeah, but they may have left five minutes late too. True. 635 Jackson Second remaining King Chrome entry That should be Franklin out in the bush Being chased There were two in there there by Martin by Martin yeah Dave Martin Oh Lord So Burroughs is coming in <laughs> 
So the 21 crew, if you are ready, they're quickly coming in. So they're quickly going to obviously put another spare wheel on that. The 21 car as it comes in, Owen Ward. So here is Patterson. There's Joseph, goes on through. In the uh, 175, as Owen Ward leaves the arena. They very quickly So you can see up on straight, straight ahead of us that dust now starting to kick up a lot more. So on screen as we look to you see the 10.42, that is the Peter Tamlin car. I don't know if that's struggling or it's just been chased by the 6684 entry. So if you look straight ahead you'll see a bit of that dust that heads up into the forest. Where that is to go past that farmhouse that is on that right hand side as they turn to the right do a quick dog leg straight up just over a crest they turn back into the right back into the forest they'll head back towards this way leaders not too far away So if you uh, want to grab yourself a ticket to, to that raffle as well, if you haven't got one, there's not many tickets left, 100 bucks a ticket, and you can take yourself home a very nice motorbike. Thanks to our great friends at Blue Lake City Motorcycles and also Burson Auto Parts with some Milwaukee gear. Here is Jason Forsman in car 474. Now making their way up to the western end of the complex. Turn back to the right. Tell me that corner's got a few few ruts in it. Also one down the back of the railway line now coming in. One disappears behind the mountain, one coming over the top. That will be Dean Carter. Still going full total, total, total the odds. Now with that, it was a little minor issue that he had. Put him behind the eight ball. Now he's gone back out, which is great to see. And now it, at full steam ahead. As we see the McIntyre entry car number 43 making their way back out into the forest. Waiting on their rally safe to count them down. So here's Jason.
Ben will be aware of that. So Burrows going back out. Let's put another quick tyre on that. Mark will be aware that Jace is in front of him. Jace will be aware. As across the line, here goes Dean Carter. Dean coming in for a service break. So Dino in, Yon H, car number 18. Currently sitting in 34th position on lap three, did his fastest of a 39. He's just done that in a 47. So, uh, has had a little bit of an issue. So it's great to see the car still running back into back into the pits. So just waiting on the McIntyre entry to make their way back out. cars that has been doing the 2023 championship very consistent has had a good run today did the CV earlier have affected repairs got back out I'll head back out very shortly As you can see, if you look up to the right, you'll see two cars moving. I reckon we're only a couple of minutes off way, uh, off seeing yeah. our race leader come through. Yeah, if you look up to the right, you'll see two cars that are moving on the road section. You should be able just to see a dust cloud. It's one of them will be Jason Forsman and also Mark Burrows heading out. So there's McIntyre. <laughs> Leaving the arena. So he'll make his little turn right. There is the Steve Tucker entry, the Tucker entry. The 110 entry had a great result today. It's Simon Tucker. Started 48th this morning and the 47th and 48th pairing away this morning. Now making his way out into the forest. screen there is the king chrome entry of trevor chandler joe said he certainly is troubles today but they have soldiered on he will now turn back to the right So just looking on our screen, yeah, Danny's not too far away at all, mate. He's uh, G 
just about just about now Brown is actually turning into the railway line so he is on the way home so he's actually as we speak at the moment Sandy is actually on the way in so you should see him very very shortly he's now actually passing where they turn to the left and head out onto the white metal road so our leader is in the final part Andy Murdoch's just getting to the hairpin onto the bitumen about now so but just in front of him is the 412 entry So as we say that, if we look over to the to the crossover, you'll see here he comes. Car forty two. Said he wasn't far away. He'll come over the center jump, the burst and jump. Sounds like it might have a miss. Didn't sound as crisp as it was last time it came through. All he has to do is get it to the line. The Brown renter crew will cheer him home. So Murdoch not too far away from this. Murdoch is just turning onto the bitumen as we speak. There is a car in front of him. That is the Tucker entry that is in front of him. Carl Habe's also closing in on Murdoch. I didn't have a miss in it then, Sandy. I think you might be hearing little things. <laughs> Only little things. Have a look at that on, on screen as they follow the 42 car into the last little bit. Does he give it a wash? Not quite. Out of the final corners. Onto the front straight. Across the line he goes. He'll come and talk very shortly. As we say that, the 412, there is the Simpson entry coming in in front of them. Just trying to look on the screen here. 412. Now, Carl Habe's got around Andy Murdoch. If I'm seeing this correct, 412 should be in the house. There it is. And if I'm seeing this correctly, there is the Simon Tucker entry, car 110. Now the next car through, I said on my rally safe that it was Carl Haby, but that looks like Murdoch behind Tucker. He's got a, certainly a big head of steam up. Now that is definitely Andy. And is he missing a left front wheel? That is flat. All he's got to do is get it home. So a flat left front for Andy Murdoch. All he's got to do is get it home. Did see on the rally safe that he had been caught by Carl Haby. Now there is Carl. Oh, if this doesn't throw a curveball. Here is Carl at a full head of steam. Onto the front straight comes the Peter Simpson entry. Car 412. They've still got another lap.
So Andy's just not too far away. Here's Simon Tucker in the one in the 110. He's still got another lap. So Carl is in the house. There is Andy. Oh, he's digging himself. He'll come across the line. Checkered flag comes out. He gets it home. The decision in there would have been, do we change it or do we keep running? So it will be very interesting in time-wise. Simon Tucker did that last one in the 39.41. So we flick back up to the top. 38.34. There's Haby across the line. So Andy Murdoch did it in the 39.59. This will be interesting to see where Carl Haby sneaks in this. Does he sneak onto the second step of the podium or the third step of the podium? So Murdoch has got back to third. So Haby waiting for that time to come up. So Carl Haby, last lap of 37-12. Oh, isn't that a good podium? Elements, one, uh, second and third. But Danny will go up to the top step. Presentation shortly. Danny Brown, King Brown, back to back, mate. Yeah, it's uh, we had a good day. We um, we had a bit of a game plan this morning, just to um, run as hard as we could in that first lap and try and get um, get Andy, because then we sort of could try and control the race in the front a little bit. And that plan's never working off road, and this one seemed to today. We just um, that last lap, we were just paranoid about getting a flat, so we slowed down a lot in the um, in the corners. There's a lot of exposed rocks and stumps now. And as from, you can see from Andy's, it doesn't take much to get a flat and bend a wheel over a brake and it can ruin your day pretty quick. Yeah. And the car went well most of the day by the sound of it. We saw you at uh, pit brake one and two. Yeah, we just put fuel in it and um, checked the tyres. It's Yeah, the thing didn't miss a beat all day. It ran cool. Um, so yeah, can't thank the, the crew enough for helping, even though they didn't have to do much. But um, you know, it's great to have the people and the knowledge we do have with us to, to keep the thing going and keep it on the track. All right, mate, thank you. Well done to uh, Danny Brown, George, in the passenger seat, car 42, taking out this year's 2023 Teagles Excavations ARB Pines Enduro. I'll let these others get here. We'll come over and have a quick chat to Andy. Andy Murdoch, hey, mate, well done. Thank you, thank you. On the podium. Yeah, yeah, we were close last year. The wheel fell off last year. This year it hung on, just. It looked like it was locked up there coming over the line. Yeah, yeah, no, it didn't have, uh, there's not much rubber left there, so it's a bit hard turning left, so, but, yeah, it's all good. So, we're here, one piece. And uh, and you're on the podium, the car, apart from the, the tyre, how far out that happened? Uh, about the start of the metal road coming back in. So, he probably had about five or six k's with it. So, yeah, and we just kept running. My new car was pushing behind us, so we had to keep on going, and buddy, uh, yeah, just try and get here. So, when I saw him coming into the arena, arena I just, yeah, thought we've just got to go a little bit harder, but <laughs> I, was, I was getting harder to steer. <laughs> That's all right. Well done. Great. Good to see you on the podium. Yep. And uh, there's uh, a couple of our top contenders, uh, top place getters for this year. Wait for the uh, Habies to get out here. Well, you can stay in and have a chat if you want. You want to get out and have a stretch and have a drink? <laughs> he does need a hat. But uh, 
Well done. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was a good run. Um, got a bit hot in the last lap, but um, we managed the temps there for a little while and, um, yeah, brought it home. And uh, the car, the track, how did the track change out there uh, from, from, we know the start of the race today, it was quite smooth and people said it was got quite um, heavy in the early on, but um, some of say it was cleaning itself up and uh, drying out a little bit towards the end. I think, um, like after about lap three, it was it was heavy and consistently kissing the consistently heavy. But once you got out of that open country where it was nice and hot, that's where we that's where this car was sort of struggling a little bit, like with heat. Um, and it, yeah, it was pretty sandy out there. <laughs> All right, well, well done. There you have it, folks. Your top three of this year's Pines Enduro. There's still plenty to go. I think we've still got around 20 cars still left out on the field. Yeah, it won't and, be far off that, mate. And uh, I know some are still leaving on their last laps. Yeah, we just saw Heath and Michelle leave for their last two circulations. There's James Tyrrell, who's just gone through in the 10.36. So just recapping... Uh, that la oh, just coming up on the screen, Dale Martin with the DNF, mate. So the 1125, if you're following that car, it has stopped somewhere out on the track. So um, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's absolutely devastating for those guys. They pushed pretty hard to get up near where they were. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, it looks like here on our screen, it's actually got next to it did not finish. So that is. Sad part of off-road racing, it can happen. So. so there is a car just entering the arena. That'll be the Forsman's. that'll be the two seven four entry. So Dale was fourth. On track. I tell you what, though, the action yep. isn't over. We've still got, uh, like I said, around 20 cars still out on track. Yep. Some heading out for their last lap, which will still take about an hour. And these guys obviously have finished first, second, and third. I think this may be our fourth position coming in now, or did he drop back? No, this is Adam Beryl. So Adam, with the Jet Tech, was fifth on the road, but. With now Martin taken out of that, that brings him up to position four, but that's all on time. So um, hopefully, by the looks of things, Dale has has stopped somewhere. So he will be a retirement. As we say that, there is the one, two, three entry. That is Young Burrows. Who is probably the first of our contenders for the uh, Class One Championship for the outright championship this year? Yeah. So we're still yet to see Brent in. Yeah, he won't be far away. And the middle bus car. So those three are still hunting. The race isn't over. They're still hunting for championship points. There the is championship Joey outrights. <laughs> There is Barry Graham. So there goes the 274 car starting on the last lap. There is the Jet Tech. So Adam Birrell will come on in in that car. He will be position number four. So he will be into Park Fermé. There is Darren Gill, the 760 entry. Hasn't that ran strong all day? Murray's just trying to do a bit of directing. Give up, Murray. He's going to park it. Adam 
Williams car alongside. Yeah, fourth on track, mate. Yeah. Adam, we had a quick chat with Adam before he left the line as they were leaving the pits on their last service break. There's Bobby Graham too coming in. Well done. Did you? Oh, no. <laughs> Did you change it or who changed it? <laughs> this is a Are you telling, saying the whole race took forever or uh, no, just that? the tyre, mate. My, my tyre changing skills are not real flat. <laughs> I need a lot of work. Doesn't matter. Hey, you're over the line in fourth on uh, track, oh, so mate, well done. That is insane. Like, that is, oh, that's next level for me or for us. Yeah. I reckon it's wicked. Good race. Excellent race. I love it. It's my favourite race. Mine too. Well yeah. done. Good to see you at the finish safely. Thank you. The uh, car 35. Just as Bowie pulls up and Ella. Just quickly, if you can hear us, Sandy. If you can hear me, Sandy. Sorry? Bowie Graham's actually pipped Adam for fourth. There you go. So yep. Bowie Graham actually fourth. Last lap of the 40.52 and a 49.33 for Adam. So <laughs> relegates him back to fifth for the 35 car. So Bowie Graham sneaks up to fourth. Four five. Four five. Ended up fifth on track. Fifth on track. Pipped by Bowie. So, I tell you what, this car, this uh, team, if I can get in for a chat while they cool off, Bowie and Ella, well done. Fourth. Fourth, mate. Uh, fourth. Fifth on track, but fourth on time. Well done. Thanks very much. Hey, what was it like out there towards the end? Because uh, it looked like what we were seeing, those corners and the stuff were getting pretty chewed out. Yeah, the ruts were, yeah, like I said, they were getting deeper and deeper. It was just the braking bumps were the ones that were hurting. But, yeah, no, the track was awesome. Oh, I can't believe you do that in a 2.4. Me either. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done to you both. Uh, let you get out and cool off a little bit. The uh, Bowie in... Uh, Fourth position for the finish today. Right behind me, last year's champion, fighting out for points on uh, this year's championship, Brent Martin. Yeah, he's just entered the house, mate. So uh, Brent is seventh at the moment on this. And of course, a 49.33 for Adam Birrell. A 40.52 for Stephen Graham and Murdoch with a 39.59. So that's how they are at the moment. Just remember that Dale has stopped out there on track. Unfortunately, within sight of the finish line. So look at that drone shot on the screen following the one car home. They swing around the back of the of the course. What a great shot. He'll drop in. Really, really out wide. Trying to avoid some of those holes. He'll now swing on to the straight. Here he comes, car number one, this is Brent Martin. He'll slow up over the jump. Just creeps at home. I reckon so, I was just talking to Murray Rogers, our assistant clerk of course, down here. Yep. And uh, we've got a feeling that this might be our not only our last year's champion, but possibly this year's champion for the ARB off Australian Off-Road Racing Championship for wow. 2023. Brent Martin, at least he doesn't have to change the roof number. <laughs> that's the only good thing about it, mate. Tell you what, that's what happens when you're good. Just good at everything. Good teamwork, good car prep. They did obviously have a couple of little issues with the sticky accelerator this morning. Yeah. 
fall around. <laughs> Told you there was a fight between points out there today. Yeah. The top three cars ch f chasing uh, first. <laughs> the top three cars were all class ones in the championship points. There was uh, Brent, who's just pulled up now, last year's champion. And from what we can tell, this year's champion. Yeah, and he finished his fourth outright today too. Uh, also was in class one with the middle misses as are coming in behind us over here. They were 18 points behind on the championship coming into today. Brent had to finish, but he also had to finish with reasonable speed. Just let him get unplugged here. Yeah, so Brent Martin's actually finished fourth there, mate, with a 41.54 last lap. There you go. So Graham's things got, changed. Yeah, so Graham's gone back to a 40.52. He's gone back in overall time. Brent oh. Martin's did it in three hours 59, whereas Ma uh, Graham has done it in four hours and one minute. There hours. he is, folks. A round of applause, please. Come on. Seems you've done it again, mate. I know, yeah. Congratulations. Pretty happy Good with that, mate. Oh. Yeah. Very I'm happy. A, I think everyone out there is happy for you. The track, how would you feel the track went today? It obviously, yeah. it was a bit troubling early on. Everyone said it was fairly heavy. Yeah, uh, it was good fun. Look, you know, we, we weren't setting the world on fire, but... Um, Woo! <laughs> Andre's happy. excited. Happy to get it home. Oh. Like, Tell you know, what. It was a car breaker. Yeah. Uh, well done. Fourth outright today by the looks of the times. You've obviously pushed up a few on that last couple of laps and uh, cemented uh, the number one for next year. Yeah, very happy with that. Thank you. Thank you to all our team. Um, shame to see Dale out on the, on the last lap there. Um, but yeah, massive thanks to all our crew, everyone who helped us um, come, come away. Mickey Thompson, obviously, you know, we haven't had a tire, flat tire all year, so bloody happy with that. The best tires going around, get on them. All right, well done, guys. We'll let you cool off and have a have a drink of water. Well done. Thanks, Your 2023 ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Champions. Brent Martin, Andre De Simone. Absolutely wrapped. And I think uh, at this stage, yep. coming in second in the championship, maybe... Possibly, and I don't have the clarification near me or around me. But uh, we we'll might wander over and have a chat to the Middle Miss crew. Yeah, before you do that, mate, we've got two cars coming in together. Bit of a wild overtake on the home straight there. Yeah, that was the Craig Barnett car. Barnett also in contention for points. There's a lot of people that were still out there running that were still uh, in contention for championship points. I think, uh, congratulations guys. Uh, Brent I think has pipped you on championship points by the looks of things, but uh, coming over the line second on the championship today, but well done on the finish at all, really. It was pretty brutal out there. Yeah, no, it was um, a hard day in the office today, but um, no, no, we just did our thing and circulated and, yeah, just kept going. Well done, Alice. How was the ride out there today? Yeah, she was rough, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long day, but um, we got there and that's, this old beam car, that's pretty tremendous to bring it in at this kind of rate in second in the series. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, well done. I'll let you get out and cool off. Uh, from what I can tell or what I've been told, this might be our second car for the championship points a old beam car middle miss husband and wife team david and alice i tell you what i think uh barnett's were in contention for some points there was uh, going into our last lap we had six out of the top six 
points contenders still circulating. And although Andre and uh, Brent and Car One were up a little bit on points, uh, they were 18 points ahead, meant that it was a bit of a struggle for anyone to catch them. So Jamie Knight over the lines was also in contention for points. Welcome back. How good was that? I don't know. I didn't get a chance to get out there, but it looked like a hoot of a day. You loved it. I uh, know it was good. It was a bit brutal at the end, but yeah, no, great track. Everyone was good getting out of the way, and finally, it was great. And the car sounded fantastic still as it came over the finish line. Right, we give the old girl a beat, and we usually try and look after it a bit, but we pushed her a little bit in those last two laps, and she was definitely up for the task. How was it in the passenger seat? Yeah, good's good. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah, great race. Well, welcome back. We'll let you get out, let you cool off. The Barnett's in the Cougar Racing 68. Next in over the line today, 10.57. The Visses. How are we going, I don't know. You tell me. How's it going? <laughs> it's as rough as hell out there, but <laughs> it's still good fun. No, we had a ball. We had a ball. Great conditions. Um, couldn't have asked for a better day. It's just fantastic. Second of the ten cars across the line in about ninth outright, I think, for the day. Uh, how did how did uh, the car handle it? The car seemed like it didn't miss a beat all day from what we saw up there. The car's going good, but it has got a little bit of a noise in the engine. I reckon there's something going on with the cams, and it made it. So um, new engine after this, <laughs> definitely. All right. Well, well done. Welcome back. And uh, congratulations on your finish today. This is sneak over and get a word from our from the first of our class four cars over the line. Let Jamie Knight get unsettled. Well done, mate. Yeah, good, eh? <laughs> yeah, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Your car soaked up the uh, soaked up the ruts at the end, no drama at all. Yeah, mate, loves it. it Good, I think. The ru the rougher the better for this thing, I believe. Oh, yeah, it loves it. Loves all it. Right. First of the car class fours over today, so well done. Uh, I know you're in contention with points, and um, I think there was we just said before there was six out of the six top six in the championship points still running at, uh, on the last lap there. So I'll have to see what the rest of the crew how those points pan out, yeah. but you were definitely up there. It will be interesting to see, yeah. Yeah, hopefully hopefully we went well. All right, we'll see that. Well, I don't know what those points are at the moment, but well done. Congratulations getting to the finish today. And uh, we'll see you back next season. Yeah, definitely. They are Jamie Knight, car 439. First of our King Chrome entries in. One, 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 one. Hey, huh? Dad joke. One, one did win one. They did struggle with that old Jaguar motor, but obviously the LS in there. Quick CV change before they left to go out last time and you heard us talk to Chandler before he left of uh, struggling with a bit of arm pump, a bit of arm pump on that last, that middle two laps before he headed out. How did you go this time? Power steering? No power steering? I had power steering that time but uh, yeah, no, it was a lot better. The middle two laps uh, was uh, very, pretty scary out there, <laughs> flicking in with no steering. <laughs> but, uh, I'd like to thank um, Luke Ersick and all the boys down in the pits. Um, Tommy Sweeney, who did the CV boot, for getting me back out there as quick as possible. I know I lost a fair bit of time, but 
finally got a finish, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, fantastic. Obviously, the LS is working out for you, and the car's super quick now. Yeah, it is. It's still only a little 6.2 litre, so yeah. it's just a little crate engine with a cam in it. So, looking forward to putting the 7 litre in next year, and um, hopefully we can step up the pace a bit more. No worries. Well done, mate. We'll let you get out and get refreshed. I know these guys, these folk come in uh, absolutely red hot. They've obviously been thrown around for a total of 396 kilometres today, plus their rounds yesterday. So we're just over 400k course here at the Pines Enduro. Our final round of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. But uh, next year's championship looks to be as promising and probably better than this year's in many ways. We've got a lot of different things on the, on the table apparently coming to next year's championship. We've got a lot more footage and a um, little bit of in-car this year as well. So You can see the amount of gear they wear out there, you know. Keep them safe. Obviously, neck restraints, wrist restraints. If they have a rollover or something, it'll keep their arms inside the car. We know we had one out of the three King Chrome entries, unfortunately, not finish. first of the class 11s and we did have a fair crew of class 11 start this this uh, this weekend I can't remember the exact number of cars but gee there's a fair few oh sorry I'm lying um, Andy Murdoch there on the on the podium what am I talking about he also was a set so so Chandler is actually the second of the class 11s my mistake forgot about our podium but We've still got probably, uh, I think the cut, what was the cut off? About 3.30 of uh, race time? Yeah, that was correct, Sandy. About 3.30 this afternoon. So we just over, just over an hour, well, yeah, about, half, about an hour away. So an hour and 15 minutes. There is the other King Chrome going. That's 668, we're heading back out again. They've got one more lap to go, so they've probably got... Uh, An hour or so to finish that. Yeah, Jackson Evans also in the house too in the second of the King Chrome Tools entry coming your way. Also running quite strong all day, weren't they? Oh, they, they haven't missed a beat. They've, they've just had a couple of little minor things. They did mention a flat right front tyre, which they couldn't get the jack underneath it to get it, up, to get it off the ground. So they have managed to affect that. Repair got back. Take taken Eden's jack and put on the top of the car just to make sure they get home which they've done there's also the 760 also in the in the forest at the moment uh, where we've had a camera all day going through see on the screen there at the moment Uh, you, uh, as you can see, the shadows. If you look on the screen, the shadows now in those pine trees are starting to get longer and longer. So we'll now turn back to the right. So here comes young Jackson, second of the King Chrome cars. They will be wrapped. We know they didn't come in uh, with the third, but uh, you know what? They to come in side by side across the line was, when I say side by side, first uh, behind each other over the line was pretty good as well. Did the last lap in a 44.58, mate? No slouch. No. So he's, he's been very consistent. 41, the, end, the only one that was lap three was a 51. 42, 43 and 44s. So he has been very consistent all day in that King Chrome entry. Joseph Patterson also in the house too in the 175. The 
Here it comes to the car number 21 of the Mark Burroughs entry. You can hear that Mark had a flat tyre last lap. They came in just to put another tyre on it, just in case. So on time, Joseph Patterson may have jumped Mark Burrows. Mark was position 14, whereas Joseph was 15th. So it'll be very interesting to see where these two saw themselves at the dinner table. Mate, <coughs> mate, I've got... Uh, Who have you got down there, mate? Jacko. Yeah. Just trying to get some gear off down here to cool out, cool off a bit. <laughs> Are you happy to be at the finish line or happy to see me? I'm happy to see you, Sandy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well done, eh? No, I just gotta thank, right. my, gotta thank my crew, my Albie and Dan and all the boys. We um we built a, built a hell of a machine in about ten days. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Just, just well done to those boys. A uh, big massive thanks to King Chrome Racing, to King Chrome himself and Polaris for giving us the opportunity to drive a Pro R. And uh, yeah, we're just getting started with this thing. Yeah, it's, nice. uh, it's a good bit of gear. Yeah, so. Alright, well, uh, welcome back. Thank First you. of the uh, sixes over the line. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, I think unfortunately the other boys dropped out. So the track was just super rough, just like you said it would be. Yeah. I was hope sort of what I was hoping for. I wanted it to get rough. I wanted to show how strong this machine really is and like we did we got one puncher we d absolutely deserved it we hit this rock was it was chasing in the dust of one of these boys and didn't even see it hit this rock it, yeah nearly took the wheel out of my hand <laughs> so yeah we swapped put that on and then yeah lost a bit of time but um but yeah definitely happy to be here it's Andy, all right so. congratulations i know right yeah that's awesome <laughs> yeah well done all right the second of the king Home cars Jacko over the line. We've also got uh, 175 Joseph Patterson. How was the track? Uh, it was uh, it was rough, but it's off road, isn't it? So <laughs> we, uh, we had a slight problem out there. We got a bit mixed up and uh, hit a rock, and um, yeah, so we had a quick tire change out there. But yeah, all in all, it's, it was all good. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, congratulations for getting over the line, mate. It's a hard feat for anybody, uh, especially on what I hear in the track got to towards the end of the day. It was very rough corners. Yeah, extremely rough, mate. But um, yeah, at the end of the end of the day, we were sort of just slowing up a little bit and just sort of drive in there and drive out. And yeah, just yeah, we're, we're, we're happy to be here, mate. So. And the car feels good. Yeah, great. Yeah, like everybody's worked hard on it, you know, especially Gibbo and everybody else. Uh, the team work flawlessly today and uh, yeah, hats off to everybody, you can't do it without them, so yeah, thank you. Alright, well done, we'll let you get out and uh, grab a drink. <laughs> Cheers mate. Yeah, so just looking to Mark Burroughs finishing 12th with a 47, 47-11 on the last lap, Jamie Knight finishes the 11th on the 4 3 9. Did a 42.14, which was his fastest lap of the day. Uh, so there you go, 42.14. Position 11th, Jackson Evans finishes 13th. Uh, last lap of a 44.58. So 44.58. Last one, you might have Old Man Burrows, as you call him. Just about to climb out of the 21 machine. Is still waiting on the 123 entry to, to come back. Still looks barely raised a sweat as he climbs out. Mark Burrows, car 21. You unfolded yourself out of there, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good day? Yeah, no, it's been an eventful day. 
Uh, we lost uh, second gear in the first lap, so we've done a whole lot with our second gear, and then we got a flat tyre and exploded a rim on the second last lap. So, <laughs> so we've had a few runs through the pits, but no, it's been good fun, great track, great event, and uh, yeah, tough going. And I hope you're next, back next year. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah, you wouldn't miss this one, would you? So, uh, no, they put on a great event here, and the whole series has been a great series, so we've done them all this year, so uh, we've had a ball. And uh, Matt's coming back next year too? Yeah, so we've uh, got a few new plans. We've got a new engine going in his car for next year. So Hopefully with turbos on it? No, no turbos. Oh, no, come no. On. Mum won't let him have turbos. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, no, so we've got a fair bit to do to that car, but he showed a lot of promise this year. He had a bit of bad luck today, but uh, I'm not sure why he stopped. he stopped and got going again, so I don't know what's yeah. happened. But, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we're looking forward to doing the series next year. It'll be great. He's looking forward to it too, so, yeah, it'll be good. All right, well, well done for finishing the uh, Pines Enduro again. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you very much. There you are, Mark Burrows, Car 21. Hopefully all, uh, everyone back there at home and everything can put some some faces to names rather than just seeing them on the on a bit of paper on entry form so yeah exactly so well, uh, i think we're going to have our our celebratory champagne shortly yes so up here so we'll wander up yeah uh glenn mcintyre is in the house too car number 43 <laughs> did see on screen two the 474 car of of the Forsmans and also uh, did see on screen the 110 of Simon Tucker. So those cars should not be too far away. Uh, coming back into the arena. Of course, there are still cars out on track. So we'll get our official to give away some hardware. Don't forget official presentation tonight at the Millicent Civic and Arts Centre. If you haven't got tickets, I'm not too sure if you can still get tickets for it. Might have to wait at the door and see if anyone can <laughs> scalp the tickets off someone. Here's the McIntyre entry, car number 43, just about to come onto the front straight for the final time. Should be his last lap. No, he'll have one to go. So very shortly, time to get on with our official presentations for the 2023 Tegel Excavations ARB 400. It has been a great day. We started with 66 cars. We will not finish with 66 cars. As we look over towards the railway line, here comes Owen Ward. And look who is closing like a heat-seeking missile. I think you'll find that will be the Tucker entry. It is closing, Murray. Just be watch out. There is two cars approaching. Tucker now around the around round Owen. He was certainly closing at warp speed. Owen sounds like a Turak tractor. So Simon has reeled him in. As I said, he was closing like a heat-seeking missile. Just looking where Simon is actually, he's actually at the moment on 17th in the outright standings. The last lap was at 39.41. His fastest lap of the day was his first lap of 37.53. So Owen, all he has to do is get this car home. Owen's sitting way down the order, but he's he's still going. He still has a story to tell. There is Owen. And to see him, there he is. Position 16 at the moment. So they're actually fighting it out for 16th and 17th outright. So at the moment, Simon's rounding him up, but he's got to put a bit of time on him, just remember. So here he comes. Out of the final turn. Checkered flag in hands. He crosses the line. This is Simon Tucker. Simon's had his troubles today. So he will be 
happy to get across the line. Owen Ward, as I said, it sounds like a Turak tractor. Probably the Turak tractors probably would sound better. Tell you what, people have got just a minute to, or two to, uh, I want to say a minute or two, they've got a few minutes to race over and good last chance to get your tickets for the uh, that Honda CRF 110 and the Burson's Auto Parts prize of some Milwaukee gear. Yeah. About four grand each, $100 a ticket, and there is very few tickets left. So be a last chance if you can race up there, grab yourself a ticket. Here comes the... the <laughs> Sounds like Thomas the Tank Engine. Here's Jason Forsman as well, car 474, the Ryko entry. So let's take a look. So Owen Ward, last lap was a 53.37. Simon Tucker, a 39.30. Here you go. 39.30 for Simon Tucker, finishes 15th. Owen Ward, 16th. So Owen finishes 16th outright. Jason Forsman is now in the house. His last lap was a 47.32. Best lap was a 43. That was the first lap this morning. Very shortly we'll give away some hardware. We'll also spray that fabulous champagne. So Jason Forsman should be in this time. Peter Sibson shouldn't be too far away in 412. James Tyrrell is also on track. And Matt Burrow shouldn't be too far away either in the 123 entry. Onto the straight for the final time. He'll greet the checkered flag. Car 474. Cross the line. It will be the second class four back. Have a look at that for a shot. If you can see yourself on the drone, you're doing well. Still a good crowd here that appreciates everybody getting home. Well, I tell you what, mate, we've yep. got down here a couple of bottles of champagne for some from uh, very well earned <laughs> prize getters in third place for this year's third place for this year's ARB championship uh, last and final round for the year at the Teagles Excavations ARB Pines Enduro. Andy and Fletcher Murdoch in car 1166. Well done. Thank you, thank you, it's good to be here. And uh, we've got some, a couple of bottles of champagne there. Anything you want to say for the end of the year? No, oh, no, we'll be back next year. We'll <laughs> be uh, back stronger and hopefully faster. So hopefully see us up here a bit more often. Yeah. Say again. Hopefully have all four wheels. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Third place, folks. There you have them. It's official. And over here, we've got uh, Carl Fifth, Carl, and Chloe in car 56. Cross the line today. In uh, second place, confirmed. Congratulations. And uh, really good to see you. Hopefully we see you at the next year's championship. Yeah, I, th I think we'll give it a, a reasonable crack next year. Uh, thanks, Sandy. I'd um, like to thank Chloe for sitting next to me today. That was, uh, it, was it was a pleasure because like, um, she called out all the corners and thanked the Element team for coming down and um, supporting us this weekend and thank Hollinger for coming across and supporting us as well. And Yeah, it was a good, good day. All right, congratulations. Second place. Carl Haby with Chloe in the passenger seat in car 56.
And uh, once again, mirror image of last year, Danny Brown, George Apted, Car 42, the winners of this year's Teagle Excavations ARB Pines Enduro 400. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, massive thanks to George. He uh, keeps me calm. I got a bit of red mist today when I saw Dale, because I grew up racing Dale and he was always so much faster than me. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, I've got to get him. And we always hit a few stumps. So just when George pulls me in the line. And um, yeah, great to see Carl up here again. It's been a few years since he's been here. So it's good to see him and Andy and uh, Fletch. They did an awesome job, kept us going all day. And you can never let off because it's, um, you know, a flat tyre is three minutes, four minutes. So unless George pulls his finger out, then you know, maybe we could do it in two. But um, yeah, so it was, uh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't, you know, as they say, over till the fat lady sings, and yeah. I got to sing today. <laughs> as well as last year, so congratulations, back-to-back -back winner of uh, Pines Enduro. Danny Brown with George Apted in the passenger seat once again. Car 42. Thank you, guys. Don't forget, folks, we've still got the raffle to go. We've still got... Uh, a few tickets. A few tickets, and we've still got a few, fair few people still out in the track, so we've got about another hour of racing to go. But these are your crowned podium for this year's event, the final event for the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. I'm glad I'm not involved in that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you'd love to be, mate. Every bit of it. Come on. Jason Forsman, 17th. He did a 52-23 last lap. Owen Ward, even though it was a 53-37 in the end. Uh, is he, yeah, he's out there in the middle. Of, uh, if you went over to him, you might need to do a bit of, uh, of hand-signalling to him. He might be deaf as a post. I'm just here with Jace Forsman <laughs> and Del Palmer. <laughs> Jesus, it looks like he's running away they, from you. They did a little bit of hard work as well out there today, boys. Um, yeah, we, we sadly missed here last year with the we blew the motor up in Hilston, and this is my favourite track. It was my first ever race back in the early nineties. Um, yeah, tough day, but this thing just keeps keeps on going, and we went pretty hard in that last lap, and just didn't didn't miss a beat. So, yeah, nah, very 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 happy. Did you miss a beat, mate? He was possessed. <laughs> <laughs> how was the uh, how was the corners towards the end there? The very, very and nice. even the straights. I noticed on the camera. We were only watching back here. Obviously, we went out there in cars. But even on some of the straights, that as you seem to try and tra tram track a little bit towards yeah. the end there, the straights were still even even, even the, showing even lines. The black lime yep. ones you were getting dragged on them. Yeah, yeah it's really soft. All right. Well, well done. There's the Forsman car four four seven four. One of many Forsman entries here this weekend. I know Thomas had an issue, an engine issue. Well, we might wander down and see if Wardy's about. He might have nicked off on us, but he we'll might go down and have a quick yap. He might to get his hearing checked. And Wardy, I think, was the first of our class eights across the line. Bit of a battle. Came over, sounded like an one, like an old one-cylinder Lister motor or something. Uh, how was it, mate? It was pretty rude. We. We said, as we came in for the last break, we saw a crack in the header, and we're like, well, let's go do one more. We've, I think we've already done enough to accomplish what we needed to for the championship, but we said, let's do one more. If it falls off, it falls off, and it fell off after we came back through at about the road jump. We're like, shit, now we got to limp it, but no, it was good. It was really, really good. All right. Well, good to see you back in safe and sound, and uh, we'll see you out next year's championship, hopefully. You will indeed. All right. See you there. Owen Ward, car 832. Yeah, it was great to see him because Owen finishes 16th, 56-37 last lap. Jason Forsman, 52-23. So we're still waiting on car 412. James Tyrrell, not too far away. Matt Burrow shouldn't be too far either in the 123 entry. Uh, James Tyrrell, as I may mention, Brendan Forsman shouldn't be too far away. Uh, Larvis as well. Franklin. Darren Gill. Uh, Ian Middlemiss is still out there circulating. 
Oh, someone said that on cue. Perfectly done. Obviously, you've got them on the rally safe. That's cheating. So here comes Pup Racing. So James Tyrrell. And uh, just on their way back in. Cru a cruise from the cars that are down in the uh, holding area. You can now come out and um, wind your cars back in onto the trailers. When, uh, when Pup's been through, we might wander back up and do the raffle. So, All right. See how many tickets, said, see how much, you, <laughs> what you can take on this year, mate. So James Tyrrell on his way back in the 1036. Thanks to Tig Industries on our, on our live footage. So just about to go across the line. So such a shame for Dale Martin. He just gradually watches that name slip down the leaderboard. He now sits 18th. So he will be a DNF, unfortunately. Car still sounds sweet. Notice our three podium finishes. I think you might get a warranty on that, Andy. That right left front tire might get a warranty. So James Tyrrell in the house. Now we're watching on for the 412 entry. This would be Peter Sibson. Onto the straight. In the meantime comes the 1036. Single seat. Class 10. Goes across the line. You get it home. Well, mate, yeah. you've got about 30 seconds to get the last of your tickets for the <laughs> super raffle out here before we draw the prizes. We've literally, uh, literally got a handful of each left. Two fantastic prizes this weekend put up, the CRF 110 put up by Blue City Motorcycles locally here, and also a big... Uh, pile of Milwaukee tools put up by Burson's Auto Parts in Mount Gambia. Muchly appreciated having those guys on board and their support through last year's event and this year's event and all the sponsors that put this year's event on. It's not an easy, easy gig running events like this. So No, you're exactly right, mate. And of course we can't do it without our sponsors. We've got a little bit of a different way of doing things. This year, we're not pulling names out of a hat. We have a a random number number generator on my phone, which will generate a number anywhere between zero and a hundred. If that number ticket has not been sold, yep. we will go again. Oh, okay. So obviously, you're up here in the. You up there now? Now are you, mate? Oh, writing your name on that board. So we look out just in front of us too. There is another vehicle coming in. That'll be, hey, that'll be Heath Weed and Heath and Michelle. They're still going. Great to see. They've had their dramas. And just behind them is the Kershaw entry, car 701. So I'm not too sure. Cal, Cal Simpson getting the last of the tickets here. Yep. Before the draw close, or the, the purchase of tickets close. Okay. And then uh, we're going to do a live draw. Oh, yeah. So 
So just watching the Kershaw entry, heading across the back jump. Now we'll swing on to the back straight. All right, mate, here we go. Here we go. If you go. Person's it. auto parts, Mount Gambia put up. Oh, I tell you what, Haley. Get it in quick. Oh, how close was that? How close was that? Righto. Is that for that one? Righto, well, here we go. This is it. Um, I will clear my phone. I've got a random generator here. And this is for the Burson's Auto Parts Mount Gambia Milwaukee pack of about $4,000 worth of par uh, Milwaukee tools. The winner is... Ticket number 35, and can you believe it? It's empty. <laughs> oh, How's the suspense? Yeah. We'll do a redraw. I was going to say, we'll probably... clear that again. Yep. Clear history, my phone's used to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll generate another number. Any... It's the smooth number seven, Michelle. Michelle. Ticket number seven. You gotta load up. Uh, you gotta load up uh, some Milwaukee gear if you're here, still here. Ticket number seven for the Burson's Milwaukee raffle. We'll give you a ring in a second, or one of the one of the crew here will give you a call. And uh, I gotta tell you, for little Honda CRF110, we did draw ticket number 100 last year. And you'll do another and, uh, random. This year, 89. Who's 89? No one's 89. Can you believe that? Right, -o. we're clearing it. Just go the next one on. Toddy's holding the sign. I'll take that. Right, eight. Let's clear that. Generate the next one. Number ticket number 12. Alex F. You have yourself a Honda CRF 110. Thank you to Blue City Motorcycles. And thank you to Blue City Motorcycles and also Burson Auto Parts Man Gambia for putting on two fantastic prizes this year. So Alex F and Michelle number seven on the raffle will uh, take home will take home all the Milwaukee gear from the Franklin race team. So, well done, Michelle. At least, the, at least it gives us something to work on the, the uh, car with, I suppose. Well, yeah, they've got a bit of, of a rebuild on the uh, Can M that they rolled yesterday. So. <laughs> All right, well done. At least it finishes off the weekend with a positive note. They are uh, this year's raffle. Thank you, massively uh, supported by Blue City Motorcycles and Burson Auto Parts in Mount Gambia. We we'll cut back to you, Brad. Thanks, There's two mate. prizes given away. You didn't and, get one. Um, we'll see you on the next one. You will. So also in the house at the moment, we've got two cars coming back in. 274 is one of those. That's one of the Forsman team. Just didn't quite catch the first one that was in the house. But certainly still going with a full set, head of steam. Oh, that's Dean Carter, that's why. Now, not too sure if Dean's got another lap. Yeah, he has. <laughs> So Dean will go out on his final circulation, car number 18. So there are some cars in front of him. Unfortunately, Dean had that problem earlier. So Joe Kershaw, his last lap in a, 14, a one hour 14.52. Heath Whedon just up the road from him. 
did it in a 51-23. So Dean Carter, 31st in time at the moment. Last lap of 39-12. Wow. On the pace. Unfortunately, the damage was done early in the day. So a 39. So 4.49 overall time. So Heath Whedon just between them of 51.23 last lap. Check a flag coming out for... This should be the 274 entry. It is. Goes across the line. Watching where they pop up. 274, Brendan Forsman, 22nd hour right. Last lap was a 53-13. So he's been, been consistent, 51, 52, 52 and a 53. So they've done... To, uh, while I'm back, mate, we yeah. better do a quick mention of uh, the Steelit crew are still doing their raffle this afternoon. Yeah. To win $300 worth of Steelit gear. Race over and see them in the spectator area at their marquee. Have a chat to Roly and the crew about their product and uh, get on board. So Brendan Forsman finishes 19th. Last lap was a 51.43. So I think out of the Forsmans, that's the second car in that team, your home. Jace being the first, Brendan being the second. So the third, the third car this weekend in that team will be 701 of Kershaw will get that home, providing nothing else can go wrong. Between now and getting back here, Dean Carter's absolutely on a flyer. Just done a 39. So I think maybe um, <clears throat> but Danny Brown might have still been our fastest out there for the weekend. With his 36.07. Yeah, that would have been first lap this morning. Yep. Yeah. Carter steered like it was on rails. I like the way he sort of said we did back off a little bit. Sure, mate. Yeah. <laughs> do you believe the sure? And, uh, do you believe that off-road racers back off? Well, sometimes you've got to conserve the car. And um, obviously Brent played a smart game. He's played a smart game all season. Yeah, Brent could have quite easily, as we've seen him in the past, win, win outright at these events. Yeah. But uh, Brent, obviously, if he had to push the car to 110%, you know, that's when things do go wrong, potentially. Yeah, exactly. So he's come home with a good overall championship points position. Yeah, and Andy Murdoch. Oh, second year that something's got not... I did look on the rally safe and look on there and I did see that Carl Haby was rounding him, rounding him up very, very quickly and I thought, oh no, not another problem with the Murdoch car, but when it came back in here with a flat left front, it's just, yeah, it, okay, he's still it on that podium. It looked locked up when it came in, I'm not sure if it was or not, but it did look locked up when he came around the corner. Yeah, so he's obviously just clipped something and just, he said it just when it came back onto the bitumen. So has he clipped maybe that road sign as you turn back onto the bitumen? Yeah, interesting. He didn't yeah. actually clarify where it actually happened. No, but it's still five or seven k's out, I suppose. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's all it takes. So our top four for 2023 all locked in. Steve Graham. Probably Graham in the class Unbelievable. Oh, what Unbelievable. A job. What a job. 2.4 against cars that are pushing 1,000 horsepower. Yeah. And um, I'm tipping that little 2.4, even on a good day, has got to be 250. I yep. don't know. I'd, I'd have to, yeah. You I wouldn't think it would be up. much more than 250 if it, was a, if it was a good one, but somewhere around there. So we still have cars on course if you've... Still around, we still have it. Oh, I'm not too sure how many cars still out on track. Shouldn't be too many. 
I reckon there'd only be 10 cars still out there, mate. We've got Mott was the last of the uh, DNFs by the looks of this, and yeah. uh, he was he was car he was in 34th position in, in it with a DNF. So, as we say, that one arrives. That'll be the We've Ian Middlemiss car. 14 cars still out there, or still circulating. That's a single seater of Middlemiss coming into the finish line, yep. finish stadium. He's done well today. I think they've all done well today. Looking at that drone footage, like I said, you know, when you see them out in those, as they're taking out those pine breaks and even they've gotten trenches in them. Normally you don't see that here at the pines. Normally no. 760 coming in on a right over the uh, crossover. GQ patrol. Hasn't they gone well or well? From Ballerine. Yes. Another great result. We'll be the first class seven back. True. Good variety of cars. It's a shame we don't get the, as many class threes as we used to. They're sort of a dying breed, aren't they? Class threes have definitely dropped off. Gee whiz, did you see the air that uh, <laughs> just got over, <laughs> over the crossover on our right? Have a go, last lap, he says. Is that Lavis or 6681? Um, That'll be the Ross. Eight. No, it might be the 8 1. Looks like Ross, doesn't it? Yeah. I think Matty Lavis's car is a little bit darker. Oh, oh, there you go. Just got word that Ian Middlemas, who's about to come over the finish line, only has front brakes. So. That's a fair effort to steer, especially in a buggy. They're very light in the front end, so coming yeah. into some of those corners, you've got to break fairly early to pull it up. Right on, second in the middle, most cars over the line, 10-17. He's done extremely well. <laughs> all plagued with different problems. Yeah. What are brakes anyway? They're only meant to be added extras. He'll bring the car back into the Parc Ferme in the centre of the racetrack. Yeah, tell you what, it's been a big weekend here, starting off with our Friday night show and shine. Yep. In the manicured lawn of the Pines. Manicured. Well, it was okay. when I saw it on Friday, a Thursday when I came out. It still is. Um... Manicured lawn of the, the pines in Duro of the Teagle Excavations Quarry out here. We've got the wall. Darren Gill going across the line. The Class 7 GQ, 760, gets the chequered flag. What an effort. And then we got one of ours, yep. Muddy Lovis over the line, 6684. Little will stand as he goes across the line, too. And there is the Hummer entry. There is the Hummer entry. I was surprised. Um, 635 said earlier, Jackson said that maybe a 633 entry had stopped, but. Might have. Clearly not. Well, he might have stopped, but. Notice one that didn't come back early was the 651 Whittle. That one earlier today. I was, uh, haven't seen, well, that was a long time out. Earlier on, that was the, the Gibson entry. Well, those ones that we didn't see come back. I did get a, a pick in before, unfortunately, from Dale and AJ. They. Uh, Do we ask? Uh, well, he didn't tell me what went wrong. He just showed, sent me a photo of him sunbaking out with his top off on the front of that 1125 Alpha. So I'm not too exactly sure what went wrong, but... Um, Something has. Yeah, and inside of the finish, Inside of the finish line of all things too. Started the last lap. Unfortunately, it has ended in tears. They were having issues with it Friday. If you remember back Friday, they were having issues with the car. They thought they'd, they'd sorted it. And then uh, running faultlessly today, and then all of a sudden, 
That'll be... There you go. Oh, Hummer car. Yep. Still out in the pines. There is Heath Whedon. Our race line entry, Matt Hummer, gets a flag, 633 home and safe, which is good to see. As we said before, Dad's at the fence there. <laughs> I see you. Um, race line have recently come on board for the championship sponsors. Yeah, the Australian off road racing championship sponsored by obviously ARB four x four accessories, Mickey Thompson tires and race line wheels. So it's good to see their own cars coming back over the finish line. So just saw a moment ago on our camera from out in the out in the forest. It was the seven seven nine of Heath Whedon, so great to see that vehicle still travelling. Heath had his dramas, like most teams today, had a, had a story to tell, had a battery clamp come off. Now, if you just look out in front of here, there's one stopped, and I reckon that might be the Franklin team. Don't know what they're doing out there, but it looks like they're playing around the left-hand front tyre, right in front of us behind the big shot, big screen. Screenshot, big screen, sorry. There goes Carter back into the forest. Looking around that left cor rear corner of it. Surely they've got another kilometre in them. Surely. Yeah. yeah. There's just... See our recovery guys at the top of the hill just wandering over. It seems to be a red car coming back in on the on the chute. Are well, they heading out? No, heading they, back in. That's heading oh, back oh, in. Oh, sorry, over the crossover. Yeah, that's about to go over the My crossover. Mate. I'm like, hang on, they're coming in the wrong side, but definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> Who's that? That'd be, 10, then that'd be the ten forty two. Of At Peter Tamlin. Yes. So Pete will get a get it home. He'll pass that car up on top of the hill. Now they're looking. They are late overtake. Yeah, great result for this team. He doesn't seem to be full. Mm, maybe. Pete just seemed like he was nursing it a little bit there. He's been nursing it all day. He has been nursing that car all day through. So there he is. I don't know, mate, a class two out here. Oh, it's class 10, but class 10, class two, they'll be getting kicked around out in those corners. Yeah. Those cornering ruts were saying earlier that now they're probably around a metre or plus deep. So we've if had not our, more. Yeah. I mean, we've had, we've had a phenomenal championship this year. We started out at Rainbow. Same mm. championship for next year. We had Rainbow. Second round was a very muddy round out at Hilston. Had a lot of damage due to mud, calipers getting ground away, etc., etc. Then off to uh, the Gundy 500 on the border of Queensland. And um, then our final round down here at the Pines Enduro in Millicent, South Australia. So basically up the east coast of Australia. Phenomenal. And uh, I've been to every race, seen highs and lows of every race, so there's been... Uh, as we know, yesterday morning we were challenged with a couple of incidents that we rectified as quickly as we could. He's going again, that's good. That's the Franklin entry. He was also in uh, the top six in the championship points, so he needs to finish. They need to finish. But um, we've come across the line today fairly faultless, I believe, with our final day of the championship. Yeah, and Peter Tamlin ecstatic they've got across the line 
Everyone stands at the fence and cheers. So they've got it home. That'll be second to class two. So he will now park it quickly on the infield. So we wait patiently, just reminding that we just got half an hour before the track closes. We still have a handful of cars out there. We've got our presentation locally tonight, also the presentation of the uh, championship overall. Overall, just down at the other end of Milson, and. Uh, One more over the line. That is the Franklin team. Pete Tamlin's last lap was a 51.25. Franklin's 57.13. Yeah. Just gives you an idea, folks. The total race time for that crew that just finished, Darren and Rob, uh, it was five hours and 19 minutes and nine seconds. Yeah. So it was a fair shake up to be out there for that long. Yeah. Doesn't well, seem that long, does it? No, I'm just going to race down and uh, have a quick yap to some of the remaining crews, the last lot that came in that we missed before the raffle. Before the last lot of cars come in. So if we look over towards the, the crossover coming over the back of the back of the hill. And we'll see another one coming in. That should be the one, two, three entry. And it is of oh, Matt Burrows. They've got it home. Is it going to make the top? Yeah. And behind him, Peter Simpson. Car So coming over the top of the of the hill, we'll drop in. It's going to 
come out of the final corner onto the front straight for the final time. He'd be glad to get it home. Here is the one, two, three. This is Matt Burrows. Obviously he had his dramas as well. Mark was saying that he lost second gear in that second lap this morning. Obviously Matt's had his, had his dramas. Here comes the Peter Simpson team. Across the line. Well mate, I'm gonna I'm gonna just have a chat to a handful of those. I know there's some cars here that can leave, but a handful that I'm gonna interrupt and have a quick chat to. Maddie Hummer and the race line wheel six three three. How was your day out there? Uh, yeah, it was all right. Pretty hard in one of these things, but we got through. How was the, how deep were the ruts towards the end there? Um, yeah, probably they'd eat the tyres. Well, they're higher than the tyres, so we had to stay out of them. But um, we just pushed through. Oh, well, well done in uh, crossing the line for the uh, Pines Enduro 400. Thanks, Andy. Hopefully we'll see you back for the championship next year. Hopefully. I'm sure we will. There you are, Matty Hummer. Most of them are disappearing back into the pits with hot cars, so uh, I'm not too sure who else is actually left out here. We could probably go and round up Matty Lavis. He's sitting here doing nothing before he slinks off into the distance. Matty, mate. How you going, fellas? <laughs> you look like you've been through the wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, white Z wars. Those bruts out there are deep. You either get in them or you get cross rutted in them in these little things and you just got to try and keep momentum when you're on two wheels. <laughs> didn't get stuck at all? No, no, we didn't. We managed to get through. We only got a flat tyre back right, um, but that's about, yeah, that's about the, the worst thing that went on. So we were lucky today. Oh, good to see you home for another finish. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm bloody stoked. Uh, chasing the championship again next year? Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be going up a class next year. Um, class. Yeah, so. Oh, what class? Lift the finger. <laughs> now we'll be going class six next year. Yep. yep. So that's going to be exciting. All right. Oh well. Well done. Bigger crashes. Yeah, that's what it seems like. <laughs> uh, well done. Good to see you over the finish line and uh, and safe as well. So uh, we'll see you out next year. Bloody oath. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Matt Lavis in car six six eight four. Had a few people slink off on us. We're gonna dive in on the middlemost car here before he decides to nick off. That's a hard job solo. It was even harder without one of the brakes. Yeah, they tell me you, uh, you were missing a brake on the way back in there. Obviously, coming in high speeds, that can spin the car pretty easily, so it's a consistent fight. Yeah, lucky to be a sandy event. We lift off and you slow down pretty quick anyway. <laughs> car feels good apart from that little issue. Oh, you start hearing all the rattles, but it seemed to get here, so I think we're all good. And how do you feel after uh, 400 kilometres of Millicent's best? Uh, ask me in another half hour when it <laughs> settles in. All right, mate. I'll let you go back and freshen up. Yeah, uh, 10.17, middle miss entry. Yeah, here comes the McIntyre entry, car number 43. Um, pup, pup, if you're about, the, the your recovery crew's here. I said you wanted to get a tow back in. You want to wander back out to your car, James. James Tyrrell, if you're ready to uh, give you a tow back in. Reminder: of the drive, drivers and crews travelling back into the pits in their cars, please put a helmet back on. Well, we haven't got too many more left out there, and that's Glenn McIntyre by the looks of it heading for the finish line. Yeah, car 43. We've got about 20 minutes worth of race time left. And, um... Yeah, Glenn McIntyre last lap was a 44.50, 43.14 and a 44.01. So, been very consistent. So, uh... Glenn will come on through. There should not be too many left. So, Joe Kershaw, that's why he came back with recovery. He was out of time. So, 
So uh, Dean Carter and Heath Whedon should be one of the last two. Uh, also Ross Newman in the uh, 6681 should be one of the other ones too from Queensland. Uh, should be one of the last few cars to come in. You see uh, Brent Martin rolling back in, Habies twin turbo 56 uh, 1UZ powered twin turbo 56 uh, gee there's been some, some phenomenal horsepower there Glenn McIntyre gets a chequered flag another one over the line local to me at home so that's good to see I know they came up here very short crude as far as um, as far as uh, staff goes we're going to stop him for a chat we're going to stop anybody else we can for a chat <laughs> while we fill the last half hour of airtime folks i thank everybody that's been on board for the weekend all around the world people listening in england and all sorts of different places that we normally don't even on the last few and 48 and, 21 um, for glenn also Thank you to some of our volunteers, well, all of our volunteers, the Millicent Sand Buggy Club. Got a couple of guys out there on drones. Tex from Real Air out in the middle on our FPV drone that was chasing quite closely. Good to see you at the finish line. Oh, thank Christ for that, eh? <laughs> we broke an axle on the second lap and then, yeah, we just pulled right back on those last two laps just to get around. And it got rough at the end. Everyone said it got rough. The ruts were a bit uh, demanding at the end. Oh, shit, this is rough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the guys do it in the, in the small cars, but, yeah, anyway, it's just, it is what it is, but um, bloody good feeling to finish, I tell you. Well, welcome back. It's good to see you back safely. Car feels all right towards the end there? Nah, it's rooted. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm tipping you are overheating? Yeah, no, I'm all right. I'm, I'm all right, but, um, yeah, no, the car's got, the car's got a few issues. Young bloke's a bit sore, he hasn't got as much padding as I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll let you get a cool drink. There you are. Glenn McIntyre, car 43, another one over the line. We must literally have half a dozen cars left, I reckon. Uh, two or three, I think it would be. Gets to go in and load up. Beautiful little uh, turbo V6. You see at the start line, the Teagles crew are going to work already. Yeah, that's starting going out to for prep us. the track and re re uh, instate the track so that it can be worked tomorrow. That's going so to start its first. The work lap. doesn't stop here for those that have uh, followed us for the weekend. Just because the flag's been flown, I'm going to stop Pup on his way past. Hey, mate. mate, single seater. It's a fair uh, effort out there in a class ten single seater. Did yeah. you enjoy it? Uh, I did today. We had a few issues, and the last lap was quite brutal. The throttle stuck wide open, so it was all right on the fast stuff. But in the corners, it's just yeah, just using the clutch and the brakes. So yeah, I don't think the clutch and the brakes like me right now. But I think it was last year you put a clutch in the car in a caravan park on the Saturday night. Uh, ring gear. Yeah, oh, ring gear. Welded yeah. the ring gear back on. And then we did a power steering pump in one of the brakes, so we went over time by about 30 minutes. But uh, yeah, I think we still got third in class, so. Beautiful, that's uh, yeah. it's better than uh, not. Yeah, 30, and a finish. Yeah. So yeah, finish is always a good day. All right, well done, mate. We'll, uh, we'll see you next year for the championship. Yes, we will. <laughs> there you are, James Tyrrell. Car 1036, a single seater, ex Brad Chase Mall car. So they go out and retrieve those cars from the centre of the racetrack. So we're still waiting on Dean Carter still to come through. Also Ross Newman in the 6681 and Heath Whedon shouldn't be too far away either. So uh, Heath will be one of the last cars in. Some stories here to be told. Kurt Stefan with the DNF.
too sure what did happen to that car in the end. Glenn Pike, Thomas Forsman, Andrew Forsman, 279. Did uh, no go is what it's got on, on the screen for us. Well, I believe there's only uh, a few, few left out there, as you're saying, mate, but uh, Dean Carter, I think, just hearing, overhearing, snooping, I hear Dean Carter's possibly the last car on the track, about 20 k's out, so they wow. still have a chance to get across the line. They still have a chance to get across the line yeah, in for the close of the race. Yeah, so they got to 3.30, so they've just got under about for 17 minutes to get back here. So if I'm reading that correct... So if you're saying that he's about the about 20 k's out, he should be not too far away. So on the screenshot, big screens drone, you can see at the moment, just looking back. And the moment they'll tow the 10.36 car back in. Yeah, just been just getting some advice or getting some words too. Linda Miller has some tickets for tonight's presentation dinner. If anyone wants to get hold of some presentation tickets, all you have to do is give for six tickets for sale. Give Linda a call on zero four zero nine double five eight seven three eight. The number again zero four zero nine double five eight seven three eight, and get hold of Linda. She's got some presentation tickets. Six in total for tonight. So if anyone uh, was thinking about going along and they want to want to go along, they can do so. Linda Miller has got some tickets for sale uh, for tonight's presentation. Didn't give her a call, and she'll certainly help you out with some tickets. There goes the Turak tractor. <laughs> he said it fell off about the tunnels. <laughs> I think we should make him go and find it. He's lost a wheel and a muffler today, so he's done well. So if you want some presentation tickets tonight, Linda Miller is the person to call. She'll certainly help you out with some tickets for this evening. Well, Brad, it's yeah. coming to a close, mate. I've got the clerk, of course, here, Mark Heemskirk. I think this weekend went absolutely stellar as usual over here at the Millicent Sand Buggy Club presented event. What do you think? Yeah, no, it uh, all went according to plan. No. Uh, no well, the... We had a couple of mishaps. <laughs> we usually, you can never know what you're going to get dealt with, but the weather turned it on. Unlike some of the previous pines, we've had nice wet events, but uh, I think this year, absolute cracker. No, that's right. No, the weather's been great all weekend. The uh, the breeze has sort of kept the, the dust moving, so that's been nice for all the competitors. Yeah, the tracks looked fantastic. All the um, competitors have come in and said it's been a challenging course, but um, everyone's loved it. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're more than happy, and, yeah, the event has gone really, really well. All right, there you go. It's from the Honcho. So, uh, like to get, again, once, uh, once we've... So we've got a handful of cars to come over the line, but we're going to wrap it up for this year's um, Tegel Excavations ARB Pines Enduro 400. Last round of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. I know there's a big... It's got to get this right because I get in trouble when I don't. Yeah, <laughs> you will. Uh, but the final round, and uh, we'll be back next year with an absolute cracker. So... Uh, Thank you, everybody, for being on board. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody, for the behind-the-scenes energy that goes into running these events, sponsors the whole lot. Uh, it's been phenomenal, and we're going to come back bigger and stronger in 2024. So thank you, guys, and we'll see you all next year.
So one of those cars that should be on their way home is Heath Whedon. According to our timing sheets, Heath Whedon and also Dean Carter. They did say that Dean was approximately about 10 to 15 k away. So he should not be too far away because Jay, uh, Dean with all these dramas today did a last lap of just over 39 minutes so a 39.12 I think was his last lap so he's certainly can we get a full head of steam also Heath Whedon should be one of the last competitors on track So if you look over towards the railway line, you'll see one of our last combatants coming in. This should be the 6684 entry, which will be the Newman entry. So one of the last 